<laughs> PKA 694. <laughs> uh, our guest was supposed to come, but he's running late. I don't know. He's AFK. He's tuckered so. out. It's okay. Yeah. It's all good. We love him anyway. Man. Hopefully he yeah. shows up. This episode is brought to you by pharaohdistro.com, Lock and Load, and Blue Chew. Talk more about all of them later. Kyle, yes. you had a bunch of stuff just... Just I wanted to talk about in front of your mind. You wanted to, go yeah, on. that awful thing that happened in, in Palestine. But before I get to that, I just wanted to like throw out there from Pharaoh Distro. Those double doinks are so fucking strong. It's like some sort of diamond infused, big ass fucking joint that they sell in like a double pack. If I think that's the highest I've been from just smoking in memory. Uh, it's when I smoked that double doink the other night before I played some Hell Divers. So give that one the the two thumbs up for anybody who likes to get real ripped. Ferro yeah, Distro wow. has done such a terrible job of keeping me in stock that I literally paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, we'll make sure they not a big deal, though, because you used our code and got such a great fucking deal. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, we have a code? <laughs> shit, Damn it. What? <laughs> yeah, those double doinks are strong as shit. So smoke sparingly. Yeah. So this week, um, quietly, um, Biden agreed. President Biden agreed to sell Israel um, a new package of arms or give them. It's hard to tell. It's muddy, murky waters when with arms deals. You know, you know how it is. But mm -hmm. it seemed like maybe fighter jets and bombs. But, you know, just to, to put it plainly, fighter jets and bombs because they they're running low. I don't know what's been going on. But the same day, um, there's like an aid group over there that's just there to feed people. And uh, if you look at the biographies of the people who are in this aid group, Man, they seem like great people. You know what I mean? Like, like each of them seems they're not those. They're not that Chinese astronaut good, but like close. Yeah, they, they're accomplished, well-meaning, just just there to feed people. Like Trying they to have help. no. They're not flying a flag, okay? And uh, they gave their position to the Israelis, and the Israelis pinpoint precision bombed them with three precision guided munitions and killed seven of them. So what I'm hearing Three. is Israel got intel that there were some military aged men in Hamas occupied territory and they neutralized them. What's the problem? They on the roof of the they <laughs> sent a what missile. <laughs> they, they sent a missile through the roof. Zach, show them the, the roof of the car. They sent a missile through the roof of the car. The roof even says like I don't know. Feed the feed the hungry or some shit like that. Yeah. Like it's, it's got their it's, emblem on it, which is they, like the "Don't bomb us" emblem. Yeah, you this is one of those situations. Was it a bullseye? Like, Did they have a bullseye on the top of their car? Dude, if they were going for the driver, then Kawabunga, dude. Like, goddamn. And you know, you know, Kawabunga, dude. I haven't heard yeah. that since like ninety six. Oh, I'm bringing I'm bringing it back. That, all right, yeah. here it is. That We're gonna bring back all the Bart Simpson colloquialisms. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Don't have a cow, man. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but you can see right there that it says "Feed the World Kitchen" or whatever. Yeah, which well, is it, it did. a known Hamas yeah, I, number. I disagree, Taylor. I can't read that. <laughs> yeah, um... you, you can infer what was there <laughs> pretty well. They got a pan with it, and mm -hmm. you know that that bomb like said "USA" dish. on the side too. That's the that's yeah. The we paid for part. that. Yeah, we did. We financed that act that right there. You know. It's we paid for the awful. food they were handing out and for the bomb that killed them. I don't know who pays for the food that they hand like out it's specifically. A tragedy. Look but... how happy that guy looks. He's he's doing okay. No, that guy's bummed. They just killed yeah, the food truck. He's I really he's wish like, he was look, wearing I, a, I heard there's a, a bunch Braves of food World in here. Series jersey or something. <laughs> this and so like what's the I mean, I, I feel foolish even asking like what's the, what's the fallout of this gonna be? Nothing uh, at all. Mm. Biden will continue to give them everything they want. Biden and had a very strongly wins, worded. He will give them whatever they want. Biden had a phone call with uh, Netanyahu today. Um, it, the results of that were ha there was a press conference right before we started, so I didn't get to watch it. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Probably not much. Netanyahu assured him that he would finish the job. <laughs> yeah, we've targeted 15 other food trucks in the region. <laughs> that is so wow. fucked up. Like it is fucked up. Why? I know I'm making jokes and be a part a of comedic devil's advocate, but I'm not well, a fan of this. Taylor, yeah. freedom don't come free, as they say. Mm -hmm. Uh you should write that down. Jot that down, huh? You should. Jot that I have a shirt that says it. 
Have you heard that says freedom isn't free with a bombed out foreign aid truck? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it says freedom don't come free. And it's got George W. on it. I, I like, oh, I like that. Yeah. Mm, using yeah. the president's grammar. That's... Yeah. I I miss the poor grammar. We, 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 uh, <laughs> of, of, of Bush, when, when you see like Trump ramble or Biden get lost and confused, it's like, mm. man, Bush was coherent at least. He, just, he was just misspeaking. He, he, he knew what he wanted to say. He just couldn't get it out. These guys, I, I don't even know if they know what they want to say. It's funny that like, <laughs> I'm not going to argue against that. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> for like 10 years, like the media and everyone was just like frothing with like, George Bush is a murderer. He's a genocidal murderer. And then well, like is that. five years later, it's like, <laughs> look at this goofy former president hugging Michelle you Obama. His paintings? <laughs> Have you seen his and paintings? I bet they fucking suck. They're. They're better. They're in the better see than my Zach? paintings. Wait, yes. no. Show us either one of his or one of Hitler's, and we have, and we <laughs> have to see, see. We have to know which one's better. I think he paints animals too. He does portraits of people. I've seen those. Mm -hmm. Um, I I'm gonna I give his art. Look in portrait. the grand scale of let's just say amateur art. I would say he's a seven out of ten. If we're if we're doing like all art, if like Michelangelo and Da Vinci are tens, then George Bush is a solid fucking five. Like, like he knows what he's doing. Clearly, I can't. Do, I'm so untalented. Like, I can't doodle. I'll, we'll see. We'll see what I it looks can. like. I think it'd be fun if my wife and I painted each other's portraits and just saw what came of it. <laughs> you just treat it like a caricature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm be terrible. I haven't picked up a paintbrush since I was a child. But she yeah. might be half decent. She just paint by numbers all the time. I was never good at painting or drawing as good. a kid. No. Oh. Like okay. damn. Well, this is definitely not Hitler. Not Hitler. <laughs> I don't see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hitler. These so, are not do, good. Is the bottom left? Excuse me. They're not good. Do you know I, any I of think these people? Excellent. Uh, I think I that's the, these these Mark Zuckerberg's wife on the bottom right. Is the bottom center one? Well, Dirk that's Nazinski. Dirk. No. <laughs> Dirk oh, Nazinski. Zach said it. Dirk. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know his name that Dirt Winsky. Is it no. Nowitzki? Say it better for me. Nowitzki. That it's makes sense. The letters if he was an are. Eastern European Zach guy. Zach wrote it down. It might be Dirk Nowitzki, however it's pronounced, spelled, or or, or, yeah. or stated. Uh, everyone else, I have no clue. I thought top left might be like Hillary Clinton's huskier sister. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, I, I and, thought she might. Who was the female leader of Germany? Oh, Angela Merkel? Yes, that's who I'm going for. Angela Merkel much, wish uh, she looked like that. Yeah, Angela, Angela Merkel is much fatter than that. But I mean, it is a painting. Okay. Maybe he was trying to be... And nice. uglier. Who's Just the bottom angry. left? That guy like coyly biting his tongue. That's Chris Rock? No. <laughs> oh, Chris see, Rock is not a still, chubby blonde woman. Are you, are you terrible gonna, with yeah. me, Zach? <laughs> are you still going to Are you still gonna hold that his paintings are good? Knowing that I that don't guy think... in the top is Chris Rock? And <laughs> that that is, I don't think that's Chris Rock. I think I think Zach's pulling Kyle, I back. come to you in private and I say, I want to show you my Chris Rock painting. And I show that to you. What do you say? I say that's a real funny joke, Taylor. <laughs> they don't all look the same, okay? I've told you once, told you twice. This is the last time. I might time. know the top right. <laughs> do you remember that really pretty Afghan woman? On the cover That's not of Time National Magazine. Geographic, pretty, pretty. No, Afghan is it Nat Geo? Not it, this is not her. That's not what this is. No, that's a different. I do remember exactly. Lady. That lady has green eyes, though. Yeah, uh, the and green the, and, and blue, Nat like Geo. they were striking. Striking yeah. green eyes. Yeah, they're beautiful. Um, these suck, dude. And you Why think like, you... oh, what a waste of that beauty. And it's like, what? What were you gonna fuck her? <laughs> 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 Leave her to a goat herding. Zach got the answer. That's not Chris Rock. It's Gilbert. Oh, God. Gottfried, terrible painting. <laughs> <laughs> Arenas? I was going to ask Arenas? you for help. Uh, Tuha Banye? I just said a word. I don't. Tuha okay, Banye. I don't know who these people are. They're clearly not famous enough for me to give a fuck about. Steve Jobs, but lower left. My point stands that that these are good paintings, infinitely better than anything that any of us would stick onto a canvas. Like, like I, not I don't if we know. really gave it the old college try oh, for like my. a year or two. Yeah, maybe if you trained for a year, you could come close to, to what George Bush can do. Yeah. I think that proves my point. Do you think he's been doing this for six months? Well, he ran the world for like eight years. I you know, I, I think nah, he took it up in the last that. 10. He was he was painting. You know, these paintings aren't as good as those paintings that Epstein had on his island of like Bill Clinton in a dress and uh 
Bush knocking over the Twin Towers. <laughs> Those were better done paintings. Oh, come on, man. Like, that's all right. All right, fine. This one's much better than any of the other ones. That's all right. because You know why? Because we know who he's trying to paint. I bet if we knew those other people, we'd be blown away too. I got Dirk right away. You, you did. did, and I and I. That's the. It one doesn't that help I my vaguely... point, but I also kind of figured out that he was that basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, yeah. credits for honesty. Yeah, that's yeah. not how he brushes his hair, though. That's a little inaccurate. I don't know about that. I, I was gonna the, uh, the oh, go browner hair in the front and center. I just caught that. And he had Jay Leno's hair going to the wrong direction. Not mm -hmm. a guy for detail, mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> well, he not. probably was like mirroring it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it, it was, same it thing was the collection of Hitler portraits. Who did he no, paint? You're right. It's inexplicable that I saw Hitler's done a lot of buildings and a lot of animals from what I remember. I remember like um, not cathedrals, but interesting ar European architecture, just a building yeah, front with a street in and front steps. of rivers. And, yeah. yeah. I think he was more of a landscape guy. Mm hmm. What were you saying? <laughs> what the fuck? Is... <laughs> well, Bush painted this? That can't be what Bush painted. Yeah. <laughs> but this looks the, like the... a joke. Right. Oh, of course it is. That would be a <laughs> wildly inappropriate painting for him to paint. <laughs> <laughs> guy out of grave being tortured. Is that what that is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dumb. Yeah, they got theirs. I never had a problem with Abu Ghraib. I, mean, I feel like they, they needed a little torture. And we were angry after 9-11. You were, I was I was too young to be angry. They couldn't I have been more innocent man. of anything. They, they, that's a blanket fucking everybody, huh? You no, they got LA, yes. None of them had anything to do with it at all. Yeah, none of them had anything to do with 9 11. And yeah. uh, none of them had weapons of mass destruction. At worst, they're guilty of their defending their country when we invaded for no reason based on lies. Oh, well, that's not true at all. I, it, if we're talking about because you're doing this big blanket, they. If we're talking Abu Ghraib, Abu Ghraib I'm, was that prison in was it Iraq or Afghanistan? It was in Iraq. one of those. It was over there. There were plenty <laughs> of Syrian insurgents and all sorts of like lifelong terrorists who we'd been looking forever who were coordinating, organizing, and, and I, I I'll agree with you that maybe the average flip flop wearing commando with a an AK-47 wasn't some wealth of information we need to imprison for two decades. But there were some others, you know, mixed were in. there? Yes. How do, how do we know? Because the people doing it. Well, said, it's declassified. It's not like these are these are like top secret things. Like you can watch documentaries about each and every one of them. You can like see. You watch interviews with the CIA operatives who helped take them down. You can hear about like how they were tortured. It's all o very open book. Oh well, if the CIA says they investigated themselves and it came back okay, I didn't say anything like that. <laughs> I, I said you can watch a YouTube video with the CIA operative who was doing it, and he'll be like, "Yeah, they tortured him. They did this to him. I caught him this way." Like they'll break down like how they caught those people. Taylor, the CIA are the finest investigators on earth. The fact that you discredit their work is kind of embarrassing. It's kind of not patriotic. It's. It just it's always funny when like they bring a CIA agent on the news and they're like, we have a CIA agent here to say that these war this war right now is actually very good. And it's like if you watched Russia today and like they were like <laughs> former KGB agent here to confirm what we want them to, you'd be like, oh, that's laughable. Mm -hmm. But like CIA, you're like, yeah, no, yeah, th that makes sense. We had to get those guys. We, we had to put them on buckets and electrocute their testicles to <laughs> learn about terror. Like that's what we have to do. Yeah. Here's a if if you actually get all curious, it, um, it's it's this guy. Um, I linked name? right to a video of a guy's ass. <laughs> um, did it? Yes, it went right to a picture of a guy's ass no. standing there on the in the prisoner rape section of the oh. article you linked. They needed a little bit of raping every now and then, okay? Like, like I don't know why you're defending the enemies of the United States. Maybe we need to look into your internet search history, see if you're a sympathizer, maybe even funneling money. They'd be like, oh, this fucking retard, Wait, does he do anything but look at build orders? How do, how do you mention it's a picture of a guy's butt without mentioning the other guy's face clearly pressed against his cock? That was a big I'm, part of the image as well. Oh, I see. Oh, I see the naked Im uh, images now. That's hilarious. Well, like, like I don't know what your problem with this is. The torture part. Which part of it that is torturous? Who who who, who just defines what torture is? I'll Taylor, tell you what, you I've been in a couple of cop a little cars. Little anti-sex here. I, if you you've know, ever like been it, shackled and handcuffed, I'm coming off it's fucking a, liberal, and I don't like it. Yeah, Taylor, you look <laughs> a little homophobic. Those two prisoners were getting down, and. Uh, 
So the picture that, I'm counteracting the liberalism. So the, <laughs> the, picture that, the picture that Taylor takes so much issue with is a few of our country's enemies, and they're being forced to sit in a very embarrassing position, one on one on his knees with his head and the other's crotch. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they're yeah. all naked. Well, mostly naked. They have bags on their heads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're not completely unclothed. You guys have touche. They got their masks <laughs> on. It, <laughs> you, were pretty, you were pretty understanding with that that Russian mass shooter the other week. You're like, oh, it. oh, he did cut his ear off and make me sad. Dude, Remember they that? cut his ear That's off exactly and they fed it to him. What? Okay, we didn't cut people's ears off and feed them to them at Abu Ghraib. You saw... And that's the other no. thing. All right, here's Abu the grade was cool. It was clearly a wild sex party. They're all wearing masks. It's got eyes wide shut vibes. This is it's Nicole dope. Kidman's, I wish I was an Abu You can't grade. see Nicole Kidman, but she's right out. She's right <laughs> off the camera. Like it's her being cool. there would change my take. Like, <laughs> it was like, oh damn, they got to meet with Nicole Kidman too. They're she's, all naked, and masked up, and performing sex acts. This is a good weekend. Um, I mean, it looks like they're kind of doing what they. Did with those El Salvadorian gang members. I'm not oh, into yeah. the dogs, but I mean, if you are, that's cool. No, dogs seem happy. Those, those dogs eat your face off. Oh, I saw. Angry. I watched. I've been watching true crime shit, and I, I saw one today. This lady wow. murdered her two children so that she'd have more time to fuck her dog. True. The fact crime? that you're watching true crimes makes you a little bit woman. It's right, I was well, gonna I, call I don't know it gay immediately. I'm so glad we're on the same page here. <laughs> no, no straight man I know watches true crime. That is totally chick. Yeah. What is programming? true crime? Maybe I don't understand. Let me. No, I'm sure it's a lot of fun. You put your robe on and you sashay into the kitchen to get your uh -huh. popcorn, and then you a come nice back cup out. Of tea. And <laughs> throw, your, Maybe. throw your feet under you like that. And then I don't understand. <laughs> we have, I don't understand what what true crime. What makes true? Cr so what I'm watching is you know a. <clears throat> A documentary about a lady who murdered her children is that mm -hmm. that's the gay part yeah yeah being in ah. you didn't know this true crime is like an almost entirely female genre you don't and like watching like interrogation videos and police spread. investigations like, like oh, this is more like the first okay uh, you'll, you'll get me on this the actual interrogation i went through a phase a couple years ago where i found a youtube channel that it was literally just like unedited two three hour videos or minimally edited hour and, and a half just, at least what did you learn from watching the interrogations? I want to hear if your take is the same as mine. Uh, I learned that there is a huge gap between cops, or detectives rather, who are really, really good at this and ones that are really, really bad at it. Because okay. some of the guys are so natural and like comforting in their presence that even watching it, you're like, man. Maybe he is really sympathizing with this, like this, like they know he's a deviant, like child molester yeah. or something. And he mm -hmm. does such a good job of being like, oh, they they got your burger and they got ketchup on. You know what? Don't don't even bother eating. Someone else actually went out to grab lunch there right you know, a few minutes ago. Let me get that. We'll get your right order. They Just shift gears right away from from if to why. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like it's not if you did it. It's like, look, man, we need to talk about why you did this because there was an accident or maybe like. She fell, or maybe you know you were defending yourself, or something like that. Things just got out of hand. That's a different story, Mike. That's a different story entirely. And it's important at this early part that you tell your story, because somebody else is going to run around. They're going to tell all kinds of things, Mike. And right now, what they saying, Mike killed her. Mike killed her, cold blooded. And I don't believe that about you, Mike. I don't. I look at you right now. I don't believe that while you eat the French fries. Yeah. <laughs> like that yeah. guy play like he'll get your confession because mike like, mike has like yeah. a friend that too says loves to kill and it's, <laughs> it's like, he's like mike, I, don't, I know they're lying about you mike yeah, <laughs> so they're 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 uh you're absolutely right there's a huge difference and the youtube channel that i've been watching he'll be like he'll pause and he'll be like for some reason the detective decided to antagonize her at this point instead of uh like like building mm. Probably not a good idea, as you'll see in just a moment. <laughs> yeah, I liked those little interjections. So as Taylor's well. right. There is a wide um, discrepancy in like how much talent the detectives have. But mm. my takeaway was a little different. It was shut up, Woody. Because like I, I don't care how smart you are, right? You're both very smart guys. But if you entered a guitar playing competition against someone who does this all the time, you would get smashed. Yeah. And while an interview is not quite as fish out of the water as my example. You might not be, well, Kyle might be, but Taylor and I are not prepared to deal with like detectives asking hard questions. Just mm. be quiet. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, I, that's, that's, I would, I talked to them a good bit. Like when I got arrested on the drug thing, 
uh, until the point where like they asked a question that mattered. You know what I mean? Like I'm not retarded. You can't so just you be like, did you do it? Your name. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> like, like that wasn't gonna happen. But like, but if they start getting into like details in for anything specific to what's going on, it's like you know I can't talk about all that. We're gonna have to go to the lawyer the situation because I don't know what my defense is gonna be here. But but it's not <laughs> good. Um. But but no, I love those. This lady, they had her Facebook messages. She's like messaging some dude. And she's sending dirty pictures of her fucking the dog and stuff. And she's like, yeah, I, I want to see you and me and you and the dog and get it on. But got to watch the fucking kids and watch those kids. She hung her kids in the basement. Oh, I mean, it seems like this was a pretty cut and dry case. Right? I know. Cut and dry. That, blockers, this, right? Let her off. 40 minute video. 40 minute video. They got I called to the, to the stand. Rufus. It's <laughs> a character witness. He rushes up to her and licks her. <laughs> There's one guy holding like five pairs of soiled panties, like in in medical gloves, holding them in front this of the other dog, guy was a YouTuber. This other guy was a YouTuber, at least he uploaded, and he's like, "I, if you want to see me, this is his, one of his YouTube excerpts. If you want to see me eat poop out of my diaper, I want one million subscribers." <laughs> this is a giant fat man and he was he was like Agreed. doing diaper fetish stuff uh online and um uh, that should be and, enough to lock that guy up. he was poisoning his family uh he was giving them laxatives and epsom salt so they were all shitting themselves and i think Wait. he got off on it like and his family is like old elderly people <laughs> and in the poli- detective interviews this old man who's must be like 75 he's like we're just crap in our pants. And we <laughs> literally, literally soiled myself. And I don't, I'm an old man, but you know, I can control my bowels. And I we said, didn't know this what. salsa always tasted like castor oil. Coffee, <laughs> he was putting it in their coffee makers so that it would, you know, mask the flavor of, 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 of him poisoning them. Um, I've been, I've watched a bunch of them today. I watched one where these three black chicks burnt another one alive um with um all over a man mm. and it's it was so crazy it, one of them's there's a there's a man and a and a wife okay uh-huh. and the wife has three or four friends and it turns out unbeknownst to her they're all fucking her husband her husband's fucking them all and but she finds out that one of them in particular has fucked him she doesn't know about any others so she gets the other two, she gets um, her other friend who's been fucking him and her 16 year old daughter, and they jump the other chick, taser, torture her, beat her with a, a, a crowbar, take her to a field and set her on fire. And she runs through the woods on fire, makes it to a neighbor's house. And like her last words before they put her under morphine are it's Brittany, Nicole, and Andrea. And then they put her under the anesthesia and she dies. And it was it they, they get the guy in the interrogation room and he's laid back chilling. He's on his phone with a different woman. Complete, <laughs> completely different woman. This he's guy like, yeah. sounds attractive. He goes, Yeah, I'm copacetic. I'm laid back, ain't even worried about shit. I'll be out. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I see. And the detective sitting across from him, like, tick tock, like, dude, he's got his big, like, scary folder unfolded. Mm-hmm. He's got that trapper keeper that, like, scary men on. He's mm-hmm. got that bitch out. And he's, like, looking at him, like, you about done with your phone call? And he's just like, yeah, hang on now. Let me get off the phone with you. They're going to make me hang. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous for you. Hang up. Yeah. It's like, hang <laughs> like, up, I'm, idiot. <laughs> I'm so polite about that that I mean, like, look, gotta let you go. Detective just walked in. Boop. Like, that's how I would have handled it, right? Like, yeah, immediately. He, he's laid back. <laughs> and, and, and the guy's like, so I heard you're having sexual relations with Brittany, Nicole, Andrew, and is it was that your sugar baby? He's like, nah, nah, that's my kitten. He's got like stupid pet names from all or some shit. He's like, hmm. yeah, that's my, that's old mama right there. He's like, well, who you got on the phone? He's like, oh, that's something else right there. That's something else. And the <laughs> cops are like, you said, they're playing along with, he's like, how you do that? You must be slick with it. Cause like me and Dave here, we'd lose our boats, our houses and our <laughs> cars if we tried yeah. to pull that shit. And he's like, I oh, just doing my thing. And it was like, oh my God, this is the, he was the only innocent one. He had nothing to do with burning that poor woman alive. He was just fucking everybody in the whole trailer yeah. park. I don't know if innocence is the first word I'd pick. But yeah. <laughs> innocent of murder. Very, yeah. very related. To She's on death murder. row. 
in uh in Florida right now. The 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 one who who did that stuff. Yeah, yeah those are uh, finished DeSantis. This um I heard isn't abortion going on the ballot in some manner down in Florida soon? It is, yeah. Yeah. So Florida has some of the tightest um abortion laws and uh, they're going to put it and see if um I think that I think maybe the Supreme Court, the Floridian Supreme Court just ruled in favor of it. There's a the state constitution has a right to privacy, which is sometimes mm. used as an abortion defense like to make it legal and that didn't work. So now they're putting it on the ballot and Democrats feel like this might put Florida in play because even in a conservative state like Florida, abortion is unpopular. So while people might not come out to vote for Joe Biden, they're likely to come out and vote Mm. for abortion. And that's a a hit on Trump. But I think Trump just wins the state by less. Yeah, I agree with you there because I think nationally, like in just a just a flat poll, abortions only ahead by like two points it's like 52 you know i think like 52 percent of people think abortion should even be legal at all and it's not all men i thought it was (laughs) way higher but i'm not sure i'll google it it could have changed i saw i saw a graph today it wasn't the graph wasn't about abortion it was about a different issue but i just took note of abortion while i was looking at the graph so it's possible it's a bit outdated but i saw 52 uh, yeah, it's closer than you'd be led to believe. I, I think a lot of conservative right. women are just oh, not so. I, yeah, I conservative just, women are not cool with it at all. This is Gallup, who I consider to be pretty good. Uh, pro-choice is fifty-two, like Kyle said, mm-hmm. but pro-life is forty-four. It's not forty-eight, so that's eight-point gap. Hmm. Well, yeah. well, surely there's like some undecideds in there or some people who have like yeah, a weird yeah. different yeah. viewpoint on it. Uh, no weird, opinion but... was four percent. I can't explain the other four. Yeah. Just no opinion at all. That's so abortion, weird to me. Right? Yeah. Like, how do you not I have opinion about shits uh, about things that have nothing to do with me and never will oh, I make a point strong to... opinions that I can go on and pontificate about for hours. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> as, you, as you might <laughs> something that's nothing to do with me. I hold strong opinions and then afterward you fade back to complete indifference. <laughs> yeah. And on WhatsApp, Taylor and I uh, like to go back and forth about historical events and and tragedies and such. And I sent him this this image of um, white people throwing slaves overboard a slave ship. And I said, did you know that they would throw sick and dying slaves overboard to drown because the insurance covered drowned slaves, but it did not cover slaves who were sick or died after they arrived for other illnesses? And Taylor takes about two seconds to say, you ever wonder why the slave auctions were closed on Saturdays? And I went, <laughs> I went, gotta go. <laughs> it was a good line. It was a good joke. <laughs> I don't get it. Help me. Someone carry me through this. Why Type this it, Taylor. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll readdress that one on a later date. <laughs> the, Type it, that's someone. a fourth hour one. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, right. took me a minute. Took me a minute. No, I, I like wanted... those. Yeah, I like our Jesus our, little, our little X rated chats. <laughs> I, I don't think we said anything bad. I, I was no, like, I, it's, it's funny. I learned that. I learned that fact, and it was just like, man, because you know, I did my genealogy the other day, and I found out that I was 006 percent sub Saharan African, my mm-hmm. brothers, and uh, and I I wanted to see, I want to learn more about the injustices that my people had suffered. <laughs> Sure. So and, and and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'd never supported reparations until I read that report that in my Gmail uh, the other day, and now full throatedly just. Uh, it would seem like you'd have to pay out like 99.4 percent and receive the 0. 0.6. That's an absurd viewpoint, Woody, and I can only <laughs> expect a white man to take such a viewpoint. Mm-hmm. This idea of like uh, of, of of dilly dally of, of of divvying up someone's life. You know, oh, oh, what percentage of you is black? What percentage of you is white? You're just so obsessed with race as a white. <laughs> you can't stop talking about it. You can't stop talking about it. You're just obsessed with it. And I don't oh. care for it one bit. No, I, 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 uh, I've I, also been looking at the swords. I I, I did enough research that I found like the oh, good sword website. Would you please website. get a sword or two? Be a sword guy, man. Kyle, Lean I think in. you're taking too long to buy a sword as if you're limiting yourself to just one. Narrow it down I'm- to two or three. Yeah, mm-hmm. If I'm being honest, I'm afraid I'm going to hurt myself with the sword because I know I'm going to like play with it. Uh, the website I was looking at has swords that are meant for like competition chopping, like cutting through that whatever that media is, like 
uh, bamboo or whatever the fuck they do. Mm. And it's like this water sort bottles. Of, it's like a real deal. Well, not well, like no, they do a thing. Uh, I know I've seen j- the Japanese guys do where they've got. Oh yeah, um, they have like a it's like a, a slanted. It's like rolled up fucking bamboo or, or, or reeds or something. Yeah. Anyway, they've got like a, a target and mm. like a perfect. Sl- they show that if somebody if you're not good with a katana, you can't chop through all of that shit. But if you're really good with it in one slash, you can. I want to uh, see that and I, I want to experience it because I have seen mm. the same sort of things mm. you have. Right. Which is like, look at this katana master. He can swing a sword. Look at this idiot. And it's like a fully athletic guy who doesn't do as well. And I'm like, what? is the trick do you need to like slice instead of chop you know maybe add a little forward to aft movement on the it's sword. gotta be technique because you and like, angle there's, there's clips of because uh, if the blade and, isn't like oh like, yeah like perfectly aligned and at, at the, the the way you're blade like slicing angle. if you if you twist the blade even slightly then you lose all of that I mean, imagine power. cutting a tomato with a non-serrated edge right if you just pressed straight down on it you might smush it but if you gave it a little slide while you cut it that tomato would slice yeah and i think there might be something there in sword play too. they're like pulling as they're yeah as they're slicing because you it's definitely technique because there are youtube videos of guys doing that to like seven of those reed bundles mm-hmm. what do you call bundle sticks the tawny uh, man like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then the, they, they cut through them all and they're just using a knife and yet they're doing like eight of them in a row yeah so, dude really a the knife competitions are amongst my favorite like sometimes they're um a little bit like cleavers and uh you know so the first they like slice tomatoes paper thin then they cut a rope then they cut a brick then maybe slice some more tomatoes and you're like god damn that's a good knife Mm -hmm. yeah become a sword guy man and you're not gonna Mm -hmm. hurt yourself like just don't be dumb and you won't hurt yourself and if you do you have two eyes already how many you need i'm not worried about my eyes i'm worried about like swinging i'm worried about over swinging and like slicing my femoral artery and bleeding out before Mm. i can even get to my phone Dude, if I if that if I was like if I was staying over at your house and like I woke up late morning and I walk out and you're dead from like a sword accident, I I am hiding your body. I'm making, <laughs> I'm making up a story for you. This is because I care about you. I would not let your legacy be that you killed yourself with a sword in your yard. I'd frame someone. I would do something to preserve say it was a duel. Life. Say it was you're a such duel. a good friend. I'm over printing honor. out his browser history and tweeting. <laughs> No, no. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm not going to solve for... this on an empty stomach. Let's, let's, let's go in the <laughs> have a sandwich first. Have but, a but, sandwich, play with yeah, rocks. Say, say I was dueling someone over honor. Yeah, I mean, something mm. like that. Hide your body, because I, I would not, wouldn't let that be your legacy. Yeah. Oh, just I, keep the dogs in the house. If you keep the dogs in the house, there's no way you accidentally cut yourself gruesomely with a sword. How so? Well, like what? Tell me the kind of moves you're imagining, like doing. Well, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I've got some sort of target set up, and I go to hit it, but I've never swung a fucking sword before, and I like lose my balance a little, and like swing all the way through and hit myself in the knee or the 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 fucking foot or the shin or something like that. But I didn't hit myself with a stick or like an axe that that'll you know if you've ever been chopping wood, sometimes yeah. you bump yourself and it'll kind of it'll bounce off. Eh, it, it can slice a couple tendons on the top of your foot. Can, I'm just saying can, that can happen. Can. Yeah. It's a but, it's a pretty traumatic experience. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, un- unfortunately, I've got like a competition slicing falchion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you also played baseball. Century. Like what you played falchion? baseball, you had some coordination. Uh, Is that type of sword? Yeah. Um. But so so yeah, I'm I'm a little worried about that. But I, but Is I it F A L C H I O N. I'm almost positive that it is that. Yes. It was God Taylor. You fucking suck. <sighs> Oh, oh, this looks like a pirate sword. Yar. Yeah. Yar. <laughs> Yar, it would be. Yar. No, I wouldn't. If you're going to lean in, don't start with like a pirate sword. Start with like a. What, what's the most basic kind of sword you can think well, of? My, uh, well, it would be Just the like gladius sword. So I also mm-hmm. thought that it would be smart to get a sword that makes uh, a good accessory to a Halloween costume. Because like like maybe I could be a Roman soldier one year and looky there, Kyle's got a Roman gladius. And the thing would be, you could walk anywhere you want wearing, wearing a real gladius and nobody would say boo because it's Halloween. Yeah, that's a, okay. Then gladius is clearly the right move. 
the a good Gladys is like two fifty to three hundred fifty dollars. I say that's a reasonable price. I mean, I, I granted, so, I've too. never looked at the market for swords outside of well, a few minutes. Gladius, it is. I'll uh, I'll get that thing ordered up. Get it with um, like a like a jewel on the pommel, like something. So I don't mm. know, something cool looking on it. That would be neat. Like this one. This one has a little eagle or something down there at the bottom, on the, like a crest kind of. Get a little amber jewel with a bug in it. Yeah, is that an aquila? Aquila. It's, I know Aguilla? it's a Q, but I think you pronounce it the G. Ah, you Aguilla? might be right. Aguilla? I Either way, that. get a fucking sword. This is the site I would use. It's um, I I got a little lost. Is an Aguilla the name of the picture on that circle it's, or the circle? It's just that wrong. It's just that eagle that's facing um, oh, you know, okay. one direction. It's it that's an Aguilla. Yeah, I think it's G, but it could be Q. I know there's it's spelled with a Q, but I think it's pronounced with a G. Could be wrong. This is yeah. the website that I've been recommended to get like a real deal sword. They also have armor and shields <laughs> and LARPing weapons and gear. So you can get war hammers. Yeah, Kyle, I feel like you're half assing this with no armor whatsoever. You know, you're right. <laughs> you're right. Dude, that guy's looking kind of hard over there in that armor. Look at him. Yeah, they have a is. whole subsection for Asian pole arms. That's pretty sweet. The Naginata. That's what that lady in. Uh, Shogun. Shogun was practicing with, yeah, yeah, dude. fifty bucks. That this is that lady's very in. attractive. I, I'm super into. Um, this the is the married chick. Yeah, the translator, the translator. Shogun, yeah, yeah, yeah. super attractive. Mm -hmm. uh, the most recent episode was really good. Uh, there was a part where, um, the the guy's trying to sort of sort of teach our white uh, Englishman how to use a fucking katana. And uh, I liked that he didn't have any skill with it whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. glad that too. So if you're not watching Shogun at all to the listeners, there is this white guy who sails to Japan. And uh, along the way, he bumps into this samurai. And the two are kind of natural combatants, enemies. They don't like each other. They're frenemies, I feel like. Okay, okay. Uh, early in the show, it made it seem like they might fight. And it wasn't clear to me who would win. As the show progressed, clearly the guy who's made a living hand-to-hand -hand combat is head and shoulders yeah. better at hand-to-hand -hand combat. And I like that they did that, because even though he's the star of the show, that doesn't mean that he can beat up everyone like he's fucking William Shatner. Yeah, yeah he, he, tried to like, uh, he tried to hold the sword the way you'd hold like a like a pirate fencing. sword at first, like a yeah. fencing, like a rapier or something. Like he went <clears throat> to hold it like one -handed, that. One-handed, leaning Yeah, one-handed, like, and saber. so clearly... It was like, oh, he doesn't know this. He doesn't know the way of the samurai. Yes. Yeah, yeah he tried to hold a sword one-handed, and the guy's like, two. And then didn't he even do two wrong at first? I forget. But yeah. I, I thought it was a little mean. Him. The, the, the English guy didn't bully them for not ha for having terrible cannons. Oh, so that'd be didn't. great if he just walked up and like, hold, pick up your gun. All right, good. Bam! Like, shoot <laughs> <in> the leg. <laughs> oh, you see? You've got to shoot me first before I can shoot you. <laughs> just reloading the whole time. See, even now, you should do. You should be shooting me, but clearly you're not because you don't know how this game works. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. Do your guns suck? Is that why we're winning? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to the if, the... if there's not a scene in this show, we have three episodes left, where mm. somebody talks mad shit and then our English gentleman pulls an Indiana Jones and just goes, bang, and mm -hmm. shoots somebody, I'm going to be disappointed. I'm going to be really disappointed if that doesn't happen. I need that moment to happen because these people are so fucking stuck up their own asses with their crazy Japanese Bushido that it's infuriating at times. It's uh, Japanese feudal sort of, yeah. the, uh, not feudalism, but um, what's the uh, chivalry? It's like mm -hmm. their version of chivalry. Uh I want yeah, to they're see over the top with away. their rituals and manners. Like, like our society is polite, and and we maybe follow the rules by without even thinking twice about it. But their society is really another level. Just the amount of rules that you need to follow, and yeah, the consequences are are, are just absurd. <clears throat> like, there's like, only one consequence. Everything. Yeah. Oh, Everything did you yourself remove a dead bird from a string? Death. Did you steal anything? Death. <laughs> yeah. Did you That's adult meme. death? Like everything death. What is it? It's meme? also death. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Believe it or not, also death. Yes. <laughs> also death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Punishment for killing your mother? 
<laughs> Life in prison. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> the, the most recent episode, I felt like the plot didn't move a ton. It did. Significant things happened. But I can tell you what happened in the last episode in nine seconds. And if that's mm. true, it's not a lot. Not enough happened. I felt like the last episode, I still don't, I don't know if our main guy, I think so much of our main character, the Japanese guy, like, like uh, Nor, what's his name? I, Naga Rock Nobunaga or something, or, yeah. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm struggling. But uh, I think so much of him strategically, and mm-hmm. then he had that conversation with the, with the, uh, the prostitute lady, and I'm like, does our guy have some aces up his sleeve, or is he really at his wit's end? Because he's so smart, and the way the show works, there's no sort of time where he winks at the camera and goes, don't worry, we got this. He did, he did, mm-hmm. And they sort of talk about how the Japanese people have multiple hearts, like one you show to the world and maybe one you show your friends and one you don't show anyone, these different sides of yourself. And it seems like we never get to see him revealing any of his other hearts to anybody. He just everything's um, on the inside. So I don't know if he's worried or not. I can't tell. It he seems doesn't have... Like so, I'm sorry to cut you off, uh, but the the guy that you're talking about, the main leader, yeah, he um, the way that he operates, nobody is a trusted ally, like not even his children, really. The, his children <laughs> are maybe a little incompetent, and that's why. Yeah. But his brother, like nobody, no one in this whole world does he consider trustworthy, and he's it's been working for him. Like he's kind of that old right. man, maybe. And, and I mm-hmm. love that moment mm-hmm. from from this episode. It's. We plan to watch it. This is a, a tiny bit of a spoiler, but but at the beginning of the episode, it's a flashback to when the Japanese guy was 12 and he'd won this great battle and the uh, the enemy bows to him and it, the enemy's going to disembowel himself. And the way they, they, they do that, um, you have a second, which means you have a guy there with a sword who's going to lop your head off after you have ritualistically disemboweled yourself to fulfill honor. You know, so you don't have no, no need to continue suffering and like die mm-hmm. two days later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, this guy bows to our 12 year old. You beat me. It's over. He gets on his knees, goes to gut himself. And his like main homie like steps out. He's like, I got you, boss. And he's like, no, no, no. I want the, the new warlord to be my second. And, and then it cuts. And at the very end of the episode, like that story comes back up and he's like, Man, I made a mess at that. And the other guy's like, yeah, 12 hits before you got that fucking head off. Jesus, it was awful. <laughs> Who chooses a child to be their second, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the best line but of the whole episode. The, the, earlier in the episode, they told they retold the story as if he chopped the head with one, sh- one try. <laughs> and the guy who took 12 tries just let that version of it, you know, go out in public. But when private rolled around, it was what Kyle said. Like, yeah, I made a mess <laughs> well, of that. Well, fucking tries. Yeah, he really um, shouldn't have picked a child to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this: what um, the plot didn't move significantly, but but I I felt like I learned a bit about our our uh, the Japanese guy just watching him sort of deal with maybe the potential that he's lost and and watching him mull over that problem. But I won't spoil the end of the episode because I promise you guys, if you're not watching this show, it's really worth watching. Uh, I my my jaw dropped in the last like thirty seconds of that episode. Uh, a character dies, and it's like holy fucking shit. Uh, I haven't felt like this since Game of Thrones. I think to to the not just the surprise that someone died, mm-hmm. but how it happened was so like out of left field. Mm-hmm. It was bizarre and a little funny and just fucked up. He uh, didn't die a real hero's death, <laughs> and I like that. I like that. He didn't die a superhero's death. And I like that a noteworthy character, it's not like a main, main character, but a noteworthy character dies. And I like that in every show. It's one of the reasons I hung on to Walking Dead as long as I did to the mm. end. Because no people. one's safe in The Walking Dead. They really do kill people. Rick, for all intents and purposes, died. Um, every hard, Pretty much everyone from season one didn't make it to the end, except for Daryl and Carol. Mm. Um, so yeah, Invincible, if you're watching that cartoon, a significant person dies in it. And uh, as far as I know, they must they come back. But uh, I like it when they kill people. Yeah. The uh, are you current on Invincible? No, maybe two down something. I like that. Hey, look, you don't watch? Do you don't watch that show? Or you do? I, I know I haven't seen any of it. So I know you don't like the superhero stuff. But how about a superhero is, cartoon? 
Was that? Yeah. Mm, this no. Is, <laughs> this is this. Uh, this doesn't. I somehow like that less. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Uh, it's very popular, uh, and not just amongst the the standard superhero like just watch it because Devotees. it's a superhero thing kind of thing. It's its own different universe. It's very interesting, um, and it's it's some of the best uh, animation I've ever seen as far as the the, the way. I really like. Is that, that the one where uh, uh, what's his, the the Allstate insurance guy is? Yeah, the main boy. Yeah, okay. J.K. Simmons is Omni Man. Yes. All right, there we go. I, I know a bit is, about it. He's the, kind of the main character, uh, or at least the main character's dad, and and a big part of the the show. Uh, it's real good. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm I, I spoiler on that, um, but it, it, who cares? Mark's getting rid of his black girlfriend, and I'm psyched. Oh. I've been waiting on Mark to get rid of black girlfriend. Now this whole I'll never time. watch. Oh, I can't wait for him to get with the. She the has been here. a near perfect girlfriend, but she's not a superhero, and it just makes her the. It, it it almost seems like, dude, you should be dating a hot superhero, and there's one yeah. there that you're you're shipping them with. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's fucking hot. Uh, the the Adam Eve chicks like super super hot redhead superhero chick who's single and ready to mingle. Um, yeah, so and her great. like superhero costume is. I don't know how yoga shorts and a crop top or something. Isn't like, it? I think it's just like a like a one piece bathing suit, basically. Right? Like, That's yeah, how I, I don't remember know. it. She's got a significant mons pubis in every scene. You say that? And that's what actually got me to watch the show to begin with. And I was like, what is what he talking about? I am not seeing it. Can you pull up a picture, Zach? A- of Adam Eve. E- is it Adam? I, I, I thought it was Eve. It might be Adam Eve. Um it is from in, oh, it's, okay. It is Kyle knows from Invincible and uh, try to make me look smart. Find one with a significant. Just any cubist. picture, pick pick <laughs> ten fucking random pictures and find me one where she's got a fat pussy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like like X Men back in the day. That sh- that cartoon was drawn for the young man who was, beco- who was the, <laughs> who, for the young boy who was becoming a man. <laughs> Jean Grey's titties were hanging out on either side of her, like you could see them from behind. It was awesome. All the chicks had camel toes. All the chicks were sexy and flirty. Okay. Meanwhile, this is what you guys are all on about. This is what Woody's on about. First of no, all, no, this like, is like, not the, from the show. The, yeah, this is the like anim- fan, This is this might okay, be from the show. This, yeah, this is from the show. Anyway, it's just a cartoon lady. Not even any clear. It's a cartoon lady. I just don't think there's anything special about her pussy. I think it's a very attractive lady. Uh, I like her powers too. That'd be neat. It'd be cool I noticed that around. fucking hump lump every time she's on hump screen. Lump. Yeah, I made that up. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I called it a hump lump, Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was that a subreddit? Try that out on a, a woman. They love it. Spot. Spot. <laughs> love it. It's a hump lump. That's what I'm calling it going forward. A lovely hump uh, I'm going to. Wait, what did you say? Hump lump? Yeah. Hump. Is that original lump. thought? I thought I, it was. I, I hope it's not. You can start a whole community of fucking she weirdos. Shack isn't my 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 cool fucking Arabic bur- burger joint. I came up with the idea for for the other day. Already had several investors. Already taken. There's already a Sheik Shack. You can invest. You can get in on the ground level. Yeah, I'm not seeing any. Hump when you Google hump here. lump, you just get the back of men's necks. That's an original thought Ooh, there. That's that's worse than what you. Is were it black men? Like. Is it specifically black men? It wasn't. It was people who keep their head a little too forward. So I didn't grow see up seeing like a lot of black little. people, uh, and I remember we were at a, like a Sizzler one time, like a, a, a classy I know, and and we were in we were in line, and there was a, a a fat black man in line in front of us, and he had that thing on the back of his neck that's like the multiple oh. lumps, like those multiple rolls of fat on the back of his neck, and like nine year old me was like, is that a Ninja Turtle? Like what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> I, just, I remember being so like I'd never seen that on a human being before. Yeah. And, uh, well, it doesn't uh, seem like that's because he was black. It seems like it's because he was fat, and you had I a very a black, cherished childhood of not too many fat people. I mean, not too many fat people. There were some fatties around. South, you, ever, you know, like you ever see those old video? Like anytime I see old video footage now of like any time pre nineties, the thing that jumps out at me immediately is like every like the the lack of fat people compared to now. It's insane. Mm. It's wild the difference. Is that it's Vincent D'Onofrio? I was got a nice out. bald head. He does. I, I was yeah, watching people, this guy last night. Oh. 
IMDb link. He uh, he was in a movie called The Wanderers. I don't know if you guys know that 1970s movie. No, it's no. like from before my time, but I saw it when I was a little kid, and it was super scary oh, to me. He was Dynamo in The Running Man. I know this guy. Oh, okay, yeah, he has what you're talking about on his name. Yeah, and even he's, though he's uh, that's a good movie. That that movie is is needs a remake. Uh, the The Ooh. Running Man. That was yeah. a bad movie, so they should make a good one this time. Like they I, do that a lot. They take good movies and make bad sequels or bad remakes. They should make take bad movies and make good remakes. They've done the bar's that once. Already so low. I can get you to agree with me. Um, Judge Dredd. Yeah, of course. That that was, you know, th- there's a lot going on with the Judge Dredd thing. They had Rob Schneider as the comedic relief to Sylvester Stallone, who is so vain that he took the helmet off 30 seconds into the movie. So <laughs> kind of a shit show from the start. I hate uh, Sylvester Stallone for that. You hate mm. him? Yeah. Take things like, take things like that very seriously, Taylor. <laughs> what else is he like? What's he been good in rather than Rocky? You've told me. Okay. So Rocky one and two legitimate good movies. One won the Oscar. Um, he, he wrote one as well. I think maybe screenplay is what it won for. Uh, Cliffhanger, if you like action movies, is probably one of my favorites of his. It's basically he's Mountain Rescue. And um, he's there are uh, terrorists who have robbed a money plane and the plane has crashed on top of the mountain. And so they do a, a false rescue call. And when he gets up there, they force him to look for the, the money bags that are sprinkled around the mountaintops. They have trackers in them. It's a whole cat and mouse thing. It's a very good action movie. Um, Is that it? That, well, no, that's not, it's not there's it. Other, there's other great still in movie. Stop or my mom will shoot. Okay, do you know the story behind that, right? Like, that's no. the one that Schwarzenegger tricked him into taking. <laughs> what? <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger has been getting uh, getting one over on Stallone, like, every step of the way for, like, 40 years or something. They were huge competitors. They were always going for the same scripts and things like that. And what Stallone had been doing is, like, whenever he saw Arnold was interested in, in a script, he would swoop in and try to take it. He'd undercut him if he could. He'd like, oh, you, you get Stallone for $20 million or Arnold for 20 20- 25 like come on it's an easy decision and uh so arnold sent out fake feelers that he wanted stop or my mom will shoot <laughs> <laughs> and stallone swoops in and takes this awful fucking movie where a cop is partnered with an old lady <laughs> <laughs> his mom uh on the other hand like they, it probably wasn't that long after turner and hooch that tom hanks movie where he's got the saint bernard uh police partner it's great it's a real sweet movie no, I'll uh, put that on the list. Dog gets shot at the end. Oh, I'll take it off the list. There you go. Yeah. He lives. Uh, in the maybe pile. He saves Tom Hanks at the end. Tom Hanks is about to die and the oh, dog back takes off. the bullet for him. Back oh, off the list. Shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you gonna do? Tom Hanks isn't in a ton of stuff anymore that I, I've seen. He works constantly. Like every year. He's, he's Yeah, he ruined that freaking pilot movie on apple <laughs> I'm, I'm so distanced from movies i'm like oh this you don't see this guy much anymore you're like you're both immediately like he works constantly like 15 <laughs> movies a year like he's, he's always i movies. want to call it a few good men but that's not what it's called kyle always reminds me every day. masters of the sky thank you you're close <laughs> mm, i got zero words out of <laughs> a few words good though men. you you use real words <laughs> Of you didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting better. <laughs> He's not using sounds and clapping to indicate what he likes anymore. He's just using his words like a, like a grown up. Yeah. Uh, Damn. Well, I need to expand my movie knowledge of him then. Yeah, because I don't know, I've really like so much uh, time playing that fucking Age of Empires game from, from mm-hmm. decades gone by. That, fun. That, that you're missing out on all sorts of quality entertainment. That I'm watching the important stuff. I'm watching Shogun. Shogun and what else? Uh, you yeah. might have me yeah. because yeah. I, it's mostly YouTube videos well, about Age of I Empires. I bet if I looked at your <laughs> YouTube history, it's nothing but fucking Hera or, or, or some other fucking A lot of loser. Hera and, and Viper. And, uh, and I've also been watching some... Uh, I've fallen back into Magic the Gathering Arena. So a little bit of that mm. guy. I remember when we got into that years ago, Kyle, uh, that guy's channel, Covert Go Blue. He's he's really, okay. really good at the game. He's fun to watch play because like he's genuinely very knowledgeable of the game. And so he'll just but like 
his whole aura is like, I'm the best of the best at this, and, and you're a stupid retard. And, and he's I'm like, a, legitimately, sometimes will be the number one guy. He's gay, right? Like, like I, I have no idea. I did, I, he didn't jump out as gay to like, me. He jumps out as sassy to me. He's definitely like, like, sassy. Like he's, he's so sassy. Uh, I would have to watch his videos, and I, I, it seems a little mean. I watched tons of them. I've watched a lot of this man's content because they're good videos. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, I do want to learn your liquid blue slick deck. I want to learn yeah. how it works. Show me the fucking uh, the, the gizmo. Show me how it works. But I am just suffering through him, <laughs> like being all sassy and 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 catty. Like 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 that's how I would describe him. Yeah. This grown ass man teaching me Magic the Gathering. My, I'm done with Magic the <laughs> Gathering. Magic the Gathering is like fucking, uh, uh, like a pyramid scheme. It's like fucking Amway or, or fucking Tupperware or something. It's like, come no, on, don't you want to come to the Tupperware party? They're fun. We all have Tupperware. Well, I've got my mom's old Tupperware. Oh, no, no. That's the old set. We're playing modern. Modern Tupperware only. Oh, okay. How much is it to get in? Hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> hundred dollars for one one competitive set of Tupperware. <laughs> Hand you one bowl. <laughs> now you're sitting there with everybody else with your one bowl, and you realize that See, only your, like... your problem is you can't play standard or those new formats. Like I'm jumping back into it now, having fun, just casually playing some games at night occasionally, and I just play historic. So like any card that's ever been released is you can do it. It's like all the decks I made two three years ago are still ready to go you hop right on there and play them but you're right if you try and keep up with like magic standard like it's like you need a good job to not <laughs> notice the amount of money you're spending on that shit yeah yeah it, it gets into the thousands i mean just it's a very fun game though it's so fun I, i'm not I, going back to that no you don't have back to go to back you should get into i wish you would get into like poker like like learning poker. there's no wizards so or fun. magic there's no bows and arrows. There's kings and queens and jacks and jokers. <laughs> <laughs> Can you play with the jokers? <laughs> we will play with the jokers if you'll play poker. I, I promise you, if you agreed to play poker with the boys, they'd be like, yeah, okay. okay. Dude, if I if I lost the amount of money... You, in, no, no, you'd like, be playing, poker. you'd go, hey, uh, Seven's Wild, right? Everybody'd be like, yeah. You're like, huh? yeah. Full house. <laughs> <laughs> I play three sevens, which allows me to use additional cards from a deck I brought from home. I now have five sevens, the ultimate and, hand. And a reverse card from Uno. And a reverse card. I bought this online for $600. It's the ultimate ace. It defeats all I, others. The most fun I have in there is probably code names. And then after that, it's when we play like probably community games like Monopoly and shit like that. Yeah. We had a, well, Code Names is great. It's just a classic, awesome game. Oh, we smashed so hard at Code Names this week. That was fun. That was that was that was good times. That um, was. I, I had a good run of of Code Names in our hangout this week. I think I won. I was, I was eight and a one. Lot. Yeah, it was yeah. something similar to that. I don't know what it was exactly. I lost a few, but it was some of those few were the ones when we were all like, "Hey, what? What happened?" <laughs> yeah, was, there, I lost there, one where. Like someone on our team hit end guessing. Like we were not done guessing. Maybe we didn't even guess. That had happened in a previous game. And my team just hit end guessing so that you could resume where you were and everything was cool. Fish then it happened those. against me and Fish was just like. You won that one clue. though, I think. I think you won it despite having that disadvantage because. Uh, that that's was the one, one we situations. came back. That was our 28 to 3. Remember? I called it. Mm. Yeah. I called it, it like Abe okay. Ruth pointing over there because me and Woody were on the same team there. Woody and I were both on the red team for the first six games of the day, and we were both six and zero. Explains Take why we that. both won so much. Take of that what you will. You know, the ultimate mm. team. <laughs> Some people say the best pairing in Codenames history. Yeah, well, people are saying that. People are. people say that. I, I, people come up to me all the time. <laughs> they come people. up to me all the time. They look at me. They say, "You're so good at words. The best <laughs> at words." They say, "Donald, how do I get better at words?" I say, "You're born with it, or you're not." <laughs> <laughs> Man, mm. I'd love to see. All of our presidential candidates have to play just two rounds of code names. That would be so telling to me. Like if they like, had like voter a... confidence polls beforehand and then afterward, it'd be like, oh geez. I don't know. <laughs> he couldn't I'm connect not... airplane and and, and hang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. you, you know, all jokes aside, if I if if the candidates played a couple games, just get your cabinet. That'll be your team. Like, like, like Biden, get your cabinet together. Uh, you can have the Joint Chiefs or whatever, and like one of them, and you can have your Secretary of State, and 
Buddha Judge, you want to come in here? Yeah, transportation. Should you be getting that bit bridge fixed? No, come on, play some code names with us. <laughs> and, like like against Trump Buttigieg and his and his like scandalous group of shitheads. He'd he'd bring he'd bring like like Ken Jennings or something. <laughs> he'd, he'd <be> <laughs> no, no, he would he would have a fucking player. Discord conversation on the side and smash he'd everybody. Cheating. <laughs> he'd cheating. There'd be, um, there's cheating on all sides of that. The, would tell the, me the more game. about like how with it they were and how smart they were than any debate. Those debates are so nonsense, and I, I still stand but behind like thinking there will not be any presidential debates. I haven't maybe I'll do on a, that in a while. Like, would you like trivia instead of debates? Because they're never going to make them debate important shit like in a meaningful uh, way. Oh, we've yeah, we've talked about that. Trivia would be amazing. Um, I, I. Not in, not even in, I mean I guess trivia by definition not important stuff but just stuff to show they're still with it. Well, if you ask them the price of bread, you know that's that classic gotcha. It's like no two or three dollars, like like, like it, it varies. Uh, but but if they say like twelve dollars, if they're that out of it, I don't know if that matters. It just sort of suggests that their lifestyle is very nice, you know, yeah. that they never even come close to the price of bread anywhere on a receipt or anything like that. But it doesn't mean that they're not with it. They don't think it's 1970 or 2170 or whenever bread should be $12. They just don't know the price of bread. I'd rather see, I don't know. I'd like to see how what they think about some geopolitical stuff and maybe some hard questions. They never ask hard questions. They they always mm -hmm. dance around um, like, like actually saying anything bad about their donors and the and the big funds that nobody ever really wants to go after oil. Nobody ever really wants to start talking about getting to that carbon neutral shit without nuclear is absurd. No, I don't know yeah. why there's no nuclear like proponents who are like, yeah, it's, it just makes so much sense. It, it makes so much sense. It does make a lot of sense. There are nuclear proponents. I am. Um, I More. feel like what, lately when I listen to Ted talks and stuff, even the greenest of people are more pro nuclear power than they used to be. Yeah. It's, That's it's a step in the right direction. I it's the so. way. And the best part is, like, we've got so much fuel already just sitting around in holes in the ground all over the country mm. in those secret silos aimed at our enemies. <laughs> that, that, like, you're like oh. ready to go. Like, like it's yeah. it. They can they can use that. I'm sure as fuel. They, they weapons grade plutonium. I don't know. That's not a thing I know. It's uranium, I think. Oh, what do plutonium? you? Maybe you in know, a hydrogen bomb. See, I have proven stages. my point about how I don't know. <laughs> well, the hydrogen bomb utilizes hydrogen, and the nuclear bomb utilizes nuclear. Duh. Is my yeah, we brought our expert this week, so <laughs> they all glow it's green, cool. so it's easy to mistake. <laughs> yeah, the nuclear thing, like, like, and people will be like, "Would you want one in your backyard?" It's like, and there's like two or three. That's what. That's how we get power down here. That and hydroelectric. Like like Kiowa, there's a big one, and uh, I think there's two or three down here. Like, not not near Atlanta, but near where I'm from in Northeast Georgia. I've been yeah. to the, I think I went to the Kiowa power plant. Was fat on a field trip one time, and of course you go through their museum, and they're they're like this banana has more radiation than our reactor, and it's like hmm. that can't be true. It's like the tour guide has seven fingers on that hand. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great if they had a burn victim as the tour guide. Why don't Why don't we put a bunch of nuclear power plants in Canada? Make it unrelated. Yeah, unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious if they got like an elephant man to do the tour. <laughs> or just gave him a he's got a third arm coming out of his back haphazardly. That like that oh. really cheery motivational speaker from Australia with no limbs they'd wheel him around Ooh, and he tells you, you didn't know about this guy no yeah he no. can somehow swim or maybe they're just, maybe those no, videos are cut quickly wait is his name Giorgio <laughs> or something no. yeah. I don't think so but he if he's I absolutely a guy. This is not no a dream arms. I watched the swimmer with no arms he's fucking badass I, he was yeah but he had legs he did have legs he swam like a dolphin he didn't breathe for 50 meters. <laughs> he just held his breath and swam underwater the whole time. Oh, apparently. Yeah, his name's um, Nick Vujicic from Australia. He has how do he lose kids. the arms? Born yeah, without yeah. arms and born without legs. Yeah, he's jumping in the, in, in the pool. Show me a picture of this guy. I got to see what he looks like. Does he look like a tadpole or something? He He's not very mobile looking. You don't think? Uh, <laughs> he look, me, like, does he look like... Uh, what what are those whales at the Atlanta uh, Aquarium, Woody? That look like they've got hips. Beluga. Do, beluga. Is he like, is he like, like shaped like a beluga whale? <laughs> oh, 
I want to see this. What is this? You look at the beluga whale from the right angle. It's kind of sexy. Why is this on LinkedIn? Dude, it's good looking too. Look at him there, there he with, is. His, with his fucking jean shorts on. Now, depending on whether or not this <laughs> video, if you play it, shows him going down or up, would change my opinion of his swimming. Definitely story. down. Like, but look at how calm the person behind him is. Like he's done this before. He's he's oh, swimming. Dude, it's a missed opportunity that his name is Nick. Like he, this floating guy with no arms and no legs should be named Bob. A hundred percent. Yeah, but look, he's in a good mood. He's always talking, or at least you know, I bet his Halloween. I bet his Halloween costumes Whoa, wait, are great. Is that a hint of a foot? That is yeah, a he's got he's foot. got a little little thing down. He's there. got a little helper foot. That's how yeah. he got. Look, that no wonder he's got three or four kids. Look at that hog. Yeah. <laughs> he's got four kids. You think four his four kids? You think his lady? You think Good he puts him. that in her? You, you think he gets her with that little baby foot? I bet this. I look so. at that face. That guy does whatever he pleases. She better be into that. So yeah. she's yeah. the only one with that opportunity, really. I'm glad Man. that some people are able to find what if you know, you that itch? happiness. Man, I, I, well, I, I, I itch my way over to drowning myself in that pool if this happened to me. I'm gonna tell you right now. Not if you have his skills. He couldn't drown hair. if he wanted to. Oh, I'd figure it out. I'd put my head in that fucking like uh, that, that round filter th- filter pot and just go upside down in there. Look at this oh, guy. Oh, is that God. the guy I was talking about, Giorgio or something? Then now this I guy think... looks like he had arms because it looks like there's a scar or something there. Mm. Whereas the other guy. OG no arm kind of guy. What the fuck? Zang Tao. No, that's not the guy I was thinking of. Okay, I, I want to see how how far he's kicked himself out of the water here. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, is he how far out of the water is this guy? With he probably rack? has two legs to get that high. No limb athletes. When I swam in college, mm-hmm. one of the other teams had a dude with one leg, and he sucked. Yeah, <laughs> he was always swimming in circles out there. He's <laughs> coming into your lane. <laughs> okay, out of my lane. Guy, obviously, this guy can swim. He has legs. Well, I yeah. mean, still though, he doesn't have funny fucking arms. I'm Neither do fish. Just... Yeah, that's true. Are fish you have are gills? You a, are you a, are you a competent, <laughs> good swimmer, Kyle? No, no, I can keep myself alive. I don't think I would drown. Um, <laughs> unless the waters were like pretty choppy, um, but but if it got anything more than that, I would go down. Uh, I think that I can. I, yeah, not a good swimmer. So you don't um, know like the strokes. You couldn't do I mean, like I know them. freestyle backstroke. Knowing them and doing them is another thing. Doing them well is another thing. It's just I know them, but I'm not a good swimmer. No. Okay, i i I part of me still thinks when I hear like an adult say like, I don't know how to swim. Part of me is like, just get in the water and it'll just happen. Like just intuitively, like how, like move in the water. And then the Woody as a lifeguard is like, no, obviously not. You fucking yeah. I tell people to swim. It's not natural for humans at all. It's, it seems so easy. Maybe it's, it's cause bizarre. I did swim lessons as a kid. It's but. bizarre that they don't just th- get horizontal. They're, they're, they're sort of bobbing up and down and sort of like trying to pull themselves to out like and grasp they, at it with wide fingers. Oh, it, it's it's weird watching someone drown like that. I think I saw a news story where like a kid fell in a pool and two adults drowned trying to save the kid in the pool. What? That's what the fuck? No one was like paying recently. Attention. How big was this pool? No one. I wish I was there. That would be like no big deal. Saving a child. Triple a kill. Pool? Yeah. Like, yeah, you'd have to save the two adults who went in. That's after. not hard either. Like it's, it's what he could have his nachos pool. in his other hand while he's doing. <laughs> yeah. this. I really do think if you're like Woody, save all three of them, hold a brick in one hand, I'd be okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think I could save them. I think it's, I could get the kid out of there, but I'm not going in for an adult anyway. Yeah, mm. it's against your principles. Should have learned to swim. Not that it better be a hot adult. I'm saying right friend. now, if it's, not, if, it, if, it's, if it's some like fat dude that fell in, is like. Right, but if he's hot, you're there. Yeah, if like John Stamos fell in, <laughs> I'm glad you went. With he cracks his head on the fucking uh, on the step on the way in. I'm like, holy shit, that's the guy from Full House. Look, get get him out of there. Yeah, I'd did you guys have uh, when you would swim in pools or whatever as a kid? Obviously, there were those pictures of the people breaking their neck from diving. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, was there a? I never knew anyone who that happened to, and I'm realizing now. I think adults might have been fibbing to me about like local kids getting paralyzed from it. Hmm. There's what do you would know? Is that's that's not super common. 
right? Like, Not that I know of. But I, you mean no. diving in, hitting like into a shallow? I, and, I feel like hitting yeah. your hitting the bottom and getting a scrape is super common. Hitting the bottom and getting a neck injury, I've never seen it. Yeah, that was like a mythos, like a like a tooth fairy level thing. Like when I'd go swimming, like parents would like, don't you dive in there. Remember what happened to little Timmy Smith up the road? And it's like, Timmy Smith, I never heard of him. And they're like, and you never will again what because he's paralyzed giving like motivational speeches in Australia. <laughs> Every swimmer <laughs> is a competitive swimmer who's dove into a pool a thousand, two thousand, six thousand times has hit their face on the bottom at one point. I had a teammate. He was really good. He was all American. And he would always do this thing at the start of every practice where he jumped up abnormally high. And then he went straight down. And the water was like three and a half feet deep. And he was always fine. That It's just trying to loosen himself up. I think he was showing off. It was a thing that he was good at. And if you looked at it, you'd be like, that has to be dangerous. right? Everyone jumped in the shallow end, but we would take a shallow dive. Yeah. This guy went straight down like a pencil and... Then underwater, he would just curve it up and save it. I'm going to swim more this summer. That Me sounds too. fun. My a pool of, uh, opens tomorrow. Well, ooh. kind of. It takes a while for the water to get clean, but tomorrow the guys come in. A lot of kids would jump off uh, into the rock quarries when I was a kid. There's oh. lots of, especially in Elberton, Georgia, there's just tons of these quarries. And basically, it's a square hole underneath the dirt. Surprise, surprise. And you're just on top of a, a, a giant cap of granite that encompasses the entire county. So you can cut square holes into the ground that is just rock. It's just rock down there, just solid and mm -hmm. deep. So but Super deep, right? Like too deep for a human to touch, maybe? What do you mean touch? Like if you the try bottom? to swim to the bottom and come back with a rock. Oh, right? who even fucking knows? Because yeah. what they'll do is they're, they're mining, essentially, in these quarries. And they, the sides of the quarry have these square holes. And it's just, it'll be, it's a huge hole in the ground and then it's full of water. I went to a place that there's a, um, a skeet shooting place, sporting clay, a sporting clay place in mm -hmm. Elberton where they utilize rock quarries. So they'll throw the skeet out over the rock quarries and you'll shoot them out there. And it's, it's cool because the shot will hit the opposite side and you can see it hit the rock. And because the, the skeet always hits the rock in the same place. So it's just stained the rock orange because I thought millions of them mm -hmm. have fucking hit that rock. But the bottom is God knows. You don't know. Maybe it's 50, 60, 70, 150. You don't know. So they would, um, I say they, kids around here have always set up these giant rope swings and cable pulley swings. They'd sometimes use, utilize some of the leftover cranes and, um, and stuff like that. And I remember my dad growing up told a story about his brother-in-law was standing there while people were doing the, the swing. And the way it worked, you... Swung out, you let go, do a flip, land in the water. Oh, yeah. And then there's a uh, um, a string tied to the cable. You, you swing out on a cable, but there's a string tied to the cable so we can retrieve the cable so the next person can go. Well, my dad's brother-in-law is literally just an idiot, like, like probably special. And he's standing like a cartoon character in the coil of rope. Like, we're here to do the thing. Like, don't oh. imagine that he's, like, having a beer by a campfire way over there. We're all here on a ledge. He's, he's standing like Wiley stand. Coyote on the yes. edge of the cliff. He, has, he is Wiley coyote <laughs> standing in the fuck Elmer Fudd. Like, like, and so the next person goes and... <laughs> and it's Brick Mason cord. If you don't, you're not familiar with this. I'm very not. strong, very thin string. It's, it's hmm. like super fishing line, maybe. But it is string. Nylon wraps around his foot, drags him out upside down over the fucking quarry while the other person is swinging along too. And he dangles as the thing slices and cuts through his fucking foot in like eight different places. And they're so poor back then. Dad's like, grandmama was putting tomatoes and potatoes and roots and poultices <laughs> and they was spitting tobacco juice on it. <laughs> A <little Pistin>. <laughs> like, Wouldn't you know it got real infected? <laughs> that's what, I was like, did that, that worked? He's like, near about fell off. <laughs> <laughs> Thought he was going to lose a goddamn foot. <laughs> uh, about plum fell off. <laughs> about plum fell off. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Dude, my grandpa and your dad would just thick as thieves. They would get along so well. The way you say hmm. he phrases and talks about things, it's just a it's a country farmer southern thing. They have that archetype. 
dad's watched too many Coen Brothers movies, so he he likes that old timey, um, silly, uh, like 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 I don't know dialogue. So he, he'll he, he's he's silly the way he does that stuff. He loves Oh Brother Where Art Thou and um, what's the other one? Um, when oh, uh, Nicholas Scrub, Buster Scrub. Raising Arizona, Raising Arizona. If you've never seen Raising Arizona. Not you, Taylor. I, I, I would bet my life my grandpa hasn't seen any of those movies. This is just, just the way he talks. <laughs> 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 yeah. Damn. So did you ever leap into the quarry? Fuck no. No. Because Never. No. I don't think I was ever invited, if I'm being 100% honest. But I also mm. remember my cousin saying that, um, I swear this happened. He dreamt, my dad told him, not, he, he's like, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. That's dangerous. You know, when I was growing up, kids would get hurt and you're, Uncle Porty fucking like mm. nearly lost his foot one time. Your Uncle Lefty that, uh. doing that shit. Yeah, yeah. Uncle <laughs> lost and so, arm. And so um, Scott said he had a dream that he, that he drowned. Like they'd been going every every weekend and spending the whole weekend up there jumping, like doing backflips and shit. But he dreamt that he drowned, so he didn't go. And the day he didn't go, his buddy drowned. Like buddy mm-hmm. jumps in, hit something under the water, and didn't come up. Like Oof. died. The Shit. Reaper needed a soul. It would have been him. But I don't know. Maybe that's, that's the, maybe, that's the scary maybe part. His friend Some would have them... died if he was there for him. Oh, that's what I said. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's what bad. I said at the funeral too. I, I yeah, hated yeah, that. They hated that. Eulogy. It's uh, kind of done that, my bread, uh, dude. Here lies I'm... Travis. It's Scott's fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he always called Scott his guardian angel. <laughs> the, the one day he wasn't there i've like yeah. done th- not a quarry jump but i've done stuff like that in the ozarks like off the like rocky outcrops over it especially with the ropes and sometimes you'll be doing it like if you drive through the ozarks there will be like the local spots that you're passing on the way to like where the people who live in kansas city or st louis or whatever go and swim and they will be like the oldest ricketyest ropes as these like locals are swinging out and some of them are like fat as shit, fat as shit swinging out over this and the rope holds. And so that just, but you see that and you're like, that's a matter of time. Someone's going to, you know, there's a bunch of jagged rocks that if you were to fall 15 feet, you know, prematurely in your swing, you're going to break your legs or break I think your that neck. an athletic person can fall just much better. Like I, I think that if that's you- true. And a lot of these people are drunk, and I think you're better at falling if you're drunk. Oh, I all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I think you're better at having a car accident if you're drunk. But I think that if <laughs> they're you've outstanding gotta, like, at it, they get most of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if running at the score, <laughs> they're just loosey goosey. They're not posting up on that wheel. But I think if you're gonna like fall down an embankment, you want to have your wits about you so you can maybe. You know, not snap your knees backwards or like post up, like Dude. I said. And yeah, maybe. Kyle's I guess I just so heard someone. So I do a lot of sports falling. where people fall, whether it be paramotoring, paragliding, <laughs> acrobatic paragliding, or motorcycling. People fall, dirt biking. And there is a giant correlation between how athletic they are and how often they get hurt. Like the yeah. athletes, they just bounce better, man. Part of it's because they're lighter. You know, they just, if you weigh 150, falling is not as big a deal as if you weigh 250. Boom. Oh, yeah. But also, I don't know, like muscles help a little bit and just being fit and athletic. Um, yeah, your tendons and the connective tissues are all like tougher, stronger, better if you're working out. You know, maybe you're making good, fast decisions during the fall, too. Yeah. You know, that, that somebody else isn't. I'm not sure. You can see that it's like with ice skating. Mm. Like there were times where like for school events or whatever, we all go ice skating or something. And someone who knows what they're doing, like they fall and they like. They know to like try and land on their hip, their their quad, like take some of the the pressure off in the soft area. Don't stick your hand out like this and break your wrist like an mm-hmm. idiot. And then sometimes you'd see someone fall who clearly had never skated before, and they do like a they do like a a, a three stooges like whoop 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 where their feet start coming out and they just tumble backwards, hit their head, and it's like oh that that could have been catastrophic. We could have watched mm-hmm. that woman die right just now in the middle oh. of our field trip and not gotten to go to the taco There's or the hot dog stand. Motorcycle parallels on that. Like I, I watch these people who are very good at YouTube and there's two motorcycle disciplines called hard enduro and trials. And both of them are real slow speed things where they're climbing on like, I don't know, sewage pipes that are six feet tall, rocks that are four feet tall. The sort of thing where you like, you're doing a wheelie 
stationary and then you like hop on to the next rock if you can imagine. acrobatic yeah that trials the game the video game back okay in the game. so um these guys do that and when they fall it's amazing to me because they manage to do it like they see the fall coming they decide that it's time to bail and then they let themselves and their motorcycles down and nothing's damaged mm -hmm. meanwhile like <laughs> i'll be on like a, a trail where to the right if i fall it's three feet lower and to the left if it's three feet higher and i'm just the closest I can come is try to fall to the high side. Like, let's err on the high side. Because if I fall with a three feet drop, I'm kind of fucked. I'm not that good at it. Mm -hmm. Like, it, 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 I'll look like a non-athlete when I fall to the low side. And other people are just amazing. Have you but, ever played whatever. sports with someone who's, like, direly unathletic? Yes. Yes. It's if kind I of hate funny. It. Oh, it's, it's, I, I've told this story before in college. I got thrown out of the dorms and I had to like quick scurry. And I got this, uh, this woman was renting out extra bedrooms to help her pay rent. Well, one of the other persons who rented a different bedroom, wild loser, like crazy social anxiety. He would have like, uh, he got like straight A's, but he was always trying to kill himself and he couldn't, he had no friends and, uh, and he <laughs> couldn't exist himself. in like any crowds. Yeah. He committing suicide was like a twice a week thing for him. And, uh, <laughs> he really sucked at it. He was terrible at everything except for school, <laughs> which I envied. <laughs> but, uh, um, anyway, I was like this poor guy, you know, like he doesn't have any friends. I'm going to play Frisbee with him. Huge fucking mistake, right? Like I throw the Frisbee at him practically hit him in the fucking nose and he doesn't catch it. Okay, whatever. He picks it up. He throws oh. it to me. He's off by 90 degrees. And I'm like, am I supposed to get that? Like I'm closer to it. It's closer to you. <laughs> you don't get that. Like, but no, I didn't. I ran and I got it. And I threw it from there. And I'm just like running to wherever he's randomly throwing this thing. Jesus. He's like, you are not athletic enough to be my friend. I'm bailing. <laughs> 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 this is fucking yeah, loser he's yeah. this idiot maybe Dude, he got better yeah. at tying knots and he's he's out of here <laughs> <laughs> yeah can, uh, his suicide attempts like I, I i know i've told some of these stories before but like one time he took pills and like so i like call 911 we get the emts there he calls his mom and he's like mom i've done it it's over now. I'm going to die. I just wanted to call you and say goodbye. And it's like, Jesus Christ, you're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and he was. Um, there was another time I just heard banging from his room. And uh, he had this little plastic first aid kit that he was banging on a mirror. And he later told me that he was hoping the mirror would break and slice his jugular. What? This is the terror. This is not a valid suicide attempt. Yeah, this guy was seeking attention in all the wrong ways. He should have tried being better at sports. <sighs> Loser. He was in a lot of pain. I, what uh, what race was he? He's a white guy. Ugly white guy, but thin. <laughs> Ugly too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was. Ah, just irredeemable. Fucking loser. <laughs> couldn't tie knots. Couldn't couldn't find a, you know, hated <laughs> hated elevators. <laughs> just couldn't get to the top of a building yeah, to yeah. save his life. Like it, there was a I kid on our base. Okay, I, I I was trying to think of like the most unathletic person I've ever played sports with, and it was this kid in little league, and he was just slow, like not witted, this perfectly intelligent person, but it just seemed like he was slow. Like in everything yeah. he did, it was like he moved at point eight speed, mm. sort of like if you said, "Hey Bob," that's not his name, but he went, "Hey Bob," he'd go, "What?" <laughs> he was just sl so slow to react. And it was, why was Bob on third base? I can't tell you. But I remember dad, like, that it's practice. And dad's hitting, he's got an aluminum baseball bat in one hand. And he's tossing up a ball and he's hitting it to people. To is make them baseball field. or T-ball? Baseball. Oh, okay. This is, we're like 13. We can throw. And so he hits it to this big black kid that was playing shortstop, Octavius. Octavius grabs that shit and he was so close to third base, but he turned and he launched it at Bob over third base and Bob never got his hands up. Oof. He just ate it in the mouth, just Ooh. ate the baseball right into his braces and like cuts his lips all the fuck up from the braces. And he's crying and the EMTs are giving him oxygen. EMTs. Like, well, yeah, they're always there at Damn. the ballpark. Oh, the ballpark oh. has like four, 
there's like four or five games going on simultaneously at the you know at the ballpark. So kids get hurt all the time. There's always EMTs there. Makes but sense. but it's like I've never seen anybody not get their hands up. It's baseball. It's like what you're there to do. Mm, like yeah. like like it's what you're there to do. You is should like, have been expecting like, a throw. Yeah. Right. Like, like I can't imagine a world where you're caught by surprise. You know, you're you're gaming. Someone to your right is <laughs> like, hey, Kyle. <laughs> I thought it'd be safe in line at the bank. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like like it's like if you're playing goalie Taylor and someone like hits a medium one at you intending for you to catch it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like like that's the person throwing the thing wants you to catch it. It's not the opposite. So it's just you don't mm, drop many. True. And if, if you're dropping more than one like a day, there's something. You got to play wrong. outfield or something, right? You got to move you out ca- of there. It's important to catch him back there, too. He was so slow, he couldn't do anything. It Is was there pitiful. a position where it's less important to catch? Isn't right field the easiest one? Because people tend not to hit it there as much. Most, ha- most hitters are right-handed, so they're not going to hit it to right field most of the time. So, yeah, there's, there's probably doing the le- least amount of fielding out in right field. But hmm. everybody needs to catch, you know, unless you're a pinch hitter. Yeah, that's such you a big part catch. of baseball. Pinch hitter. Okay. But you probably have to hit. Yeah, he probably only hit. That's all you do. Or designated hitter as well. Where where could a guy who doesn't hit well or catch or throw well play? Coach. Or umpire. Coach. <laughs> all right, those you who can coach and you can umpire. And then and, and <laughs> guys that can't catch, throw, or count have to be coaches and guys that don't know anything about the game, I guess, end up being the umpires. There's a couple of umpires mm. that are like, there's a whole YouTube series made about how bad they are. Um, and, and I, I think all major sports are fixed. I, I can't As get my over vision it deteriorates, point. I think I'm getting more qualified to be an ump. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a, like I winged this girl with a hockey puck when I was like eight, nine years old in Winger? grade school gym. Actually, winged is the wrong word. I caught her square in the teeth with one of those orange pucks because she was in a. I was trying, it was, you know, gym floor hockey. And me and one of my buddies who I played hockey with, actually, the Marine guy I've talked about many times, one of my very close friends, we were both on the same team in our gym, uh, you know, hockey squad. And this girl, Ashley, sorry, sorry, Ashley. Like mm-hmm. it's not that big of a star. She got to go home afterward, but I, w- I, everyone was keeping the puck on the ground, and so the goalies were having a very easy time. They were just like laying the stick on the ground, and I'm like, "Not today. I got. I can lift this easy mm-hmm. peasy." Because obviously, before you know those plastic hockey sticks with that mm-hmm. with like the straight blades, mm-hmm. I did what everybody does beforehand, where I put my foot on it on the, the ground, and you kind of crank it up, and you bend that. You had a big old wicked curve in it, so that you can get some speed on the puck. And I ripped it as hard as my little eight year old arms could. And it immediately became apparent to me that it, I put too much curve on, I put too much curve in my stick because it was five feet high, maybe six feet from my stick. It would have missed very high. I probably would have hit the backboard because that's where the goal was under. And it Mm -hmm. caught her right in the mouth. She didn't make a single move. She only had one hand on her stick, wasn't even fucking paying attention. And so she was openly weeping. Then my teacher got mad at me as if it's like my fault. I'm playing to win. I'm heart of a champion. I'm trying to to pad my stat line. I already had a couple of assists trying to get a goal for the day. Mm -hmm. And no, then she had to go home and he made a new rule that you couldn't bend the sticks and that you you couldn't take the puck off of the ground anymore. I have a hockey question, now we're not even Taylor. playing hockey. A serious question. If unless things have changed in the NF- NHL, there are rules about how much bend you can put on the stick. Now, yeah. I've always felt like the more bend you put on the stick, it's a little more helpful for when you're on your forehand, and it's a little hurtful when you're on your backhand because it's bent mm-hmm. the wrong way. So I sort of thought the bend would kind of self-regulate mostly. And people would put on an appropriate amount of bend so that they could handle it well, both forehand and backhand. Why the, are the there curve rules? of the blade? You mean? Yeah. Am okay. I saying it wrong? I, it, I, I thought you were talking about stick flex for a second, but okay. Oh, oh, okay. Curve of the blade. Curve of the blade. I'm sorry. Um, why at the NHL at the top, where you're not worried about people roofing it, is there a rule on how much you can bend your blade or curve your blade? It doesn't uh, make any sense. There are some rules like. They have to be within a certain dimension size. So 
Zach, pull up Ryan O'Reilly's hockey stick. He he is him and Leon Dreisaitl are two guys who like push it to the absolute limit with mm-hmm. how big and goofy they can make the shape of their stick. But mm-hmm. it all comes down to what you're doing the most. So if you're always taking wrist shots, you might have mm-hmm. a little more curve or at least what's allowable like to the maximum. If you're taking slap shots often or you're a face-off guy, then you're going to have a different thing. So Ryan O'Reilly's stick, which Zach will bring up in a second, has the most goofy, absurd toe curve in the NHL, and that's because he's the best face-off guy that the NHL has had in many, many years. And so having that extra little hook there... <laughs> oh, shit, it's flat, the, except the, the tip. The rule is that the the length of the overall blade like from where the stick comes out can't be like more than an inch or a couple inches or something like that. And so he chose to have the whole blade be pretty much stick straight until the end and all the curve is at the end. And that means that when he's doing face-offs, he can kind of curl that around and nobody else's stick is like that because everyone else is like, this is retarded. It affects my shooting. It affects my (laughs) stick handling. It affects everything, but he's used to it. And so he's still the best face-off guy because he has a goofy-ass stick. uh, They do have rules for like, how big a stick can be that occasionally they have to make allowances like Zid- yeah Zidane Chara, mm-hmm. who's like 6'9", 6'10". None of the regular size how sticks fit for him. He? Oh, he's he's out of the league. He's like oh, in his like, mid forties now. One of the one of the Blues players, Colton Pareko, he's like 6'6 six, six or 6'7". Six, he's a defenseman, and so he's allowed to have the bigger sticks. And I saw in a game once like these refs were on the ball because technically – it is legal for Colton Pareko to use that stick, but it is not legal for any other player on the ice to use that stick because it's an illegal stick for them. And so the rule is, for like Kyle probably doesn't know this, mm. if if a defenseman loses their stick, a forward gives him their stick because it's more important that defenseman have a stick than a forward. If Sometimes the goalie, they play the wrong way too. Yeah, like they'll, they'll give him a lefty way, stick. It's all backwards. But, but you like need poke checking and, and that defensive uh, tool. If a goalie loses his stick and there's no one around to help, and the stick's knocked into the corner or whatever, defenseman, you know, give the goalie the stick. It's very important the goalie has that there. And so at one point, a player's stick broke, and he went to pick up Colton Pareko's off the ground and start using it in the play, and immediately the ref was like, illegal stick maneuver. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't play with that. You can't do that. And it's like, that's what you miss. Someone's getting their teeth pummeled in three <laughs> feet from you, but you caught the illegal stick. Yeah, that it's is cool. I still don't know why they would put a rule about the, ban- the curve of the stick. I... I- yeah, I, I guess because it would be so easy for for wrist shot guys to abuse that. I, I don't actually know. I could this as stick, a goalie, I'm not sure. Could the stick break from doing yeah, that. Yeah. Is it, Sticks break all the time. That's yeah. probably why. It's, it's probably making this the the thing like too weak, right? You can't. Well, you can't play if is your it stick dangerous is dangerous when a stick breaks. It's very dangerous because they're carbon fiber, and so you can stab someone with yeah, it very accidentally or easily. Scratchy. So, like, if your stick starts to break at all, you'll you have to drop it. Like you can't do anything with a broken yeah. stick. What do you like, think the really, next advancement in the major sports penalty. is going to be as far as equipment or technology? Like, like I, I the NFL, sport? as much as I despise the NFL and all they stand for, hmm. like, man, they put on a fucking show with all those that the, the cameras that zip around above the players on the, mm-hmm. the wires. Yeah, that's neat. Not only are they like right on the money where, where they need to be, but the, they look incredible. Like, they do a good job. Um, basketball is talking about changing the ball. So that's, How so? It's a really significant change. It's going to be some space-age polymer and hollow inside. Oh, I saw Zach, that. Can you maybe grab a picture of the potential oh, new NBA ball? I saw that. How is that they, not? It's going to pick up crap, isn't it? It's got like holes in it. Oh, I didn't think of that. You would think it would in street ball, like, you know, at a yeah. it's like a Johnson outboard motor. Up it there. does. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Outboard motor. It probably. No, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that most players would in the middle of their career want the ball to change. Like they've got to be kind of pissed about that. It's like, hey, I've kind of honed my craft of shooting the ball. And like, what if, my what whole if it life. turns it out on the player? I'm sorry, Kyle. Like, I'm thinking, let's say that I've got mediocre handles and I'm great at shooting and this new ball is a little more dead and doesn't bounce off the rim. It just tends to fall in. Maybe I'm like, this is great for me. That whole dribbling thing was never my cup of tea anyway. Mm-hmm. But if all my shots go down now, can you terrific. show us that ball, Zach, the, the new, 
And the, I, I, I don't oh, think they're going to do They're not going to do that. They're just not. Yeah. That's crazy. That's going to get so much crud in it. It's going to be so. The, so the only way they can do that is if it flies like a regular ball and bounces like the regular ball. What's the advantage? What are we getting? What are, what are, what 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 can we now do that we couldn't do before with this ball? Okay, so for the first half of it, it is supposed to be just like a regular ball. I mm-hmm. haven't held one, and even if I did, I'm not that calibrated. You know, mm-hmm, sure. I'm not a real player. But uh, they say it's about the same. Okay, the advantage, I honestly think it's to sell balls. Would would like fucking everybody on the planet just re- switch to the new ball? Yeah, would I mean they, they sell do, a they million balls. Cool. I mean, not just that, but like if it's a th- if it's the new official high school, they'll ball sell and... a billion balls, yeah. Woody. Oh yeah. yeah, a billion carbon fiber balls, and then we'll we'll learn right away that not only does it not fly the same and our, it's not getting the same bounce, and players are mad because they can't play as aggressively, but when they when they when they get crushed, the fiber the carbon fiber splinters go mm-hmm. into these these players who get paid eight million dollars a game. <laughs> yeah, it seems like, and, and so then they all get thrown in the ocean. <laughs> and I think I'm just excited about that something island. new. It's like a sea change. I'd like to see. Yeah, I don't care what they do. I guess it, it's it's a mm. nonsense game. But <laughs> NBA to me is genuinely like whose line is it anyway? Where like we're not keeping score because who fucking cares? It's uh-huh. it's like it just hey, seems you so dribble silly. next time, Buster. Like, like the, what are the refs doing? I know enough about basketball to know dribbling is such a key part of it. Here's and what it, you need to know. NC State is the most dominant basketball school on the planet right now. Ooh, Both wow. our men's and women's are in the final four. No one else can say that. Scores posted, bitches. Is NC that the State. team that that girl, uh, mm, no. Caitlin something, is on? I think that's – is that Iowa? Does that sound right? That does sound right now. Never mind. Yeah. Well. What girl? Let's go what, what's State. special about this girl? Who Caitlin Clark is a very ball. good three point shooter. As a matter of fact, she's she's better than most of the en- the men in the NBA. I think mm-hmm. it's hard to say if you gave her a man's ball, which is slightly bigger, that might change yeah. things. But is the or if you made team? Steph Curry defended by women's college teams? Yeah. Well, she did the she did the All Star game, and it was the her versus Steph challenge. Curry in the three point challenge. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So Steph Curry won, but. I mean, she was only off by a shot or two, and she would have beat most of the men. Yeah, they should have just played one on one. No, well, don't the shatter the illusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I, I talked I to some the girls, and they're like, "She could be in the NBA." I mean, uh, I'm not saying women are just as good as men, but this woman could probably make the NBA. I'm like, I don't think so, man. Like, yeah, no way. Th- there is I a want- position in the NBA for someone who just catches and shoots. Right, you stand on the elbow or in the corner, and you catch the ball and you shoot it right away. That's a thing. LeBron saying he hopes she joins the NBA. I bet he does like to see it. It'd be funny. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, hey, um, I got another 10 years in me yeah. if y'all start recruiting from the women's schools. There's LeBron no says he wants her to join the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be such funny. a massive defensive liability. Um, she's, and she's not a, yeah. as good a shooter she is, like, I don't know if she's that good with a man's ball. And uh, I had another and being thing. defended. Oh. And that's it. Yeah. And once she starts getting up like, and down the court, like, like, look, I don't know anything about your sport, which is what I'm going to call it the Woody sport of basketball. <laughs> yeah. But it seems I'm to me that a big part of it sport. is that they're so fucking long that they don't take as many strides as a normal man would getting up and down that court. Mm-hmm. So it's like, whoa, like, like, what's she six? What is she six three? You know what Less, I mean? I think I'll look like, it like, up. she's like a normal six human foot. six foot oh, even. Get yeah, the fuck out of here then. My Maybe one of the shortest longer. people in the NBA. Look. I could and, run up and down that court for about two two trips. <laughs> oh, you can do more than that. It's not a very big court. What? I, yeah, but 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 like it's just you can't, can't do it as much as LeBron game. or anything. I I player. hated. I remember when they were trying to say that like uh, Serena and Venus Williams could play uh, men's tennis, and and I think they asked. Mm. Um, oh, it's the really outspoken tennis player John who, who always first McEnroe. They asked McEnroe, I think, and and he was like, she get blown out by the, like the four hundred best man in the world 700 like, like, yeah the yeah, way it went like was that. this he was praising them he's like she is the best woman's tennis player to have mm-hmm. ever lived he was trying to give her a compliment and they're like why are you qualifying it why don't you just say she's the best tennis player to have ever lived and he's like well because she'd get beat by the 700s ranked man and uh they got super offended on the show they're asking him for an apology which they did not get yeah. and then they asked serena williams about it and she's like, yeah, yeah, I think I could be about 700th in the men's. 
So yeah. then they, because <laughs> she knows they, the sport and is like, yeah, they, they do serve it real fucking hard. Like, and they, they, yeah. I think they played. I, I, I think then they played a game with her against some guy who was ranked like 300th or something. They blew her out. Like smoking yeah. cigarettes between rounds. And it, yeah, and it was was like so I watch um, MMA a lot. <laughs> and those women John train Bailey against men in MMA all the time, right? Like mm-hmm. every training session, the gym is 80% guys. So they're rolling with guys constantly. They know where they stand, right? Every guy in the UFC can beat any girl in the UFC. And uh, I imagine Serena trains against men too. She knows yeah, where she stands. Yeah, it looks like it. Karsten Brash who was ranked 203rd at the time, played a set against each of the Williams sisters and beat them 6-1 and 6-2 while drinking beer and smoking cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I bet that guy had a great day. He's like, oh, it is time for Karsten to shine. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> they come for the 203rd guy. Finally, Karsten will show his worth. Man, just 20 years later and he could have transed up and dominated. <laughs> would that would that be a good reality show? Like like a Matt, would you tune in to see the greatest female athletes face off against some guy who like he was pretty good in college? That'd be fun. <laughs> like that a pro. Like, like, we got Carl here. He owns a bar in Milwaukee. Hasn't played hmm. a lick of ball since what was it, Mark? 98? Yep, 98, 99 champs. Hmm. Woo! <laughs> yeah, the Northeastern Regional Champs. Let's keep it in perspective, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going to be going up against <laughs> Denise here. She's number yeah. one in the world. <laughs> keep in mind, Alan has developed a severe prescription pill problem. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, he's not fired up. He has the shakes. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy, Zach? Um, white guy. I think he played for the Celtics. Scalisi? Scalini? Uh, he did that, like, Brian Scalini challenge. Zach's going to know this. I'm just waiting for Brian him. To... Scalini challenge, like playing against Joe's. Brian, Brian Scalabrini, Scalabrini, something like that. Anyway, so be. he did a pros versus Joe's thing. This is a guy, he had a pretty long NBA career, but he barely played. This is a guy who would get six minutes a game, two minutes a game. Some games he would just sit, ride the bench the whole time. And then he would play like D1 college players and just fucking smoke them. He smoked anybody. You know, are you the best at the Y? You are not even close to the worst player in the NBA. And he might have been the worst player in the NBA for a couple of those years. And his famous line is, I am closer to LeBron James than you are to me. And it's like, fuck. And he's right. Yeah. And he would just 1v1 people. Oh, and by the way, he's like retired and gotten fat. And he's smoking like current D1 players. Look at this guy. Uh, he's, this guy. He's, he's he looks really like that magic player we were talking about earlier. <laughs> we were talking Do about y'all? tennis for a second, and it, it reminded me of Vitas Gurulatius. Do you guys know him? No. no. Do you know the name Jimmy Connors? That's a no. famous tennis Okay, so Jimmy Connors was a really, really good tennis player. He was the best in the world for some period of time. And he beat Vitas Gurulatius 17 times in a row. So then finally, in their 18th game, Vetus won. And he gets up there at the podium, like the press stand, and he says, nobody beats Vidi Gerolinus 18 times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> the I'm know. sure I messed up his name. And I, I, now this is a... I'm going to leave this window up because I absolutely now want to invest time in watching like pros versus Joe's challenges and sports. Oh, I got you. Uh, have you ever seen this one then? So this was a famous I haven't seen a moment. Lot. <laughs> on the Howard Stern show, um, where basically Artie Lang was talking shit. Um, mm. Artie Lang, if you don't know, fat, coke addicted, short Italian comedian. Um, he, uh, <laughs> but he, but he, but he could shoot basketball, and he was like, I could beat a fucking like college basketball pro, like like I know an WNBA pro. I think is where he started, mm. and. A girl who like started for the Penn State uh, girls calls into the show and starts talking shit. And, and so long story short, they ended up playing a 1v1 game in an open open air court in front of a huge crowd with like Stern broadcasting it live. Mm. 14 to 10, she beat him. It was close. He was ahead mm. at one point. At one point, it, it looked like it was going to be embarrassing for her. And then I, I think she pulled back ahead. But it's clear that like, Man, like, come on, like, like, imagine if Artie was just six feet tall or not obese or not hung over <laughs> and fucking yacked out. <laughs> it, 
it was it was a little embarrassing for her. I almost um, want to see the game. I have this idea in my head. I like, here's it. how it plays out. I'll have to look at it off. Oh yeah, and if you um like I bet she's like a 12 year old playing Madden or something. Like she knows a th- oh, this guy's vulnerable to this. You know, he can't stop my ex. And she just went to that bag again and again and again. I bet that uh, I want to see it. I haven't seen it in a coon's age. I do remember watching it like uh you know how they had that show on E. It was on E. <laughs> they had the Howard Stern live show. Mm-hmm. And I think they would just be 30 minute segments of of a four hour day. Like like just the the best bits, maybe. And it was just so raunchy, but they would play um one after the other after the other late night on the E channel, which I don't even know if that shit exists anymore. I don't watch cable TV. But you. that was my introduction to Howard Stern. Uh and then like whenever I got Sirius Satellite, I I I've heard every everything that's ever been broadcast, I've heard. I got to the reruns multiple <laughs> times. Like I've heard I feel like I've heard all of the greatest hits for sure. I know I'm all of the stories and characters. Yeah. I don't I'm sure there's some like broadcasts where they just didn't do anything that day. I haven't heard. But anything that they rebroadcast on Sirius XM and every new thing for like five years when I was listening to it, I listened to. He and might then I just be the best inter- interviewer on the planet. Maybe you disagree mm. now. I just got to the part where you hated him. But oh uh, uh, yeah, I, I can't stand him now. It's 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 like look, he changed what yeah. he's about and like what he does. And then that's just not my cup of tea, as you like to say. So <laughs> I, I it's it's just not for me anymore. He I used like, to use can I go for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to use his interview powers for evil. And that was a good show too, right? So he would get like Anna um, Nicole Smith. Sure. Anna Nicole Smith and ask her about her sex life with that old guy. He would ask, um, he would try to hit on like Hollywood it people of the day, you know, like the JLo of her time or Jennifer Lawrence of her time. And yeah. he'd be like, you know, we should bang. I'm not does your man make his, Does your man get you to orgasm? Is he taking care of you? you I'm not afraid of your period. You regularly orgasm with your man? I'm not afraid of your period. We can go. I'm in every day. You know, that's the kind of shit that he would say to these girls on the radio. It'd be like and, Julia Roberts. Yeah, like Julia Roberts or someone you would think is way too classy to be spoken to like this. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I think he told it was someone like on Julia Roberts level that if she wore pantyhose, it would be like you're a, he, she's a virgin again. And I'm like scratching my head trying to figure out what he means there. Um, but I guess he thinks he's going to like poke a hole with with his dick in the pantyhose. I, I guess. I don't know. Um, but he would use his interview and charm for evil and get women sometimes to admit things they didn't want to admit. Like, you know, the play by play of their wedding night or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, and just get people to open up. Now he's still a great interviewer, but he gets like musicians to explain the genesis of a song or how a band broke up or something like that some of those i like like if it's someone i really enjoy i'll say this lady gaga's interview is excellent lady gaga plays live in his studio Mm -hmm. and she's so incredibly talented like that's when you can there's so many artists artists that if they were in a bar with a guitar you'd be like what the fuck am i listening to or you just be like passable that's okay mm. for 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 a, a Coco Rabas Mexican restaurant. It's that's good <laughs> enough. Mm. But you wouldn't think Grammys. But if you hear like she was incredible on in that show. She's playing the piano live and singing live, sort of an unplugged version of some of her her hits. I enjoyed that. But what I really liked, what really passed the time, if I was on a big long road trip, five or six hours at a time, were the games he would put on the little game shows that involved freaks and geeks and weirdos and shit. It would be like like I, there was a guy who wanted to be vomited on, and I think if these women wanted money or to win a prize, they had to vomit on this man. And they weren't like sex workers who vomit on; they were just like strippers. So they're mm-hmm. struggling to make themselves vomit. Like they're and he's he's laying on he's naked on the studio floor, laying on plastic, and he's like rubbing his nipples. He's he's in heaven. He's in mm. heaven because I think he had initially called in and be like, I always wanted a woman to, to vomit on me, but no one ever will. I'll never have my fantasy. And and it was like a make a wish situation, I think, where Howard's like, don't worry, I <laughs> will make your fantasy come true uh, because we're sponsored by like Manscaped this week and we yeah. got $10,000 to give to whores. So he, <laughs> he do. I, I mean, they. 
they had a manscaped bit once where they had a stripper or a porn star. I don't remember which a, a, a dirty, sexy, naked lady shaved that retarded midget, his balls, his dick, his gooch. And it's on YouTube unedited. Like you can see his dick, hmm. like the whole thing. Um, Beetlejuice, they, is that his name? It might have been Beetlejuice. I think it was. Um, and then they've had bits where uh, that felt real with the drama uh, amongst the cast. You know, there were people who kind of like fired or got quit over the years because of some of the drama. It seemed like a lot of it was real. And over time, you know, you enjoy. I, I got to like that cast of characters. I like Robin, I guess. I think I prefer the episodes when she's not there, but I like her as a person or whatever. Mm -hmm. um but i loved that show but when they stopped doing things like are you dumber than a box of rocks that's one of my favorite games you get three strippers all right and then we play a little trivia game a trivia called uh dumber than a box of rocks and every time the girls get a wrong answer they have to look into the camera and say i'm dumber than a box of rocks <laughs> <laughs> and howard apologizes profusely that i don't make the rules lady uh you know i just i wish i had now, some control of the howard stern show <laughs> uh, i'm so sorry but now you have to look into the camera and say i'm dumber than a box of rocks i'm so sorry i, I, I wish that it weren't this way man if, if now, there's now something he's i like, could do he's like a weird unfunny hypochondriac Right, he's always been a hypochondriac. He's a mm. little funny occasionally. Uh, the last time I saw him doing anything, he was real into his and his wife's charity, which is the North Shore Animal League, and it's all about like saving cats and taking care of animals. And they're super into that. He has multiple rescue cats in his ridiculous apartment all the time. So like that's his main thing outside. Did he, of, North Shore Animal did he go straight from wife to wife? It almost seems like he met wife number two. <clears throat> Cheated on one. His current wife's like a like a nine, like a solid, like classic blonde Hollywood looking like bombshell. Mm -hmm. Like last time I saw her, I mean, it's been decades now. He's so old too. Everybody's getting old, but yeah, he's, he's seventy. Always, Damn, is that all? I thought I thought he might have been older. Seventy. Nope. Seven, I, I, I'm impressed by the way he interviews. He comes really well prepared, and it, mm. it's something I should do better. But like I, I saw him interview Billy Joel. And he just seemed to know his entire catalog. Billy oh, Joel had friends. written. Oh, okay. He Billy Joel them. had written a new song, and he really pried out of him like what the genesis of the song was, what was behind it. It's something about is it too late? And yeah, Howard Stern's mom is still alive. Oh, that's good. I'm I'm glad to hear that. She's she seems like a nice lady. Six. What about hmm. his dad? Dad died two years ago. Mm. At the age of ninety nine, yeah, they were they would come on the show occasionally, and and they're very like sweet, down to earth, like n normal people. You know what I mean? Hmm. Who, who who have been living in Howard's universe for the last forty or fifty years? Damn, his movie's great too. Really? And, um, yeah, you've never seen uh, Private Party? I've, I've seen it more than once. I think. I think it's, I I think it's, it's good. Okay. I, 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 can't, get... I can't think of a movie that I walked past more and never got at like blockbuster as a teenager just being and like oh in, yeah just i would see that everywhere just private parts him standing like arms folded sunglasses on long hair no shirt and then like the backdrop is like a new york skyline the foreground covering his nudity yeah yes uh, yeah. there's a Never scene in that it. movie where he decides that he needs to be dirtier to get famous so the next day he has a really hot woman squat over her 1980s gigantic speaker that is a piece of furniture. And he becomes the vibrator for her by going. <laughs> and she's like, oh, don't stop. Don't stop. <laughs> you know, and it, it's a pretty good scene. Yeah, he, he fucks her with a subwoofer. Yeah, that's, that is a good scene. Mm -hmm. Do you guys no, have I any strong memories of walking past certain movies at Blockbuster? The I other one, like every time I see the the cover of eight legged freaks a movie i've never seen i think about blockbuster or hollywood video i can i could almost paint that because yeah, <laughs> because i know that the giant spider is on there but the the actor that 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 guy who was married to courtney cox what's his name he also does wwe david um, arquette david arquette i think david arquette's face is on the box Let, zach pull up the box for eight legged freaks it, i think there's a giant spider I think the background is maybe a desert um, with maybe one of those like red rock formations. I could be like completely wrong about that, but I think David Arquette is there and he's scared. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I'm picturing the cover. Like, like, like how close am I? 
you're you're shockingly close to the cover of Eight Legged Freaks. I remember walking by this <laughs> all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never okay. saw it, but I remember it being in every Hollywood video, every blockbuster I ever walked through. It's hmm. honestly, it's a little creepy the way you know it's that era of CGI. But when it when the spiders pounce, there's something real like Bucky about. It's like oh, because they're very big. They're they're like. Mm. bigger than dogs they're 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 big they're big so big that you know dad. you couldn't contend with one you're like, you're like i'd just be fucked if that got on me when did are there when's the last time you saw like a movie rental place we saw one in the open so there's like one, in the wild <sighs> i went to um what's it called something drone there's one here it's in atlanta that's fun. like really retro and kind of a it, it's a, it's an east atlanta video drone i think I went there maybe five years ago or something, but you know, it's almost an ironic trip. It's like, Hey, do you want to go to the video rental place? It's like, yeah, sure. And like, I think they didn't have like Highlander three or something. It's like, let's go home and stream it. Yeah. <laughs> let's go home and watch that movie. That's the good. worst one. I've got to see it. Somehow Sean Connery came back for the paycheck. So that was probably the last time. I think maybe I, I got a DVD from one of those uh, red boxes one time because I couldn't stream it, but there it oh, was yeah. right next to my house at a pharmacy. Who's using those? I haven't seen one in forever. Four people. I, are they even around? Yeah, they're all at every CVS pharmacy in the South has a red box attached to the outside. Man, that's baffling. It's so much more expensive than just like, even if you buy Netflix or whatever streaming service it is. What if you for don't have internet? Month. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, if you don't have internet, you got you to gotta go to red box. Everyone has the internet. Not everybody. Everyone with a TV has the internet. Homeless people have phones. I want to more common. They got satellite. Yeah. DVD have... players or internet access? Ooh. DVD players are more common. Why? Oh, as far as like more, who has more of them? Like like anyone every, wants, every single person has a DVD player. Anyone who actually cares about like high quality video has a, has a, has a good Blu-ray player. It's, or a it's console or difference. something. If you yeah, gave me a Blu-ray right you, now... I guess my Xbox would play it. Wait, does it even have? No, I don't think it has a freaking thing anymore. It does. Oh okay. yeah, oh yeah. If you've got a good Xbox, like I, they might make like a weird white version that you would never buy anyway. I've got whatever the best one was six. Months exactly. Ago. Yeah. There you go. We got Zach, Blu-ray players. Zach says twenty-two point five percent of all U.S. households, that's twenty-seven point six million homes, have no internet access at all as of twenty-one. Yeah. That's high. That's higher most than of, I would have guessed. Most of those households are on Skid Row. Those are your red box users, boys. Um, no, it's just a, there's places in the South where you just they have internet, but it's like enough internet to do emails and stuff. So people choose their phone instead. Yeah. Because it's like, why would I pay for just enough bandwidth to operate a laptop? I'll just connect to my uh, tether whenever I want to like yeah. get some porno or something. And it's like within the last for. few years that my grandparents got good enough internet to do like anything more than email with it. Just because they live in such a rural yeah. area. My dad doesn't. My dad still doesn't have it. I'm like, dad, I, I'm always bothering him. I'm like, you know, he watches that fucking shit. It, oh my god, mm. I, I don't know if I told you this the other day. What if he I, can I, get I, Starlink before we get off the topic too far? I, I've been. I, I I think he can. I looked into it and it was like coming soon to this area. Mm. But that's been like two years ago. So maybe I'll look again now. Better hurry up. But but he um apparently my sister hasn't lived there in so long. But he's like, your sister's got got these channels locked. And I was like, what channels does she have locked? He's like, you know, I wanted to watch uh, uh, Tombstone the other day. It was on the Western Channel and it's locked. And I'm, and I'm like, you know, I'm talking to a 70 something year old man about <laughs> technology. Yeah. And I'm and I'm like, I don't think it's locked. But even if it is, it can be unlocked. You know, this isn't like a a real lock. This is <laughs> <laughs> This is not this this is like one of those like just turn the parental settings off and your settings, you know. It's not like there's a code. And if there is a code, there's there's a way to reset all the codes, you know. This is a, mm. a household appliance, not Fort Knox. Mm. And it's just like I, I'm just like, Dad, why are you even on this fucking satellite shit still? At first mm. he thought it was the TV. He was like, I'm gonna have to get a new TV. She's locked this one. <laughs> It, it's so funny. The, the, the I'm like, I'm like about that, that 60 inch 4K TV I bought you like two years ago. Yep, I'm gonna have to get a new one. I'm like, no, no, it's, it's not the TV. She hasn't <laughs> locked your television. It's a television. It 
Dad, what you're going to want to do is get a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like, you can't lock a record player. You know, like, like, like you've just got like the wrong record. Your foot. I want to like break it down to some old timey media or something, but I don't know how. <laughs> he needs the fucking internet so I could just log him into all my shit and he would have so much to watch that he'd never pick a thing. Like, he'd just probably still watch Gunsmoke. <laughs> you should. You should. That can be his Christmas gift this year. Ooh. Or maybe even before that, if you don't want to make him wait nine yeah. months. What, Starlink? Star, well, if Starlink's not available, then there's nothing you can do. George, um, Georgia is fully available for Starlink, according to Zach. Ooh. I know you, uh, I think the the dish or whatever receiver used to be like 500, but I think it's more like 750 or 800 now, huh? Hmm. No, I think it's easy to learn. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, should look into that. It seems to be working pretty well for those Ukrainians over there. They're, they're doing well, right, Woody? Aren't they doing doing well? They're not losing, are they? Uh, they, they haven't been some... losing for a long time, right? Seems like they've been <laughs> losing for a long time. <laughs> I've seen that way. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm Googling Starlink and I can't finish my thought. No, I'll keep um, looking. I, I so, would... Yeah, last I looked, they had just taken back some inconsequential piece of land that they recently lost. It's basically a stalemate. And I think they're losing. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't call it winning, but I, I, I'm going to make up a number. I bet Russia picked up like 100 square kilometers this year. So is Ukraine winning? Clearly not. They have less land than before. Is Russia winning? Well, like by a little. Yes, because they have more land than before. Okay, so Russia's winning. Yeah. And at this rate, they'll have won the whole thing in 7,000 years. Yeah, maybe. It, it looks like it's they, it's all but one. For, for mm. Russia, like what's Ukraine going to like? They can't. Here's how I think it's going to go. dramatically. Regardless of who wins, it will be won this way. They, they'll just press and press and press. And then something will snap and they will gain tons and tons of land. Yeah. I mean, so, how many more people does Ukraine have? They're like throwing 50 yeah. year olds. I don't know. I used I, to watch I, it. I think they got plenty of people. I watched this. Like I followed this thing for hours a day long after everyone stopped. But now I've sort of stopped too. I don't so the most day. recent strike that the Ukrainians did, and it's so funny because because after the terrorist attack and R Vladimir Putin's like, oh, all of our defenses are on high alert. We're we're ready for anything from anyone from anywhere. And then Ukraine, the Ukrainians take a Cessna and load it up with explosives instead of passengers and luggage and put a remote control inside and pilot the Cessna like 600 miles into Russia and blow up. A drone factory. <laughs> well, who could stop a Cessna, Kyle? Be who reasonable. could stop a Cessna? They move at like <laughs> 250 fly. miles per hour. Sometimes right? double digits in speed. <laughs> yeah. That's why you use it, because no one looks at that and assumes anything sinister. Yeah. It's like, you that's that's a retarded thing to fly armor like bombs with. They, that Surely that's just some goofball up there. Yeah, that's and, what air traffic control is like. Hey, uh... Like three two seven. Um, who are you, and why are you flying out of that war zone to our to our west? Nope. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. You he must promise cool. me. <laughs> he says he's professional Russian. I <laughs> <laughs> like, no, under that? Operation Cross My Heart, Hope to Die, I will allow him <laughs> deeper into nation. <laughs> One thing I'll say, you know how like sometimes you'll have two guys fighting in the street and like one of them's got an older brother who's watching and you know that this guy can't win because right. if he only ever one starts to win, to win, only one person's allowed to win. Um, I think to some extent that's true with Ukraine. The powers of Europe won't let Kiev fall. Like, like that, I'll bet anything you want on. Kiev will not fall. If if Russia it comes close to taking Kiev, you're going to see some other troops showing up, some other technology showing up, or red lines. You're going to see airstrikes or something. NATO will be drawn in before Kiev falls. They, they're they not going to make the new front line Poland. They're not going to do it. Did they you see uh, one of our mm. whoever the fuck was like, oh, we're going to we're putting Ukraine in NATO now. Like, we're going to do it. Who? It's, who I would well, like to know who that was. It was. It was somebody important or like a reporter making a guess. U.S. Secretary of State Blinken oh, says yeah. Ukraine will be a NATO member. So that's the horrid news. Event horrid news if you don't like killing Russians. Well, horrid news if you don't like World what? War Three. Well, hang on. Is there a period at the end of that sentence? 
or does he say like one day in the future they will be? Because it's a pretty different statement, which I think is what he was probably saying. He's certainly not going to try to introduce Ukraine to to, to NATO. And, but, well, it was probably a question asked of him that is now being phrased this way, so it'll get more clicks, right? That's why. They're like, well, well do, can you imagine a future where someday Ukraine will be in the NATO? Yes, I think someday Ukraine will be part of NATO. He's talking about Star Trek days in the future, oh, I bet. I, I do have this statement. I'd Ukraine will become a member of NATO, period. Our purpose at the summit is to help build a bridge to that membership. So I feel like it's a little of both of what you're saying. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, you can't. they can't become a part while they're in the middle of this war. That is like a NATO thing. I don't think you can join while you're at war. Oh, uh, rules can be broken, and and yeah, you know, for they sure can, they can make little workarounds Turkey's if they not, want. Hopefully, no. they do not, because then what is it like well, Article well, Turkey's Five? Turkey's not gonna something? Turkey's not gonna sign off on that. They 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 almost lost Turkey because of that fucking those Russian psyops going on in Sweden, burning Korans. I don't know what's going on in Turkey, and I don't want to. It's none of my business. <laughs> not what much. are they doing over there? They have, they have good street food, good drones. They they build uh, really cheap street attack food? drones. Who do they give them to? The Ukrainians? I wasn't even sure, but okay. Still, <laughs> I like, mean, I bet they sell, they probably sell some to the Russians too, but but like they definitely sell them to the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians. <laughs> the Ukrainians. <laughs> They're so smart the Ukra- there. Ukrainians. <laughs> the smartest people in all of Europe. Yeah, so <laughs> France made some kind of big commitment to support Ukraine and bolster their own defense budget, but it turns out half of that is their own nukes. So that's not like defensive help for Ukraine. Macron uh, of France is talking reckless. He's talking yes. out of pocket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, every time I every time I see him talk, and he's talking about if we need to send French troops, then we'll send French troops. I'm not drawing any red lines. We're ready to do this. We're ready to do that. He's ready Dude. to put the, put on one of them Napoleon hats and ride <laughs> into Russia. Dude, apparently. I hope he does. I hope he's the first to go. I hope he's <laughs> I hope he's on the front lines tomorrow, putting if he his goes, money where his mouth is, fighting hard. <laughs> if he goes, Poland will likely join because Poland's also ramping up, and they're yeah. pretty much the new front line against Man, Russia. Poland's just so long of being bullied from all sides. <laughs> just, just so long of just like, can we just please let us do our thing? Like, <laughs> let yeah. us do whatever polls do. We don't even know what we do anymore. It, it, That's how if long they it's could been. read, they'd be very offended. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I never understood where that stereotype comes from. The the like Polish, Polish people being stupid. Being I never stupid. questioned him as a kid. It. I just retold the jokes. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> oh, that's good. And I don't know any Poles, and so I choose to believe. That it's, <laughs> yeah, I knew I, Tina's honestly, like Husky. I, but see, I felt the same way about Jewish jokes because I didn't know any Jews. Oh, so I like, it lot. just, I it just kind of, I was like, I, what's a Jew like? I, I have no idea. You know. Yeah. No idea of what their what their uh, stereotypes. You're from do. Where I'm from in Jersey, like a quarter of the neighborhood's Jewish. Never seen one. Never I'm definitely somewhere in between you guys. I knew Jews, and I had Jewish buddies growing up. I a few I played hockey with, and uh, but definitely not a quarter of the neighborhood. That's a lot of Jews. Yeah, yeah there's a huge. Some might of them. say it's not enough. <laughs> oh, so like they're myself. starving for Jews there. <laughs> they, need, they need more, more bagel I, shops. More Jews I have around me, the safer I feel. I'll tell you that right now. All right. It means you're probably in a good neighborhood. There's or a, you're there's underground. A bit of a, <laughs> so so uh, it doesn't get talked about, but I think they've called up like three or four hundred thousand reservists over there in Israel for the IDF. And it's not a country of a ton of people. But you might find this interesting, Taylor. There's one group of people who aren't subject yes. to all this this militarism, oh, all this aggression. Uh, the ultra orthodox Jews. The fact that they that's got to be a self dubbed you know yeah. group we're the ultra orthodox jews yeah they don't have to get allergies in into the I fucking imagine. idf and do their bit for some reason and in the midst of this six month long now war there's a lot of people who are like mm, i think y'all should chip in and do your part and i agreed taylor i was like it's horse shit that some group shouldn't be subject to you know the responsibilities that everyone else is and then taylor they they had a little video footage over where the ultra orthodox is like study and i was like whoa 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 whoa, whoa leave them where they are <laughs> what are they doing they, 
these gentle souls need to stay with their books and avoid dust and any particulates. A lot of particulates They're, in they the look air. Like a lot of Kyle cousin from South Park, the one who's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, like he's he's tired. He hit the ball when you're it's, doing that but, shit. But but it Dude. is horse shit though that you've got this one religious group who aren't. They the don't have to go. Politics are fascinating though. So. What it is, is they used to make up a tiny little portion of the population. So mm -hmm. when whatever, 0.5% of Israel didn't want to participate in the military, who gave a fuck, right? Like, all right, just, these little guys will let them study on their books, yeah. whatever. Now it's 13% of the population because these people multiply like rabbits. And they're a very like... Like the Mormons. Uh, it feels like more than 13%. Apparently their impact on society is really big. And that's made them <laughs> kind of unpopular amongst the other Israelis. <laughs> but they're very active voters and they're all for Netanyahu, which gives them like a lot of political clout. Like, you know, in mm -hmm. our country, fucking 13% will make the difference of every election I've ever lived through. Probably yeah. even Reagan Mondale. Thirteen percent is huge, and they all vote consistently as a block for whoever gives them the shit. And now it's very hard to make them anything but like Israel's welfare recipients because you need their votes. It is funny to imagine, like in Israel, like some of those soldiers walking around those neighborhoods and being like, "Ah, oh, these Jews." That's how it is like, with every group. Like, guys, come on! Like, you're you're making us Dude, look bad. That's how it is with every group. I wish that people wanted to talk about like race more and weren't weren't so like weird about it sometimes. But you know that we see white people and we're like, "Fuck you, piece of white trash, piece of shit." Yeah, you it's like get it, it together. Get it to fucking gather. Jesus Christ! Why do you have to? It, it, like, do they just hand meth out at the white trash camp? Like, 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 it's just like, brush your teeth, brush your fucking teeth, have better choices when you pick your tattoos, and and stop doing methamphetamine and making us all look bad. Stop Little being that guy. here. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and and every race is like that. Like, like, I'm sure for like Indians, they they look at people with business degrees that don't have science and computer degrees, and they're like, oh, fucking loser. But that. I know with black people, you know, Chris Rock's got that whole bit, right? Remember when Michael Scott like tries to redo mm. that oh. bit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the it's the N word bit, you know. And um, it it's true for every race. Everybody, every race has a group of people amongst them. Like, God, and there's a word for each of them. I don't know what the others are, but I know we call them white trash. And our I know all of them. I have flashcards. <laughs> Every just morning, in case he ever has a kid, he's up. been prepping. <laughs> foom, foom, foom. Flashcards. Jesus yeah, I can't Christ. let the can't let those see the light of day. I've got hundreds. Some of my make up <laughs> hand drawn caricatures from the from the seventeen hundreds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just those offensive caricatures. I saw. Before we get to offensive caricatures, hold that thought. Oh. We're gonna hear from a couple of wonderful, wonderful sponsors. This episode of PKA is brought to you by ferrodistro.com. PKA fans, have you been interested in THC but aren't sure where to start? Look no further than ferrodistro.com, your premium source for THCA flower dabs, edibles, and other smoking accessories. THCA, not your cup of tea? Then check out our exp expansive assortment of Delta products, including edibles, vapes, and disposables. That's right, folks. Ferro Distro is your go-to destination for all things THC-related. Get ready to elevate your experience with Ferro Distro's exclusive Ferro Exotic THCA Buds. These buds are so premium, they practically come with their own red carpet, crafted for all cannabis lovers. These USA-grown beauties are the epitome of luxury. And for all the dabbing aficionados, get ready to savor the richness of our THCA Diamond Sauce. Trust me, once you try it, you'll wonder how you ever dabbed without it. These are the perfect pairing with DabX products like the DabX Go and the DabX Rocket, very high quality, our premium dabbing equipment. And let's not forget about our mouth-watering assortment of high-quality edibles, perfect for anyone looking to elevate their edible game. From Delta 8, 9, and even 10, we have an incredible assortment of edibles in many delicious designs. So if you're looking to add a touch of wellness to your routine, explore Ferro Distro's range of CBD products and therapeutic mushrooms because self-care never tasted so good. PKA fans, use PKA20 for 20% off your whole order. You heard us, 20% off your whole order for being a fan of the show and using code PKA20. 
So what are you waiting for? Head on over to ferrodistro.com, linked below, to discover a world of premium THC products that cater to your every whim. Elevate your 2024 experience with Ferro Distro and make this year the best. That is PKA20 for 20% off your entire order, including the Dab X Go and the Dab X Rocket. 20%, that's legit. Hell of a deal. This episode is also brought to you by Blue Chew. Blue Chew, folks. Let's talk about sex. Guys, shouldn't you always be at your best? 2024 is the year to maximize your performance in the bedroom. Listen up, bluechew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, so no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And special deal for the listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the show again. BlueChew.com, B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. Code PKA. Get yourself some nice Tadalafil. Tadalafil, of course, is the recommendation of Kyle, and it has not led us astray. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage you to take that same road. So check it out. BlueChew.com. Episode also brought to you by Lock and Load, the premium, premium ejaculation increasing supplement taking the world by storm. If you're tired of coming like a chump and you want to be a man, And you don't want to put in like the effort of being a man, like stoicism, raising a family, success, (laughs) weightlifting, being good at sports, talking to women. That's for the birds when you have this, my friends. Lock lock and load is the way you want to start coming. Start busting hard and heavy. Impress your sexual partners. be, Be blown away by your own virility. And it's only nine pills a day. So check it out. Lock and load. Code PKA or code JIZ for 10% off. But it's not just cum pills. It's weight loss supplements. It's energy supplements. It's dream supplements. It's protein powders. It's energy drinks. Anything and everything you could possibly imagine supplement-wise that you want efficaciously dosed efficaciously dosed to mm-hmm. Derek's exacting specifications, go on over, over to Gorilla. You don't know what dosage you need. Just trust Derek. Derek knows. Derek is he's, just like he, his thing. Yeah, he's a tism lord for this stuff. He can't <laughs> get enough of it. He's just he wakes up in the morning and he's really like maybe is. a little more L citrulline and this would make me more tacky. <laughs> That's what he does all day every day. He's an expert. You can trust him. So go on over there, code PKA or code Jizz for ten percent off everything at Derek's wonderful site. But of course, we encourage you to start with lock and load. My humble opinion, the finest product ever conceived. Not just on Derek's site ever. Mm. So, yeah. Move over Unbind. sliced bread. Here Move comes, over sliced bread. Here comes big shots of semen. I wonder if even at the time when that sliced bread thing came up, people were like, that's a stupid saying. We've been slicing bread for eons. How else would you eat it? By the loaf? I, I think it's pre-sliced is the point. that that That's the invention of uh, uh, slicer that cuts it whatever 18 times at once oh well that's a that's just a knife but, but slightly faster right probably a lot of knives maybe a bunch yeah, of, hand of knives. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is probably what it is either way don't worry yourself about sliced bread worry yourself about lock and load code pk code jizz check kyle out. gave me an idea last podcast um i guess there's a solar eclipse running through america and I mm-hmm. thought I might get on my bike and ride over to Ohio and check it out. I don't think I've ever seen a full solar eclipse before. Yeah, you That'll may as well. Cool. How far away is that from you? 500 miles, maybe. Something like that. It's a, okay. it's a good drive for a non-Midwestern. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, oh, so like, just a, you got a whole day at the end of that. Like, you just, you know, you <laughs> it says it's about an eight and a half hour drive. My experience is that is a full day on a motorcycle, which is probably how I'll do it. Okay. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a little more tiring. So you stop for longer, like in a truck, 
eight hours i'll eat while i'm driving and just get there Mm -hmm. on a bike it'll be like oh finally it's fucking lunchtime (laughs) i need a break i think i can drive like 40 minutes southeast and be right in the middle of it Mm -hmm. but i'll probably see enough of it here because i'm still in the band it kind of goes through st louis okay yeah yeah i i saw a little graphic on the internet and the difference between a hundred percent and like ninety seven percent is very critical. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Now you'll still get a hundred, maybe just less of it, but you'll still get the hundred. You'll see what it really is. But if you're outside the band, even just, it's a significant difference. I wonder is what the flat earthers think of this. I wonder what they what are they thinking about this? Like, like hmm. I'm gonna find I, out right now. <laughs> right, what's a reputable account about flat Earth? That isn't that isn't pulling my leg. Uh, I think you're gonna, <laughs> I think you're gonna struggle. Yeah, that's oh, see, that's the problem. One. Like the, the flat Earth zone. All right, here's a Twitter account. Warning: This page is not intended for the politically correct or the weak-minded. Enter at the risk of opening mm, your mind. I'm out. And okay, so let's. But am I being hoodwinked? Okay, first post is saying that a lot of astronauts are wearing wires and being spun about in space. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the eclipse. I need help. Nuclear bombs don't exist. All right, these guys have their fingers in a lot of pies. <laughs> <laughs> they have their fingers in the pulses, baby. Here Nuclear your bombs don't exist. I were carpet bombed. Yeah, this is just the most recent post. Nuclear weapons don't exist. It's just another form of fear porn propaganda to keep the sheeple control. Sheeple. Uh, damn it. I think I'm being had. He said sheeple. You don't, you don't like sheeple? No, but I... Maybe I'm maybe I'm too a little 2017. I maybe love like, sheeple because not only are they being led around, but the wool has been pulled over their eyes. Yes. Mm. The only real fact about gravity is that it has never been a fact. <laughs> I don't understand gravity. I thought I, I did. Everyone does. It's a, one of God's mysteries. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's like they explain gravity. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, things are pulled towards things with mass. Anything with mass, they're pulled towards each other. The more mass you have, the bigger the impact. All right, cool. I get it. And then they're like, no, you don't get it. Gravity is fucking time somehow. Gravity is a fucking cloth with a planet in the middle weighing it down. Gra- like, I don't know. Now It warps I- space time. It warps the reality oh, of... And I get it, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, sure. you know, they, they, they show that thing with the cloth. And it, it, How does it make so warp much sense time? To warp time you said space time is that not yeah i mean if there's enough gravity then then um there's time dilation right like it wasn't that the issue Uh, remember on interstellar when they go down to the planet they're like seven minutes down here is a year back home or some shit didn't understand it then either i don't know Hmm. i don't i don't get how i mean i don't know how my cell phone works but that you know i i I, I, I get the get the broad strokes i did understand i think it's I forget if it's atoms or electrons, but nothing moves faster than the speed of light. So when you move, like even if you're just traveling through space, be, I wish I could do it as well as the video explained it, but it had this atom that was kind of going up and down on a sine wave, right? Up and down, up and down. And they're like, all right, so this thing moves at this pace while you're standing still. Cool. Now take you and accelerate it to the half the speed of light. Well, because this thing's going up and down on the sine wave, it can't, it would have to go faster than the speed of light to do that. So for you, time has slowed down because everything about the way that you're moving, the way that atoms exists in this move, fast moving spacecraft going half the speed of light needs to slow down because otherwise it would have to go faster than the speed of light to do the same thing it did before. It made great sense in the video. I mm. kind I, Even if you funny. don't understand that mechanic uh, with, with the, the sine wave and everything, just knowing that the faster you travel, the slower time uh, passes for you is is the way to look at it. Like mm-hmm. we have to recalibrate our satellites because they experience less time after they've been traveling around at whatever fourteen thousand kilometers per second for long enough. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm not getting any good information here. No, um, they haven't just. Dis- well, maybe would- the eclipse is real. Yeah, it it seems it's, that way. It's Wait, but that they, way. have you considered this, Kyle? Mm. Did you know that the Big Dipper rotates around Polaris in such a way that it forms the swastika when viewed between spring, summer, fall, and winter? They always pervert symbols of the truth. Research hashtag flat earth. I don't know how the Nazis got drug into this guy's whole theorem, but... 
probably this guy not spent a all good the time movie. watching those Nazi, like the hidden Nazi gold specials, and it he was the only dude like, taking it serious. It kind of looks like it, I guess. Like, like just the way the the the, the cut part of the dipper is shaped. Like, I could see that. I guess I yeah, saw only that frisbee. Add a line to the middle. I saw that frisbee on Reddit, and it looks normal enough. Oh, yeah. It's like two left lines, but when you flick it and it's spinning in the air, it turns into a swastika. <laughs> Did they do that on purpose or did they just turn out that way? It has to be like a turned out that way or a 3D printer who has a sense of humor. Because I can't yeah. imagine someone's like, try the new Nazi Frisbee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, these guys are not talking too much about, okay, in my five seconds of research, we've been talking about this. I can't find anything about the flat earth mm. and their criticism of the solar eclipse. They are mad about not seeing different stars they say we would see 100% different stars in winter than we would see in summer. I don't know enough about stars, so I'm going to skip this one. How do, <laughs> oh. Kyle, how do stars work? They come from trash. Well, I you think he's talking, well, he's talking about like the, rota- the, uh, the, the tilt of the Earth yeah, on its axis right. between winter and summer. So he thinks that it should be panning more left or right, and, but it, it's going to depend on where you are, are on the Earth, like, whether you're near the equator or the top, like how much or how much different the stars are, but they are different. In, yeah, that's the, the part I'm stuck on. Stars yeah. are different. Like they're not completely different because the they, but they're shifted There's all, all the way over. Yeah, that was my understanding as well. Is like you do see different parts of the sky, right? Yeah, hmm. I, I think that these people are imbeciles. <laughs> Like, like, mm, I still think that a good deal of them are trolling. Maybe this guy's not because this is a lot of effort to put trolling. In. And then I, I, I've talked about this before, but a good deal of them just don't believe anything without super solid proof. And well, they don't want to believe anything. They're so afraid of being proved uh, of being wrong about a thing that they, they choose to be wrong about everything. True. It's, it's absurd. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, look, I believe in a lot of conspiracy theories. Like, like, you know, like, like we, we do that all the time. There's lots of kooky shit that has happened that's clearly like they're mm-hmm. they're after us. They're doing a thing like right in front of our eyes because they know there's we can't do anything about it. But the fucking stars don't have anything to do with it, dude. This isn't silo where they're hiding some great truth up above us or something like that. You know, like there's stars. Like it, <laughs> it just it seems like the solar eclipse would be like a big hot topic for them. And it yeah, seems like think. the same the same stuff over and over. Just oh, water. Of course, water is level on our sphere. Water doesn't stick to a sphere, uh, and so we're all in a bowl. Base. They have they. Mm. This guy at least pretends, or maybe does believe there's a big ice wall. Obviously, we've talked about the ice wall thing, but he's like water stays in the middle of it because it's like a bowl. But why, how, did, but, but, but then what, how do seasons work and how, like, are we just a disc in space or space as a whole is, I've seen real. that. I've seen them show a disc in space. I've also shown like a flat thing. I've also shown them, I've seen them show like a thing that's sort of like flat on top, but rounded on the bottom. And I've seen a bowl mm-hmm. with edges and the edges are like ice walls and shit. And I, someone showed, I saw one recently where they show how East and West work. And it was like squiggly lines everywhere, dude. It was it's clearly the, the makings what? of a madman. If there were ice walls, that'd be incredibly popular tourist destinations. And we'd fly around them and over them and check it out. How tall is this ice wall that no one's ever seen? They're, they're, they're saying pretty fucking tall, like tens of thousands of feet tall. Not an obstacle. No. Yeah, you could you could fly over that, like, but that's why I that's why they're hiding that. it, Woody. They don't want well, us to see the. We don't ice know what wall. the currents are like near the ice wall, Woody. I'm worried about the temperature. Really, if there's ice in the ground, <laughs> it's gonna be super cold up there. Yeah, they, you know what they call us, globies. Globies. Yeah, I've been called worse. You're globy. Yeah. Don't try to prove that the Earth is not flat. Try to prove it is a globe. Hmm. It's 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 okay been done I, all the time so we've I been hoodwinked that. by all the other planets shapes too no like all the I other planets around except that the other planets are spheres 
No, they're not saying that. I'm just saying my oh, my not. stupid, scientifically ignorant mind is like, yeah, all the other planets seem to be round. Mm -hmm. So we're uniquely exempt from it. They're observably round. It seems like the only, like their thing is like none of that is real. Like it's all. I have a telescope like, in, in my dome. bedroom that you can see the shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, yes. It's... They can too. They, you could just go look if you want. Hmm. Oh, but have you considered this? This is the first one I've actually found about the eclipse. I've scrolled back so far. It's absolutely <laughs> impossible to have a shadow. Love that. Love the confidence. <laughs> Love the confidence. All this it is absolutely impossible to have a shadow of the moon, Umbra, of 170 miles wide during an eclipse if the moon's diameter is 2,159 miles. All right, that guy's a fucking retard because that's like this guy high school geometry math. That's like some easy math when you figure out exactly why the the moon perfectly covers the sun because you know the distances to both of them and the size of both of them. It's ridiculous. Like like it's it's a really interesting coincidence. Uh, if I were a creationist, I'd be like, look, it fucking fits. It's perfect. Yeah. Fine. How does it know this, what the this, fuck this he's guy talking is about? Saying, he's an ignorant globy. Yeah, this is a <laughs> yeah. fucking globy. Listen, this, the moon is small, the sun is big. You can't block it out. Stop it. Stop it with your nonsense. It's coming. He's, this guy <laughs> So the, the moon is 2,200 I believe miles, it when I see it. <laughs> and he's he's not even disputing the like cover-up part. He's just saying that the shadow isn't big enough. The shadow the sh that would be cast. The shadow is only 170 enough. miles in diameter, but the moon is bigger than that. And... Well, he's and us globies are fucking fools. It's because of the distance between us and the moon. It's like a quarter million miles. I hate those people with a with a fiery passion because they 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 make other people a little more ignorant than they were before, including <laughs> me sometimes. And they'll ask a question that's so stupid that you 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 get stuck like trying to disprove nonsense and go down some Wikipedia. Dude, rad, you just have hole. to enjoy it the same way like I enjoy the Silmarillion. Like <laughs> it's just silly it's content it's just content it's just like i want why you to get into war things 40k lore i want you to start listening to some of that nerdy shit oh where they my break god down. please don't I'm get into do it, you want me to get into that don't so do much. it one so much you have an addictive personality for bullshit you would love it <laughs> so don't do it it's and so you good, would love dude. meth I, also why don't you get into meth if you want to destroy your life i, I don't consider fantasy lore answer. bullshit i consider it <laughs> essential <laughs> All of the they're, races have their own languages. Like, the fuck it, like, like you've got a really cool, easy to understand, like, like, like you've got the emperor and he has twenty sons, and each of them has an attribute or two that that's like special that they got from him. And each of those twenty sons has this this giant army under them of super soldiers who also have that genetic like seed in them that 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 has that special trait. And so each of them are very specialized and does different things. So it's and that's just the you know that's just the humans. It's it's fascinating. It's also evil. Everything's awful. Everything's dreadful, suffering and evil and, well, and xenophobia and hatred. Someone, someone good. Hatred. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna have to go in team team Imperium, team human, hundred percent. Yeah, there, there's like one good guy, but they're just kind of lame. They're like for the for the good of the galaxy is like their mantra. They're are they lame. even human? No, well, oh, well, they're 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 actually like a confederation of multiple like groups. There's, I mean, there's one in particular that's kind of the dominant one, but they'll let anyone ride with them. Unlike the humans who are like, "Ooh, you got too many eyes. We're gonna burn your babies." Ooh, I, if well, Taylor you know. gets into this, mark my words, he will spell better in Kazalid Old Worlder than I do in English. <laughs> <laughs> I got, now I gotta get into Kazalid Old Worlder. It would be <laughs> low Gothic, New, New Worlder. Gothic, like the low style. gothic. Oh, I, that's the language. Um, no, high it's gothic, a dwarven language. Oh. Right? There are older. also dwarves. You could get into the the forty k dwarves. They're called the squats. I think they live. Um, it doesn't matter where they live, but yeah, it's super nerdy. It's it's. Look, there's not going to be any more Lord of the Rings content. It's done. Okay, mm. it's done. I, hope it's dead. Dead. I don't want. I don't want them. I hope that Amazon show continues to fail. I don't want their their bullshit reimagining of Tolkien to succeed. Nor they ordered another season, um, but but I really do want those Snyder cuts of the extended version of Lord of the Rings. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a big big fan of the series today or yesterday, and uh, there there are those extra scenes that, that that we've seen. There's the one that I was talking about with Eowyn fighting the the Urukai in the cave uh, at Helm's Deep. 
Um, and there's a lot more scenes like that. I think they could add another 30 minutes onto each movie and get them up to a respectable four hours each. I'd watch. I'd watch the whole thing. I'd love it. And then, you know, for I think there's a 4K version that I don't own yet that I, I do need to purchase. It probably wouldn't be, you know, I don't know if there'd be any like world beater scenes in there, but just more fleshing out of the universe. I always appreciate because I'm just such a fan of it. Yeah, and they're not going to make any more of that because um, those those people are too fucking old. Aragorn's so goddamn old now. They all are. It's, it's kind of fucking. It, uh, this, guy's, this guy has visceral hatred for Globies. He does not like us. <laughs> <laughs> he hates us. <laughs> Man. A lot of those people are definitely mentally ill. Like those are those are so. I think they're akin to the gang stalking people. Um, yeah. Which, by the way, this I I buy it. I don't think that guy's tr- that account's trolling. I think that guy. There's no way you have the the time and the energy to post that much about something you don't actually believe. There's no way. Maybe a bot. It could be time. a bot. It could be just a bot that responds to people with with you know cutesy things and come over here. We'll, we'll fight the Globies together. And then he's getting AdSense. <laughs> <laughs> his bots luring idiots idea. off of Twitter to to, to read genius. his conspiracies, and it's just sci-fi like fan fiction he's written. Yeah, just Chat GPT fantastical nonsense about math yeah but how I could, could yeah you'd have to come up you got to come up with a better story they're just like yeah yeah it's flat earth it's like tell me why you need a whole you need a hook you need to tell me that there's a group yeah. of, of, be of, of of aliens who are doing this to us that we're that we're we've been there used to be a round earth that's what they, this is the, this is it mm. there, long ago there wasn't in a world earth. yeah <laughs> ten thousand years ago we lived much as we do today on the round earth just like the one we're led to believe still exists, but that Earth, it hasn't existed for a long time ago. It has been, it was shattered in the alien wars, and a small sliver of it is preserved as a reminder to any who would challenge the Ceruleans in the Galactic Empire just what would become of them. We're kept here as a as a as a uh, a, a warning to any who would betray the Ceruleans, leaders of the galaxy. We sit here on this disc a shattered remnant of the great and proud humans. See, that's harder to dispute because there's so much nonsense. I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, that does sound like something we do. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, if, with honestly, that's, that's all it would take to get you in is they're like, there was a, a space war with all sorts of space things. Long and now ago. now we live on kind of long men far too long ago to measure in any meaningful way. <laughs> An unfalsifiably long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite kind of conspiracy theories or like, or like legends or whatever that they're, that we used to be advanced and we lost that and got reset and, you know, started over mm, like, yeah. like the, I, not like the specifically Atlanteans. Like I, I don't care about Atlantis and all that, but like something like Atlanteans or, mm-hmm. or like um is it called Chariot of the Gods or whatever? The the that um Zachary Hitchens book or whatever. The idea that you had aliens maybe coming down and helping those ancient races, the the thing whoever built the pyramids. Three body um, problem has that. You know, they they would advance and then they their society would get wiped out, and they have to start over. Yeah. Yeah. But but I mean through- it's not that unbelievable that there would be huge cataclysmic failures throughout history where you lose a bunch of shit. Especially if you have three sons burning you. <laughs> I, I, how are you liking the three body problem? I, did you have you delved deeper into it? I haven't started I finished yet. it. I mean, it was only eight episodes, I think. Oh, okay. And, uh, I liked it. I think that I'm biased towards liking it. I really wanted to see the content. I didn't love it. My hope was that it would be that I would feel about it the way we felt about Game of Thrones at its peak. You know, mm. this is a this is a source material that has the potential to be great, great, great. And it was like, well, it was good. I don't. I, I want more, but I don't know. It looks like no season two. Oh, based yeah. on they, they. Well, I mean, give it some time. I, I I would think that you would wait a while for to make that call. I've just read article after article shitting on the notion of season two. They keep Damn. saying that it, it's not pulling the numbers that they wanted it to, that for something this expensive, it needs to be doing better than mm. fucking true crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, this story is, I've said it a, a couple times, but that story is very big. And mm. it, if you look at the really successful, um, like properties at the heart of them is a little like family story or love story. Like even with something like Avatar or Titanic, like, like, yeah, it's about the Titanic sinking, 
but it's also about Leo getting laid. Yeah, yeah, it's about, you know, the Earth going to a foreign planet and all these special effects and the Navi and blah, 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 but it's about family. It's, you know, there's, Lord there's of a the little story at the beginning. Not a family family, but it's a, a newly, fo- like, a f- friends that are like family. A fellowship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah fellowship. That's, that's what it is. Um, with as few women as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way I like it. <laughs> and Legolas Come is too close, good Mary to talk to... Uh, Who's fucking is Frodo? Old on yeah. these. Yeah. Do not I, die I almost said Legolas <laughs> was too cool to talk to Harry Potter. Which he is. is. <laughs> he wouldn't talk to that fucking loser. Uh, they would have bullied, they bullied Harry right out of the fellowship. They, Harry they Potter been like, this womb of witchcraft is demonic. Put him to death. <laughs> yeah, he oh, he so put Gandalf out of business so fast. Yeah, Gandalf. <laughs> Gandalf, t- can you also make food from thin air? <laughs> a put of limbus bread and Harry just made a tent that fits us all in luxury and, and he's made a roast and a pudding. Oh, <laughs> it's real good pudding, sir. <laughs> oh my goodness, it sounds as though the author in charge of his existence didn't have much confidence in her own ability not to write herself into a corner. Seems he's made a craft <laughs> with the Dark Lord, boys. <laughs> like, yeah, I'd way. say that uh, I don't know these terms, but it seems like something that a gay millennial would like. <laughs> First of all, gay millennials hate Harry Potter, okay? Because because no, the, millennials love Harry Potter, dude. Uh, girls my not age, the gay ones, so many of them that the are gay way ones too into because it. J.K. Rowling is goaded with the sauce. She's so red pilled. She's she's um. They've got some law in the UK outlawing transphobia or transphobic speak. Um, hmm. or and and she's just on oh, Twitter good. like she's on Twister, Twitter saying fucking arrest me and going on these rants and posting all sorts of like yeah. she does she is the Anthony Anthony Cumia of trans people <laughs> <laughs> she's posting she's like bad? yeah she, she's like well, here's another, funny, well, well not bad she'll just be like here's another grown ass man who raped a child in a bathroom look at him oh here's another like like example of like uh, a girl getting beaten up at judo by a yeah. by a man like, like she, the people she, who just like her like it's you can't draw attention to that that's fascism it's like okay so you're not disputing they, uh, it, the police it, finally had a sometimes statement sometimes it but, is when you selectively pay attention to what's happening in the world and then paint a misleading picture like i i, I see people doing it now crime is on it has been down for years and we're amongst the lowest crime rates in like american history but uh, that fucking Proud Boys guy comes on and he's like, you know, in Yonkers, they're robbing the houses, they're breaking in, they're taking... Oh, spilled lemonade. Uh-oh. A lot of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> I need to Lemonade spills have skyrocketed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are coming in here and knocking fucking lemonade on speakers and mic stands and shit. Anyway. They wanna, they wanna, they're getting rid of lemonade. It's all great drink. <laughs> but if great. you just talk about like like crime, 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 you would get the impression that like property crime or violent crime is up and it's not. Um, so I to just some point out, oh, some maybe areas. some, not nationwide. And in you know, a lot of cities it's down. So nationwide it's down. Most of the localities are down too. I'm sure that fucking somewhere in Louisiana, maybe new Orleans crime is up, but not generally. So, mm-hmm. uh, uh, but to just point out like where crime is happening again and again and again, gives a misleading picture. And it's done with that intent. I I think she's just like a hardcore feminist who's like, uh, these are spaces for women, biological, real women. And mm. no one else should be allowed in there. I kind of agree with that. Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, I think, mo- no, I I think most people, well, I would say the vast majority of people do. They should have the same rights as like men do. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've statement. got like scratchy sounds no, on my no. headset. <laughs> no, just, oh no, he poured, I need to get a towel. Me, I'll be back yeah, in a minute. Hey, you go ahead and work on that. I love that he should have. He should have the same rights that men do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that reminded me when Biden was like, "Black kids, ever, poor kids have every should have every opportunity that a white kid can have." And it's like, yeah, there, there are poor white kids. There's lots of them. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> have no fear. This towel is. Covered in semen. <laughs> You're using a cum towel on your, on your computer? It's okay. Who among us hasn't reused a cum towel for something that... <laughs> this one's probably been in use too long. You get halfway oh, through your, your yeah. shower dry-off period, and you're like, oh, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do laundry. Just kidding. I've never done that. I don't do that. Laundry's downstairs. He does it. He does it. I don't do it. 
You can't prove a, that. I saw Globy. a Reddit post and it was like a, a, the, the youngest of three brothers. And he said they had been sharing the same um, like pocket pussy throughout their whole adolescence. Just, <laughs> just like, baffling. just like they're all running a train on the, on the same like fake vagina. <laughs> <laughs> he's, and he's like, after a while, I just stopped even cleaning it out. I kind of got used to just coming into a warm, cum filled, <laughs> cum filled pocket pussy while listening to my brother's chat in the background. Dude, I, I refuse to believe that's real. There's what a family of ghouls <laughs> to to do that. There's no way. That's some. They had like creep. pooled their money. They had Did like you pooled hear their this? money. No. Uh. Uh-uh. You can't. Is it sizzling? Yeah, very much so. But the noise gate, I guess, is canceling it. Nothing. Like oh, it do you is, need a headset? I I think it might be the um mixer. Let's just stop. It might be the um uh, the amplifier that it's plugged into. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> that <Right>. sucks. <laughs> That's so annoying. There's a lot here. When I when I tried to sop it up off the desk, I could hear it pouring off the <laughs> desk. <laughs> I did that like two years ago on the show. I tipped a water over and I destroyed my Corsair keyboard. Had to oh. buy another one. Yeah, that's just that's part like of gaming. That that's part of being a gamer. Part of being a yeah. podcaster. <laughs> what what do you have? Just, well, I'm sorry. Is it all sticky now? Uh, I don't. Does Stevia get sticky? Nah. Not as not not really. I don't You're think. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle nods. Yeah, it gets real <laughs> sticky. The stick like is. glue. <laughs> With all the stickiness of real sugar. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a funny. Oh, did know. you uh, did you happen to watch that YouTube video about that Japanese swordsman, that uh, Masashi guy, or whatever his name is? I hated it. I hated it. He did. <laughs> oh my god! It was. And I'll tell you, I'm glad you brought it up because I, dude. I got so excited. Jackie and I, we start every night with like a couple of YouTube videos before we go to like Netflix and then bang. So I'm like, Jackie, tonight we have another Kyle recommendation, but oh, this is going to make up for the last one. This one's going to be awesome. What was the last one? It was a, it was a sci-fi one. And the first part was pretty good. The one you told us about, but it was like mm. a nine part story and you didn't watch the other eight. And we sat through like, it must've been, an hour and a half, 120 maybe. minutes, like 110 minutes, something like that. It was pretty long for all of it. And, uh, you know, she just like, do we have to listen to it? All? <laughs> I, I, the first two or three were good. You got the yeah, battle yeah. in the aftermath of the battle. And then it was like the queen starts thinking and making stuff. And I was like, ah, I don't care. anymore. <sighs> yeah. And I consider it a writing mistake. Like if you're going to make up names for like a new race, yeah. For one of them to be like the Clovacians and the other to be the Clotantians or something like that's just I got a little mixed up somewhere during the storytelling. Yeah. And then like a race had to change the name of the race and the planet. And, and it was like, this is harder to follow now. Thanks for that. Fair. But um, yeah, we oh. listened to the swordsman one, too. And we are both emotionally poor for having heard it. So for those that are curious, <laughs> it is the story. There's this Japanese swordsman named Musashi Miyamoto, and he's kind of regarded as the greatest swordsman um, of all time in Japan. And he, um, I don't remember what his record was. Obviously, it was and O, oh, but he was like, <laughs> at the time, there were if you were if you had a duel with someone, there'd be an audience. You know, he, he especially over time, he became so famous that there were audiences and scribes kind of keeping score and making sure there was no funny business. And he somehow like killed dozens of men in single combat. And it wasn't just some random guy on the field because I often think that it's like a knight on the field on his horse with his quarter million in adjusted uh, pounds mm-hmm. armor is just pub stomping guys with rakes, you know, like he can, he can just he can kill 30 a day, but Fixing this guy's mercy. facing off against some of the considered the greatest swordsmen, also his competitors. And the one story I sent while I'll admit isn't a great story mm-hmm. and it kind of gets to the point right away. I thought it was cool as shit that supposedly he met what was to be his greatest challenger and he he employed multiple sort of um, techniques to make the other guy mad at him, including not bringing a sword. He showed up to a sword duel with a boat paddle, and he won. He beat the other guy to death with a boat paddle. And uh, I don't know, something about that was hilarious to me. I watched some old Japanese movie today that depicts that scene. Mm. It was awful. 
the scene. It was awful. <laughs> Plus, there were no subtitles. Um, and and but but what I really didn't like is in the story they say that he just like beat him, like pummeled him till there was gore. But in the in the in the movie, he just sort of whoa, like hits him once and that just kills the guy. And it's one of those where he doesn't know he's dead yet until the blood starts like trickling uh, down. Yeah, like, that's come so on, good. you hit him with a boat paddle. It's not like you hit him with a sword so sharp you can't something. feel it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I don't know. I just thought that was neat. But I'll admit the telling of the story and the story itself weren't like dynamite. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't our cup of tea. The next one, the next one we're going to love. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back to the drawing board. I'll, I'll try to come back with something good. Uh, it's okay. I give her tons of shows that she doesn't want to see. I, we, I've been watching sailing videos lately. That's the other thing I was thinking about. I have two week. recommendations for your show before we go to your sailing video, though. If you if you if you go want. on, well, so well. one of them will be the Great. It's just the Great. It's about uh -huh. Catherine the Great. It's real cutesy. It's the true story, the historical story of Catherine the Great of Russia and how she started off as just this woman who was married to the the prince or the king or whatever or the mm -hmm. czar and just treated like baggage or like a sex slave or something and she ended up being the the czaress or, or whatever of russia it's and it's, it's funny it's cutesy it's comedic and it's a little silly and farcical at times and they're wearing the they're it, it looks amazing it, it's like it's it looks like a period drama so they're in those fantastic castles and they're riding horses and they're all wearing the period correct costumes that's really good and um oh shit there was another one that i wanted to recommend fuck this room i think the cum smell has been activated by the lemonade oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little dusky in here that's it's the like third worst dusky. thing i've heard today <laughs> uh, oh there was um i, I might I might retire this towel from the rotation. <laughs> it should be exact should, day. Maybe mm. maybe throw that in the hamper. Oh put sure, this all behind hot you. load in his virgin ears. Yeah. What were you gonna say about kids. the uh, sailing uh, or boat video? Oh yeah, yeah. If I don't go see the eclipse this weekend, I think I'm I'm gonna try and go learn to sail. I've been on a kick about that lately. I don't have intentions of like really sailing open ocean, but in my head, I, I was about ready to buy a 14 foot Hobie cat. And they like the Hobie Cat wave for the 1% of you that know your boats. And uh, I was like, you know, you should probably take a lesson. Like maybe pick the brain of someone who sailed before instead of just going out and buying a boat and self-learning. So I might do that soon. Yeah, that, that, that will be fun. Um, I have only sailed twice, I think. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, just running the ropes or being on the wheel, whichever you're doing. Um mm -hmm is is or is is fun and it's uh an athletic venture if you're trying to be quick about it like if you're la lackadaisically out in open water but i was sailing up and down a river and trying to trying to beat another boat to a bridge so mm. hustling around on those sails it's fun you had a much bigger boat how big was your boat do you remember what it was i don't remember but mm. around 30 feet i think zach can you pull up a picture of a hobie cat wave might be a hobie wave it's a 14 foot boat this thing weighs like 350 pounds you know you could oh muscle shit. it yourself like from this grass to the water i bet i know what this is going to look like yep there you go yeah so i thought something like that might be fun to get started on oh this for thing. sure that looks super sporty that's yeah. neat one sail if it flips over yeah, my boat had a diesel engine this is <laughs> yeah yeah right one man can write this if you tip it over and uh they were real popular in Ocean City. The 16 and 18 foot ones, not the 14. Yeah. But, uh, it seemed like something to play with. That looks yeah, that fun. looks like, where you, would you put it on the lake or like mm -hmm. yeah, there's two lakes around here, and uh that'd be where I start. I mean, I don't know where it's even gonna go. Probably nowhere. I get seasick, so I can't imagine me actually enjoying like sailing from North Carolina to the Caribbean. That'd just be torture. Would you be seasick if you were in charge of it though? Like you That's were in movement? Yeah, not I've never been in charge of a I'm not seasick when I tow my friends, you yeah. know, with the uh, power, but the ski boat. But who gets seasick on a lake? I don't know. That's true. I so. don't know. I've never sailed. Yeah. I was on a my I got my dad's friend's sailboat very briefly, and it was like even my memory as a kid is it was not a very big boat. Mm. And so yeah, yeah. If you saw pretty, it as an adult, you'd be like, yeah, it's like I can't even fit in this thing anymore. Mm. Yeah, probably a good way to stay in shape if you're wealthy. Or just a good way to, like, <laughs> be outside. I don't know. Like, sometimes yeah. you need a good excuse to 
get signed. If you're wealthy, and, you're not running the mm-hmm. ropes. You've got a team that runs the ropes, and you've run the wheel. Yeah, yeah but captain. it could be okay. Fair, or that even used, or, or like maybe you're grand. the captain sitting there, and you're like, "Yes, faster, <laughs> mush." Left. Yeah. yeah, that boat used is two thousand dollars, and there's no compass, there's no GPS, there's no water maker, there's no diesel engine. I I know boat stands for bust out another thousand, but how expensive can a fucking Hobie cat get? Like bottom that bitch out, rip that, rip that bottom. Yeah, rip the skeg out. You're out. Uh, I'm guessing two hundred bucks, something yeah. like that. It can't be. Yeah, that that's bad. a that's a crazy bare bones uh, boat. That's just for zipping around and experiencing sailing, I guess. Kyle, you're yeah, like halfway anyway. to a sled dog team. Ooh, yeah, that's this true. is good thinking. Mm-hmm. Need- I mean, Murphy's not going to pull his weight, but he can kind of be the other dog's mascot. You'll need a lot more snow. Yeah, yeah, infinitely you move, more. You move to Minnesota or something. Hmm. Minnesota. I know oh, that you love that weather. I don't think you are. You thinking of moving? I I forget. I think is this a private? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, a yeah. little bit. I, oh, I don't know. Um, I I I really just don't care. Like, 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 I just don't care. Like, like, it's the same difference either way. Um, I'll, I'll see if that thing I was talking about happens, and maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll move out west somewhere and do something there. Mm. But um, I know for sure if it if uh, Georgia outlaws the hemp derived stuff from the farm bill, you know, the the the, the Delta Eight and THCA and all that shit, then I will move like real quick, real quick. Yeah, that'll get um, the fire lit under you. Yeah. You know, I, I would see what my girlfriend wanted to do. Um, she'd have a voice in it, I suppose. Not too loud of a voice, though. Yeah. No, like it goes. You, Toby, the mailman, Murphy. Her. Yeah. I mm-hmm. I told her the other day. I'm like, if anything ever happens to me, Toby goes to Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> I would take good care of, of old Toby. <laughs> you are not giving this dog to Taylor. I'm like, he knows. He's coming to get it. He has power of attorney <laughs> over Toby. I have power of attorney and a gun. And a gun. <laughs> I can't be stopped. Try and hold on to Toby. He's coming to get Toby. It was his it wish. Out. It's like he was joking on your show. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving with that dog. Oh, that speaking of worthless thing. Uh, I saw. <laughs> Are we talk the, the other worthless thing. Was it women or dogs? It's women. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah it's women. Um, I saw four NYPD uh, cops, including a sergeant go into this guy's apartment earlier and uh they're taking him to jail for domestic battery he, he beat up a girl they're, they're here to get him and they don't tell him that until there's two of them in his apartment and two of them in the hall and he's in the middle and he's like y'all give me a minute and he's just like, like he, he's clearly not wanting to be part of this and then they grab him and we start wrestling and shit's falling everywhere and immediately this guy's a proven fighter right away he gets one of the cops guns <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Right away, he's got a cop's gun, and the cop goes, "He's got my gun!" And so both of the lady cops run away. <laughs> That's probably a smart move. He's got a gun. <laughs> both of the lady cops run into the hallway and it was just last week kyle was like you can't try that shit in america american cops don't back down remember that conversation I don't remember he specifically meant men. what I was referring to, <laughs> but I mean man, I mean man cops, because uh-huh. um, the two man cops are on this dude like fucking glue. They're on mm-hmm. his, they're whooping his ass. One of them has his hands on the gun, trying to keep it pointed the right way, and it's going off, bang, bang, and somebody's getting hit. You can hear, it, you know, when you're fighting with body cams on, it's a mess. What you're seeing, you're right, getting man. sort of flashes and sort of you can kind of tell what's happening until they go to the ladies' body cams. Then you get this nice, stable, <laughs> panoramic view. Actually, they could get a little closer to the action. Maybe we could see what was going on. Do it, Danny. Woody, they are two men fighting a third on the floor for their fucking lives. Mm-hmm. One's trying to wrestle the gun away. The other's trying to like do whatever he can to, to keep everybody alive. Any, it's, it's life or death. One lady all over her radio. She's letting folks know that, hey, 20 minutes from now, y'all need to know there's going to be dead people. So <laughs> like, like, she's talking to people who are miles away for some reason about something that's happening right fucking now. Only a woman, a stupid one, would do something like this. Because all, all of us here know that we need to get in the fucking pile right fucking now. 
we gotta we gotta I, I'm gonna get his butthole or something. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna buy, I'm, give a, him. I'm gonna get a testicle and Taylor's gonna like start breaking I'm his pest fingers. his oil with his with I would yeah. fingers. If, if I was king, three people on the dude, one guy on the radio. She she's been on the radio for too long. She's telling okay, a story. Okay. Yeah. She's like, he's got brown eyes, Nike shoes. I think that's a is that a Buffalo Bills jersey, sir? No, Jamil's jersey. This is Jets, baby. Okay, Jets. His interests include. (laughs) He's kind of charming. His interests include beating my ass and scaring me. Uh, She's not the worst. She's not the worst because the fattest lady cop who was the furthest down the hall from the fight really got out of there like she'd seen a rat. Peeks back in, pushes the door open, and goes, Bang! And just shoots into the pile of bodies and then runs away again. <laughs> One shot, three kills. She didn't hit anything. <laughs> oh my gosh. She didn't hit anything. The bad guy ended up shot like twice, I think. I think the cops were beat up and fucked up from glass and stuff like that. I think that's how it ended. They, they, not only anybody died, but it was a miracle. And if those ladies hadn't been there, it had gone so much more fucking smoothly. God, if I was a cop and they made a like a real cop, not some fucking pull you over for a DUI. If I was a real fucking cop and they made a lady or or, or just or just an incompetent pussy, anybody mm-hmm. who can't do their fucking job and back me up, I would I would yeah. have to quit. I would, I would, this? I would volunteer for some guy? other shit. You, more big, giant. I'm okay with that guy. Or woman. let me tell you why I'm okay, okay with a big fat guy. Like like literally in my local um, police. Because <laughs> you seek cover during gunfights. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> there was, so so um, I know a big giant fat cop. Um, nice enough guy. He arrested me. He, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice enough. He guy. let me smoke cigarettes in his car while Officer I was waiting on the warrant. Shamu so, took good care of you. <laughs> he's he's over there. He's like, can I have one of the Marlboro Latch? Oh, you can have the whole pack, cow. <laughs> You know, they're not going to have those where you're going. That's what I said. <laughs> that was very much implied. <laughs> but he's a big boy. I'm going to say three, three hundreds, three hundreds, maybe three fifty because he's tall, too. Mm. And and, you know, they, we were shooting the shit one time because he didn't always arrest me. Sometimes we, we were just talking about like being normal people uh, in a prior conversation that when I'd known him. And, and he was like, oh, there was this one guy. And he was just going crazy. He was on something, and we couldn't hold him down. We couldn't get his hands to handcuff him. I don't use the guy's real name, but but Davy, Davy came in there and sat on it, and that was that. He didn't <laughs> move a bit after that. He was stuck under Davy. Davy said, "You let me know when you want me to get up." <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't take long. <laughs> All right. Well, Officer Davy seems like a good cop. Like having that much weight to just be applied somewhere is honestly something I could appreciate in a partner. Now he's not going to be quick on the on the feet, but how often do you chase somebody like it's like it's TV, right? Kyle's it's, next partner yeah. is Lizzo. You're, I uh, quit. I'd have to quit. Yeah. Right, she's she a good help. sitter. I bet she sits with the best of them. <laughs> I bet she sits all the time. It, I bet she could do some sort of like stripper ass slam move on him for real, mm-hmm. and it, and it would it would fuck you up. Yeah, she's a big fatty, so that yeah, that's the only requirement for that is to yeah. be big and fat. No, I'd much rather have an obese man as my partner. I just want somebody who's not a pussy who can throw a punch or at least take one and like is ready to go and can operate that handgun. Well, you don't need to be John Wick, but you better need to. You, you should be able to reload that thing at a, at a moment's notice. You should be able to clear a jam, and you should be able to put bullets on target in a moment's notice. I don't. Yeah. I don't that's a scary fucking job. I can't. I can't imagine doing it. Not. I'd be so worried about getting shot by the other cops. I and when I watch those police videos, I'm usually much more afraid of the other cops than if I'm putting myself in the guy who's wearing the camera. Mm-hmm. I'm in his yeah. shoes now. I'm on board with him. He's my player, and I'm like, man, those cop. Whoa, that bitch over there is pointing at you, dude. Move. Oh, circle out. Circle out. Because there's so many like crossfires, and people are mm-hmm. getting so. Like nobody cares about their muzzles. Everybody's pointing rifles at each other, and then they shoot. And it's like, dude, you were all skipping bullets off this guy laying on the ground who's been dead. And mm. and it's like, why are you still shooting at me? Like, there's bullets bouncing over my we head. You don't get to sure. shoot people that often, Kyle. That's what it feels like. I wa- there's a great video today that's making the rounds of the cops pulling the guy over for suspected DUI, and then they open a bottle of vodka, pour it out. Throw it in his car and arrest him for open container. Why? You see them do it? The whole thing. 
They weren't even sly. No, the whole thing. Wow. That's insane. <laughs> Just, I, that's, I, that's, that's the punishment for that should be really big. Like, it, the public has entrusted these policemen and put them in a position of authority where they can really make a difference in people's lives. And for them to be betray our trust on that level, like, that is... That's outrageous to frame people for crimes. Yeah. They, I mean, shit. Ten years I really like prison? those First Amendment, those, uh, first Amendment auditor, auditor guys who mm -hmm. go and like do, I think some people don't like it. I think they see it as a shitty thing to do, but I love it because they, you they go into. you watch Audit the Auditor? Yeah, I like him too. He sort of gives like legal overlay. Maybe a little dry, but I learn a lot. Same. Yeah, I don't mind the dryness because it's it's interesting to, I don't know, to hear. Yeah, especially I, I like all the stuff that involves lawyers giving you points of view. Often the the it comes down to, well, can they do this? Eh, sometimes. And it's like, that's not. I don't need ambiguous, bro. And it's like, well, the law is ambiguous. That's the thing. Most of the time, it's like, no, they can't do that. But you're going to need to make us like file a suit. If if you want anything done about it, that's why I like that uh, that one guy who sues them and gets those six figure judgments. Mm -hmm. I, I really like that shit. I like I him am. antagonizing cops. I like him antagonizing business owners. Uh, he pepper sprays a lot, which frankly I enjoy. He'll go mm. outside like a construction yard and start just recording. And and every time a car goes by, he'll go six seven eight three alpha. He'll like and it's just <laughs> a mini. It's literally a car who came in to like turn around. It has yeah. nothing to do with any. And the construction workers are like, yo, what are you doing here? And and he's just like, none of your fucking business. <laughs> he's looking <laughs> for trouble. He's always... <laughs> you can't be here on this. Yeah, I can. I can be where I yeah. want. I'm recording. I'm, I'm documenting. It yeah. doesn't matter what I'm doing. Doesn't Walk matter on. what I'm doing. Operation construction site bomb <laughs> is underway. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, he'll... He's got his pepper spray on him. He's ready to rock and roll. And as soon as they come after him, as soon as they get aggressive, they lay hands on him. He doesn't care who it is. Old men, old women. <laughs> old women. <laughs> he gives it, he calls it smurfing them because he uses the pepper spray that's got the blue dye in it. <laughs> <laughs> so his videos will be like, Cocky construction worker gets smurfed. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, like, just, he's not even bothering cops. He's just bothering a guy who's like, I'm trying right. to move pails of he wants, concrete. Well, he bothers them so the cops will show up and overstep. Because because you get... And, and that's what happens. He ended up getting arrested for that, even though he's clearly... Like, the guy's chasing him down the street like do, like this, like trying to get him. He's running mm. backwards, like, leave me alone, bro! Holding his camera gear, and this guy's chasing him, like, sort of clawing at air, trying to catch him, and he pss, gives him a little squirt, and that's it. That's it. Pepper spray's so rough. <laughs> yeah, so I've bad. never seen anyone just shrug off pepper spray. Yeah, yeah. You, you you can you can act like it doesn't hurt, but you can't keep going on on your mission. Your mission's over. Now your mission is find a bottle of water. Yeah, that, it's it's, it's, it's funny you said that. I, I so I, I it was this late night TV show, and there was a dude in a black leather jacket, which matters, and uh, they tased him. They got him like through the jacket. And while he was being tased, he had no fight in him. But the second the taser turns off, he was 100%. Like, there was no lasting effect. Mm -hmm. And then they pepper sprayed him. And he was done. Done, done. He didn't want anything to do with anything except, like, water in his eyes. Like He just had to address that problem. And it was like, ah, oh, I see the difference. I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a real attitude adjustment. Uh, that's <laughs> how I would put it. It's um, if you ever been hit in the face, you notice how that gets your attention like real quick. It's you can go it's both like, ways. Like I'm mean? sorry, I, I mean it can activate fight or flight, and sometimes mm -hmm. it, I can imagine someone who gets more aggressive because of a taser, but not oh spray. oh yeah yeah yeah. Often yeah, the I taser see taser misses. So some 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 of the times sometimes they'll use a taser and they'll dry tase people just using it as a stun gun essentially, like where they have to make contact when they don't want to give them their hands. And they'll, or when they don't want to get out of a car. And if you're going to do that, you really need to be in a position of physical dominance or, or at mm. least potential physical dominance, meaning I can do this. And even if you like try to lurch at me, fuck you, because you're a little person or I, and I'm a big person. But mm. I see like women be like, I'm going to tase you. 
and the guy's like, fuck you, and like takes their shit away and kills their partner. I, I've, I've seen so many videos like that. Where, but but when the, whenever they're trying to get a person's hands, that taser seems to do the trick. They'll put that thing in the middle of their back, like on those put that big chain of muscles on your back, and give them a... The, they give them their hand. They give them their mm. hand after that. That shit fucking hurts. Hmm. I, uh, when I was young, a friend of mine became a cop, and he went to like police academy. <clears throat> he was showing me how they teach protesters to stand up. And uh, you can even do it to yourself, but they they hold them right here behind the ears and they lift them by that like hole in your skull behind the ears. It's a pressure point. Mm. And uh, I was like, really? Like, can't you just ignore a pressure point? And then he did it to me and I stood right up. I wanted nothing to do with how hard he was pressing into my below my ears. Yeah, I wouldn't either. That would upset me. I you ever would, I would, protest I, anything? I, I wouldn't. No, I've never been to a protest ever come close not even not even one percent no i've never I've, thought about going yeah i i haven't either i remember when the wall street stuff was happening um mm. thinking it would be fun to like yeah i was in college I, I i remember people like doing their little i was dating a girl in college yeah there, there we go <laughs> <laughs> so we were both Occupy connected wall in that street. Way. we're yeah. both in the dorms we we're both in the dorms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sucks yeah. <laughs> that, I remember that everybody was, was a very uh, displeased with bankers and financial yeah. institutions. Fair that's enough. Why, that's what, and I, I was with this girl that was so fucking red pilled. We I, I would pick her up at uh, at her school and we we go out and get get something to eat. And I remember talking about those people and being like, I hate those people. I wish they'd hit them with a fire hose or something. And she'd go on some like conservative like economics uh, rant because she's you know taking fucking economics at Oglethorpe, which is. So it was it was beautiful. Love that shit. We could we could hate together against the. <laughs> That's always fun when you find somebody you can hate other people with. They they have, they have common hates. Yeah, it's what love yeah. is made of. Romantic relationships yeah. are ninety nine point nine percent friendships. I mean, you're not banging all the time. You just need yeah. someone who you enjoy spending time with, like doing all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I thought you were gonna say that the girl you were dating was a like hippy dippy kind of chick and you had to you know kind of, you were kind of an odd couple no you opposite. had to drag her towards reality no the opposite i've definitely dated some like real hippy dippy chicks before um never so bad where they like had armpit hair or didn't use real deodorant yeah um, because that that's the far hippie side when they stop mm -hmm. shaving and start going to some sort of deodorant that doesn't work <laughs> 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 like like Dude. Any kind of deodorant that doesn't have that aluminum powder. Like, take the cancer, dude. You stink. <laughs> aluminum powder is what does it? Uh, yeah, that's what... Yeah. Uh, you it's know. probably not aluminum powder. It's probably, like, aluminum and then some other chemically name. But it's, it's supposed aluminum. to be bad for you because it leaches through your skin into your... I always body. wrote it off as just magic. Nope. It's <laughs> heavy metals you're introducing <laughs> to your body. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's better, be better than stinking. Than... Mm -hmm. It depends how bad you stink. Uh, have you, you, you're, you've been to PAX. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think they should have they should have uh, chemtrailed that whole area <laughs> with aluminum fossil. A little deodorant. indoor drone that crop dusts everyone with deodorant would be great. That could be yeah. good. Yeah, people That's... who that was baffling going to PAX and being like, oh, this is like not a joke meme kind of thing. Like some of these people are genuinely so stinky. Not that, some of them. Oh, some of them. I, I don't remember. So it. many rooms stink. You, you'd walk through like hot shot areas. Like mm -hmm. I experienced that when I went to Gen Con 2006 and I first tried Magic the Gathering. A lot of hot pockets throughout that convention It was not a hot pocket in Boston. I'm telling you. So at the Boston Convention Center when at, at PAX East, when you go down these escalators to the ground floor, okay, the main, right. the main like, area and it's big and there's probably three thousand people walking a fucking around you descend into this stink cloud it's like bo is layer. heavier than air it's it's, yes, it's, it's, it's settles actually at the bottom. it's actually humid yeah it's more <laughs> humid at the bottom it of was, those. yeah i, I have a theory that. about it like I, i'm being too forgiving but maybe these are just people who are 14 or 15 and while it is outrageous to not wear deodorant as an adult if you're at that age where you first start wearing deodorant, 
which like 11 for Taylor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then yeah, maybe they're just not on board yet. Like I, I wore deodorant probably before I needed it, but kids in my high school, there were a few that didn't get on till after they needed it. Yeah. The, it's, it, it's adults, some though. of them were adults. It was adults though. You know, okay. like, it was expensive yeah. to get in there. It was in the middle of the day and shit. Like, Everybody in there was like 20 years old or so, and they just stunk. It's that group of people. It's like internet fucking nerds. Uh, don't have <laughs> Can good you eyes. believe internet nerds? Those people? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm a fucking internet <laughs> nerd, but I've been wearing, like, like, I can get that deodorant going. Like, I swear to God, people with bad hygiene, that's, that's just the basic shit, man. You should not be exposing people to your stink. Yeah. It's very it's impolite. Rude. But more importantly, it's going to prevent you from getting pussy. There are some easy ways to increase your like one to 10 scale and deodorant yep. is amongst the first things you hit. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, that smells good. That's like saying me passing the cardio test is keeping me away from being an astronaut. Like there's so <laughs> many things between some of those stinky guys and pussy that like, they're not a speed stick. One away from, step from at a time. Yeah. But I, I disagree. Right. It, they're just, I would argue that the stinky guy actually has pussy available just not one that he'd want so what he's doing is he's moving himself up the, the tree yeah it's, especially in that group yeah you start looking a lot better when you take care of basic stuff if, if you stink though like i'm not even going to have a conversation with you to find out if your personality's di- okay i'm not going to find out if we have similar interests i'm not going to care where you live and you're and you're just down the way none of that will matter because i'm going to avo- like get out of this conversation there were so many people i would meet at those cons who were just offensive. And when they'd walk away, we'd all have a big laugh about it. That's the other thing. You're constantly getting laughed at behind your back if you stink like that. There were there were creators that stunk. I remember there were guys, there were creators that stunk. I don't remember exactly who. Um, white boy. Put name, down. name. Oh, there's one that people talk. I didn't even meet him in person, I don't think. But people talked about him. If you wrote his name, I'd be like, yeah, that's it. Because I can't, I can't think of it I'm right now. But I can't. Sure. But there was a stinker. And it's like a bad one. Like this guy, this guy's shown up to the first day of this con where, where he's going to meet us all. And like he hasn't bathed in days and days and days. He clearly stinks. I think it was that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he wasn't, he was actually like a nobody who had some money, who was like giving money, I think, to some creators and kind of like sidling in, if that makes sense. That's the way I remember that guy now. I think he, I mm. think he was that kind of fellow but he smelled awful i do remember that and i remember as soon as he walked away we were all like did you smell that motherfucker that was him i thought it was you <laughs> oh that's what it was the first <laughs> time i met white boy in person ever uh, i've heard this yeah that guy was also there and so white boy thinks that i stink because like the three of us like coalesce at the same time White boy blames me and I blame him for the stink. Neither one of us realizing it's this it's this third party. And so we both think the other is like a smelly, nasty motherfucker. <laughs> and we keep believing that until like maybe later that night or a day or two later. And when we were like, somebody was like mentioned, hey, do you smell like dude over there? And, and I was like, it was, it was him. Oh, and we like had this huge moment of like realization where we both thought the other had stunk or something. You brush your yeah. teeth? Oh, <laughs> uh, me, me too. too. We've got so much in common. Oh, God multiple damn. times a week. Did you already week? shower today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Twice. What? <laughs> you got more than one pair of pants. That's what you're telling me right now. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm like, rain pants or something? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, these are I have four pairs of pants, seasonal. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, I, is, it is offensive to be around someone who has bad BO. Like, like if it's that, a non BO thing, if I'm like, playing mm. hockey or i've been outside and like doing yard work or something how hot would a girl they stink like how hot would a girl it. have to be for you oh. to tolerate it from the first meeting and and you know how it'd be this should be a seinfeld episode that at first you would think like like blame it on something else maybe she played tennis right before yeah. <laughs> oh the shower was out yeah. <laughs> i didn't have any shower. <laughs> yeah but, you'd have to be very attractive for me to be interested in a girl who has be, oh, I don't even know because I would be embarrassed to take her around my friends because then we're going to be the stinky couple. You guys are making yeah. a huge mistake. Yeah. Why? What? My high school girlfriend was a fixer upper. When I met her, she what had braces 
and she had just she was making brownies at home and it singed her hair right so she that's when i locked her in fucking woody right by low <laughs> by low <laughs> Two months later, she's like the hottest girl in my whole fucking high school, and she's my girlfriend. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you got to get a fixer upper. Look what I did. Look what I got here on my arm. Did you have hey, to? The did, you, did, you, uh, <laughs> did you neg her? Like no, the pickup artist? I was like before negging or anything. Yeah, I, you look pretty tonight, you stinky pig. <laughs> <laughs> nah, someone told me she liked me, and I saw her, and I was like, that'll do. And I saw the potential. <laughs> That'll do pig. <laughs> no, <laughs> Jesus Christ. That will do pig. No, yeah, I, that, I really have a zero good. tolerance policy for, for BO. Um, I, I, I don't understand it. I, I think that's honestly, we we're talking about that white trash thing earlier. I think it's a real good indicator of that. It's a L fixable pro well, okay. It's an indicator I share your concern. But like if a girl was great in lots of ways, but she needed to someone to whisper about deodorant in her ear oh that's not it she knows i'll work through that no no this is either a girl who refuses to put it mm. on for health reasons or what i keep she's one of those chicks that that apparently are in every comment section of reddit who who are just like my way of the highway if you don't like hairy legs then he don't like me like i i feel like hairy leg girl also probably smells a little because she's using that all natural deodorant if anything she's putting rose water on her asshole yeah, well, you ever go going to, to really disgusting on Reddit? Do you ever go to relationship advice? It's one uh, of my favorites. Not subreddits. on purpose, but I catch uh, some some posts. Let's dude. see what retardation they've got going on. It is the, relationship advice. I guarantee you, like eighty percent of the advice is break up or divorce this person, and it will be like, oh, it says banned. There you go. Wait. Banned? It says this subreddit was banned due to being unmoderated. Just relationship advice. Um, no, it's here. There's an underscore, maybe. Ah, maybe. there's an underscore. Okay. This yeah. one is here. Sorry, continue. I'm, I need to find something. Uh, I, it's just a frustration I have. I don't think it's a great story, but they always suggest breaking up with the person. And they could be like married with four kids, and the husband will... I don't know. Say, hey, I think you need to lose some weight. They're like, get rid of them, girl. You deserve better. And it's like, ah, let me see your picture. I want to see. My the, uh, the most recent one I friend, 18 male, called me a monkey. He's white and I'm not. How do I handle this aftermath? So is it just people making up nonsense? <laughs> that this is? Yeah, that one sounds like a the rest wild. of Reddit. Hot. I don't know. Like if if he called her a monkey and he likes her. I need to know about this tone, like where his head is. Son of a monkey. Yeah, right. To me, that's a, that's a terrible thing to say, but we tell jokes. You know, I don't know. I need to. Yeah, it's not an context and, for me. and like what was going on. Uh, my favorite one that I read recently. Yeah, she's I'm Asian. Just go, no, me play Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just see like left wing people re refusing to see like reality sometimes or or like choosing to believe that something I, I don't even I, all right so i saw one recently um it, it turned out that kyle rittenhouse tried to join the marine corps and he was not only did he fail but he was told he, he couldn't try again because his intelligence is so low and they're all laughing at it they're and, it and, and yeah and so okay. the comments are of, of that are, are nothing but people saying ho ho the the marines have a minimum intelligence they love that. We're going to shit on the, the military all day long in the comments for some reason. And then the other ones are are making fun of Kyle Rittenhouse for being too stupid and too fat to be in the army. And it's like, wait a minute. You're admitting that he's special ed, that he's that, that he's not of normal intelligence. And that when he was like barely of age, he he what took a gun that somebody else bought for him to the neighboring county and then was attacked by a pedophile and a gun wielding criminal. Two pedophiles, he, I think. And he defended himself. Who, who's mad and why? I, that's what I want to know. I get that you hate the people who prop him up and platform him, or the people who make him their like spokesman. I bet you don't like that. Maybe he's like selling whatever he's selling. But remember, he can't get a fucking job anywhere because of what happened. Mm -hmm. And to by your own admission. 
he's so stupid and fat that they told him never come back at the army recruitment. Like, like, like you. On one yeah, hand, that's you're really such, dumb to get turned down from the, or the Marines. You said not the army. I think he tried for both. It, it, the, mm. the 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 thing said he tried for both. I would imagine is the it called the ass fab or something. Is that Marines that are known for being dumb? It's like a meme. That yeah, they but it's like a and, it's like a tongue in cheek thing. I think like you can't actually be like a retard. And you, be a, all right, we're on the same team Marine, there. Yeah. I do think there's maybe a culture in the Marines where they. Oh yeah, they play it up, and yeah, they're like, yeah. "Oh, we're just dumb jarheads. Mm-hmm. We don't even get the best equipment." Like this <laughs> goofing off, like which is true. The second part's pretty equipment. true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they get terrible equipment. But yeah, you're, I, you just you just got to get off Reddit, man. If you're reading all this all this nonsense, oh, it's great. Just go right. to YouTube and watch I, build orders. I have a special frustration with, I guess I'll say Democrats to categorize who make the rest of the Democrats look bad. You know, if you're there arguing that that swimmer dude can join the women's team and just be a national champion, get off my team. Uh, you're yeah. making us all look worse. Yeah, I, I don't get that. That's just so absurd. You know, and, and it's a weird issue. It's 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 definitely it's definitely not just a binary decision. It's it, it's it's not just like go to this bathroom or go to that bathroom. There probably needs a different be a different bathroom, and. I don't know that that works necessarily Could when you're talking about position. a different league because there it is such a tiny, tiny percentage of the population that you can't put a team together. There's not going to be a trans baseball team. Mm-hmm. You, you mm-hmm. can't field one. You know what I mean? Like, like you, you wouldn't have enough. Do you think it's an easy decision, Taylor? Like, Finster said no. he wasn't sure what bathroom to use. I put him in the girls because he passes so well. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd still say go to the men's. Like, whatever your like genitals are like go to that one it's pretty was, easy was, do it do it the way we've done it for i was pretty ever. influenced by the fact that women have private stalls right so you can just go in there do his business and nobody knows a thing everybody thinks he's just another well girl. they they'll still like people can tell like no, you uh, like finster yeah even, i mean finster probably passes better than like a hundred percent of them but like women can still tell and if you, you just can't prioritize the comfort of such a niche group over all of women. Like there's so many mo- ugly most, women. Most, if, you, if you talk to a girl about this and she's not being recorded or like mm-hmm. is just talking to you privately, they'll be like, yeah, I'm not comfortable with that. That's my experience at least. Um, yeah. Like, I, I, I really to me, I place her, her being Finster in the, uh, in the women's bathroom. Cause I feel like it causes less disruption. You're going to get me's in there. You're going to get guys with beards and who are just wearing a tutu. That's where weird. it's hard, right? Like I, I specifically mentioned Finster because she passes so well. Trans Taylor, why don't you yeah. just go to the bathroom with me? It, it shouldn't, if I'm wearing a dress and I like, it shouldn't be my right to barge in there and make everyone uncomfortable. That's, that's ridiculous. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, can you show Buck Angel for anyone who doesn't know what he's he saying like. that you're not allowed to wear costumes in the bathroom anymore, Taylor? What are we doing Hall- Halloween? Well, I can still dress up like fucking a pirate, but I can't do it in the women's room. <laughs> like, how about yeah. that? <laughs> so That's this person has pirates. a vagina, right? I would still send. I don't know. Does he go by him? Whatever. Yeah, he does. I'd still send this person. He goes by him. I would still. If, send I don't him. care if he does or not. I'm gonna call him him. I, all right. He belongs in the men's room to me. Yeah, he's gonna have to. I, I hope he has to go to one of the ones like at the racetrack. That's just well, this is just crop. unbelievably convincing. You have to go like, to the drag race. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen Buck Angel before? We've we've talked about him. Oh, I wasn't times. sure if you saw him naked or anything, but yeah. Oh, we've seen that pussy. I've seen it. Yeah, Kyle's shown me on like four occasions. It tastes yeah, funny, it's but my it looks screensaver. Real. <laughs> it's my screensaver. <laughs> yeah. Man, um, some of these relationship advices are just so embarrassing to read how to yeah. handle my girlfriend 26 F telling me she thinks I'm 28 M unmanly and submissive. My girlfriend told me that she's been comparing me with her toxic ex and finds that I'm much more gentle and nice, but she finds that unattractive because I lack dominance and play it safe. She wants someone who is a quote real man and can make her feel like a quote real woman like her quote, a lot of quotes here, alpha X she also said she thinks I would just follow the crowd and not stand up for her. 
When I asked why, she pointed to a time I suggested that she politely and calmly man- manage a situation with her boss, given she is a junior rather than, a ca- than cause a ruckus over at work over things outside her control. She says she thinks I am unmanly and make her feel like a man because I express my emotions and lack some traditional masculine traits. She pointed to the fact that in the bedroom I ask for consent too much before a new sexual act rather than just do it. And that she therefore feels I am too right, respectful and she wants dominance from a man. He's losing us. She said she oh, he lost me a while ago. That I can't do something. Oh, this whole thing is fucking embarrassing. I do something I wanted without asking first and th- therefore I am unmanly. While I appreciate her honesty, I am really hurt by all this, and I'm wondering what should I do next. Is this a sign that I should work on aspects of myself? I'm confused because I feel like I'm responding to new social norms about how men should behave, and I'm receiving this pushback. My girlfriend doesn't think I'm a man and that I don't take charge, and so let me come to the gayest, most consensus-based forum online and ask a bunch of fucking losers for their opinion. I hope she breaks up with him and goes back to her toxic ex, this fucking loser. Nah, I'm on the he other already side. did. I think he this guy did. should slap her to show her what a man he is. Oh, you think um, I'm weak? Me. Does this yeah. feel weak? I've shown her my Funko Pop collection. <laughs> what the fuck is that? But, the, but the, all she did was leave the house and then call me while on FaceTime Dude. sucking your ex's dick. Choker, yeah, bender um, over, so give her what she needs. Can you imagine posting that? Like, can you imagine being so embarrassing mm. and weak that, like, your response to being called out by your girlfriend like that isn't just an intrinsic like change it's like oh i need to go ask redditors i need to go ask people who hang out on the relationship advice reddit hey 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 no, r- r- great people you're a married that. man with children <laughs> you are exempt from this but this guy's a fucking uh, goon i don't Jesus like him Christ. no i don't, I don't like, like that at guy. all no I, I hate that i hope that's not a real person that's my issue is whenever i read stuff like that i don't feel like they're real and yeah. and, and uh one of my one of my least favorite subreddits, I hate it, is um, it's like Peter explained the joke. Uh, and, you hate and, it. Oh, it's 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 nothing but bait. It's nothing but fucking chum. That that's what it should be called. It should be called chum. It should be called. Let me ask a stupid leading question. Like, hey, why is this picture of like a a, a pantalooned black person like pulling a, <laughs> a, a pulling a cotton cart racist why is this offensive i don't understand <laughs> why and, and then you get to like watch the fucking like comments devolve into people explaining why like actual racism is racist and, and that's just one example it's it's almost always i've never seen anything there that was difficult to understand it should be called i'm 12 and i don't get it it's there's there's no there's no jokes that need explaining is the problem they're just troll bait they're chum yeah a lot of this is probably just troll bait because I, all that, of has, the, that, that can't be real there's no one that pathetic any any subreddit that oh, involves teenagers or gen z or them talking about things like like not that i have an issue with them in general but just their subreddits that are b- about being that you know what i mean uh, those are awful. I've tried. I've blocked and muted all of those, and they keep sending me stupid shit anyway. Reddit thinks I'm Indian now. Dots, not feathers, and so I get all this cricket shit and all this. In, 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 it's like in Indian, like whatever their language is called, probably Indian, but like in that weird script that and 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 all sorts of horse shit. Reddit's awful. It's that uh, Reddit is so awful. I'm glad their stock is is plummeting. Yeah. Yeah, are they? I think yeah. it's the user base that makes it so terrible. A lot of the user base. Are... Well, it depends where you go, Taylor. Because if you if you look for things that are in your wheelhouse, like I guarantee you, you love the hockey subreddit, and I and I bet that I like, don't. The hockey subreddit sucks. Really, it's a bunch of Reddit losers who like most of them have clearly never played hockey, and something they they were the ones who were like banning everything about that one dude kicking someone to death because they're like. This is all just racism, and we won't abide it. And it's like, oh, so we can't watch a video of a guy kicking another player because and, and saying what it is because he's black and because all these mod losers like can't can't see a black person doing something wrong and just look at it objectively. That's crazy. Yeah, they they're was he an immigrant? Even, Usually, they I don't. have no idea. Mm. He was playing in the English league, and so it's not like the NHL was in the cards anyway for yeah. for the kicker. But yeah, it's it's. I mean, uh, even like 
more niche reddits i go to like the age of empires 2 one like so often i just i just want it to be like strategies like strategy yeah. discussion civ comparisons like unit comparisons hey what about this composition hey i'm, I, I'm trying to use this unit what what backup unit should i use and it's like overwhelmingly okay. unfunny memes it, that's all true however in the areas in the arenas of pornography and uh in like uh, not safe work videos in general it excels and and those commenters are fucking based all right they, mm -hmm. they they've got a good sense of humor there's no nonsense uh in those instances i think reddit really shines but you're right even when i go to like a game i like and start going to those subreddits like tarkov or hell divers i quickly realize that these people know less than me like most of the time like like when i read it's like how many hours do y'all have how old are you people like i feel mm -hmm. like i'm I think I'm older and more experienced than anyone here at this game that I came here to learn about. Like, like y'all yeah. gotta, y'all should be asking me questions because like, like I'm seeing they don't know what they're talking about. I see people mm -hmm. talking who don't know what they're talking about. Like, like completely saying facts wrong about mechanics and games and shit like that. So yeah, YouTube is I like I just spend way more time on YouTube. YouTube, yeah, it, it's interesting to see. YouTube's kind of right wing. Like, like when I go to. I was reading the comments of that video of the cops like throwing the vodka bottle in, into the into the guy's car or whatever, and everybody's like reasonable and like agreeable and kind of on the same team. Like, what the fuck? He's betrayed his oath. He like like <laughs> like like you know like yeah. people like oh people like this should hang. You know that's kind of the consensus over on YouTube. But I feel like on Reddit they'd be like, we don't know. First of all, that officer, we don't know. Maybe they've had some PTSD. Okay. Yeah, I don't think Reddit would defend a cop. Uh, but I social do get the scientist idea. here. They're a yeah, little maybe, left. Yeah. Maybe not. Not a little left. Reddit's a lot left. Yeah. yeah it's super left. It I'm surprised you didn't go to the riots when they were happening in your hometown down there right? or, or in like St. Louis, I should say. Like, no. like I remember when that was going Fuck down no. and me and Chiz were like super into watching those riots that we found them to be shit. Like when crazy. Ferguson was going down? Ferguson, when they were like burning years shit ago? down. Yeah. Yeah. When they were burning shit down. Like 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 whole blocks were burning, like like restaurants, all sorts of crazy shit. They were taking over streets. They were marching. They were. They, they did were that in twenty twenty too, stuff. during like yeah. the ELM summer. They they did yeah. a lot of that That's sort of the George nonsense. Floyd stuff. And uh, and and I, I think I would have went if I were you. I think you know. No, I want nothing. To do. I don't. I don't want to go to hang out with a bunch of people acting rowdy and breaking things have you ever seen the video these uh these fucking losers these white kids are in their like nice ass second or third floor apartment lots of glass windows and the marches are happening right outside and they're like yeah brothers we're with you and one of these dudes on the street goes boo, 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 <laughs> shoots, either shoots their glass at or throws a rock through it i can't remember which i remember it being i think i've gun. seen that video and that it's a rock they throw a rock that's what it is yeah and those embarrassing <laughs> they, idiots he goes we're on your side. <laughs> yeah, we're on your side, and it's like, no, uh, you, you're not. You don't get I, it yet, dummy. There's nothing I hate worse than a misguided ally who's 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 convinced themselves that the world is a thing that it's not. And and mm -hmm. Zach, uh, can, can you open this picture? <laughs> oh, is this the? It's a Peter explains the joke. Kyle is actually. Actually, I hate it when I say that because it makes it sound like it's uncommon. Kyle was more right than I thought he was. And, uh, um, but I was going through Peter explains a joke because I like that subreddit and sometimes I don't get them. Here's one I didn't get. Do you guys get this? This is all, all the information in, in, immediately. Really? Yeah. I've what never it? been. It's come, my lady. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's come, my lady. Come, 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 my come, lady. My lady. Butterfly, You're my butterfly. Sugar, sugar, sugar baby. baby. Yeah, all right. Well, I didn't get it. Who's, who's Peter? Peter Griffin. Oh, yeah. they're referencing Peter Griffin. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, they're explain jokes or something. I think there was one instance ever where Peter explained a joke or something like that, and they made a whole subreddit about it. But I promise you, it's it's that one wasn't easy. And if you're not like a millennial or or older, you won't get that one. That was a that song was big in 2002 or 2003. Mm. Um, yeah, that was a, like a middle school jam. Yeah, it was I a was high like school jam. Raising children. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was playing with titties in shop class. I remember specifically. Hmm. It, it, it's um, that was that was a great song. I, I like that song. But but yeah, the, the most of the subreddits like that just annoy me. I, I try to like make my Reddit experience exactly what I want, but I'm too lazy to go through and like actually make just one that's nothing what I want. Porn and I reef do tanks. Want, I do. All right. 
porn has to say separate. There's no way I can get anything done if I'm like like hard all day watching. I can't, I can't, I can't be like, was it Bobo? Who they're like, they, first they have like a, a chick naked and then they ask him about met stats. Yeah, and that's a very it's good just clip. up and down. That would be my day. Like, like fucking, like, fucking big black com- covered titties. Let's go. And then like the, they swipe once and it's like, ooh. Hot Rod Dodge Viper races <laughs> races R6 motorcycle. Let's who's gonna win? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> dude. Then you would like Twitter more now. Twitter's like porn bot problem is absurd. Every like single like, well, I'm being dramatic. Not every yeah. a lot of like threads you'll click on. It'll be like incredible goal from Alex Ovechkin tonight versus Edmonton only 46 goals until he passes Wayne Gretzky's record then you like click to open it up because you're like there's probably clips of other goals he's scored let's Mm. click that open and then it's just pussy in bio pussy in bio tits a gif of people fucking and it's like this has nothing to do with Ovechkin's goal record let's let's keep things on on point very frustrating that that saw, was not something they had as much like a year ago. Yeah, I, I I haven't been on Twitter in I don't remember the last time I was on Twitter. It's over a decade. It's way I, faster than Reddit for like getting clips and stuff because most Reddit content is just like reposting. I might have posted so, I, I, uh, to to do anything on there like like browse or look for content of any kind whatsoever. I think I used Twitter a little bit during the Boston bombing. Uh, cause we were so mm. on the ball trying to find out cause they were looking for him, Taylor. Yeah. Like the, there were I terrorists remember, running the streets and like, like, like all of Boston was out and the feds were out and the national guard was out and the city of Boston was like, you knew that if like some, some dudes like in Boston laid hands on those Zarnea boys that they were going to catch a beat. Dude, t- Twitter is a great place. If you want to see like mainstream politicians and celebrities get owned, by like a guy with a Clifford the Big Red Dog profile picture wearing like an SS uniform. <laughs> like just, just, just the most absurd conglomerate. I, I'm on I Twitter to... every day, but I mm-hmm. never scroll it. I'm, I just get linked to it. Usually oh, yeah. from Reddit. The, uh, my new favorite thing is like following Kanye's wife uh, and, and her mm. ridiculous outfits. So mostly what she wears now is transparent body suits. Like those things you can order off Amazon for twenty dollars, you know that that just shows everything. She has to use her cell phone to cover her vagina when she goes out because her vagina is almost always exposed, um, and her gigantic titties that somehow stay afloat. My God, those things are perky to be what look like like H's or something. Like I, I don't <laughs> know. I, I wonder if they've got a kink. Where like he likes That's like what like my guess like, is like, like either right? it, it, like like does she does is she an exhibitionist or is or does he like 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 making her naked and she's into it too? I wonder if that's part of it because like my god, both. those outfits are ludicrous. I as Kyle was saying it, I was like, I wonder if there's a subreddit that follows Kanye's wife. If there is, I didn't see it, but this is the first post I found. It's like transparent outfit, cell phone. You can you show it, Zach? It's pretty safe for the show. Yeah, cell phone covering her pussy. Like it's 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 exactly what Kyle said. All of her outfits are similar to that. Like that one's actually she's wearing a raincoat. Nothing else. It looks like like a cheap raincoat you'd get at a dry cleaner's. It looks like she's wearing a dry cleaner bag. Actually, yes. it does. I think that um, is, is that literally a dry cleaner bag? It looks like it with a hood. What does it say? Daily. I think that's what his ridiculous poncho was in, and he's making her wear that <laughs> set of clothes. Yeah, that's <laughs> just wild. get my poncho I, cleaned. I did not even notice he was in a balaclava with a giant tarp over him because <laughs> of her outfit this being is that, that much this more. Is the ridiculous. head honcho poncho. You can buy it now on my site. The mask is crazy. He's hmm. the mask is crazy. The boots are crazy. He's a madman. Um, and every time I see her, she it, she has her titties out. And her asshole is just almost exposed. Finster covers up more than than than, than this lady. This lady is naked <laughs> everywhere she goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I I it came out that you know Ye has that like Donda Academy thing or something, basically a mm-hmm. school for mm-hmm. kids. And he was one three of the things that stood out. I remember something about he wanted to be able to put the kids in cages for punishment or something. Like he wanted like cages to put them in. Not a bad Every, idea. He wanted everyone's head shaved. That was one of the things. All mm-hmm. the kids had shaved. Oh, he he doesn't have hair, so no one can. 
Exactly. And I think he has hair, but he shaves it, but I could be wrong. Uh, I'd love to see a other. spelling bee, his school versus LeBron's. Once again, round 67, <laughs> the word is rabbit. <laughs> w. <laughs> eh, eh, eh. <laughs> into the cage <laughs> into the bad at spelling cage uh youtube's almost as bad with its recommendations like on the new to you tab it's a black mm. lady's 20th anniversary party it's just a granny at her own anniversary party being filmed by a cousin or some shit eating cornbread and they spelled anniversary phonetically Do you mind? A- N A. <laughs> I like that this uninteresting grandma is like ten years younger than me. <laughs> like... <laughs> I, it's it's cultural. <sighs> don't don't judge it. It's cultural. <laughs> There's nothing home, wrong YouTube, with uh, a thirty year old grandmother. <laughs> the YouTube homepage I, yeah. for me is pretty like like Age of Empires videos. Norm Macdonald, Opie and Anthony, Primitive Technology, Jesus, Sam Hyde. Shane Gillis, more a, a lot of AOE. Like, it, are these the subreddits really you're on? No, no those are just just my the YouTube, on Reddit uh, or on YouTube. Oh, oh, okay. YouTube suggested. So mine is raw body cam footage. Uh, it's uh, it's it's literally the thumbnail has a person being stepped on. It says, "Please don't hurt me." There's some uh, there's some Warhammer shit. There's some gun shit. Although I try to get that, I don't like gun shit honestly. Um, there's lots of movie stuff and lots of uh, Chuck Berry um there's some old vet talking about killing uh people oh and then there's there's these hot ass uh music videos that have been getting recommended not because i watch them over and over but it's it's basically like songs you've probably heard before with like really sexy chicks dancing and stuff and i i, I keep those on my monitor when i play hell divers my youtube is exactly what you'd expect the first video something about trump's legal case the next one some sailboat thing uh, a music band, The Offspring, Coral Reef, basketball, more Coral Reef. Like, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. YouTube Coral Reef videos are, are losing me. There's, it's bad content. These people are. Do you remember <laughs> the very beginning days of YouTube? Like, some people were good at the game, but they had, didn't have a thought in their head. Some people were the inverse of that, and it was pretty rare that like someone was there's a gameplay you wanted to see from someone you wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. That's where reefing is. Like they're just total shitheads who have terrible tanks who I don't want any advice from. And then there are pretty charismatic people. Wait, I think I'm saying it wrong. Yeah. Pretty charismatic people with terrible tanks or people with good tanks who know what they're doing, but they're just so autistic. They can't tell you. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 uh, I guess you're trying to learn stuff though. When you go there, huh? Are you, are you trying to just see something cool? A little of both, yeah. Actually, so at first I was trying to learn things. At this point, I kind of know how I want to do it, and I like to see what people have done. Like, imagine a coral reef tank is like a bonsai tree, or a bonsai forest, and I'm like, all right, yeah. So th this guy has a lot of small corals. This guy took a fewer colonies but grew them really big. What do I like? Mm -hmm. This guy has so many corals, there's barely any room for fish. I don't think that's my target. So Jackie and I watch the videos together and kind of agree on what we like and don't like. I've been thinking about getting a terrarium, which mm -hmm. is way cooler than an aquarium. Sure. <laughs> it's a turtle. It's, it's not nearly as um I wanted I kind of want some bugs in there, like but but bugs I'm not afraid Ooh. of. I think I want a praying mantis because we're we're looking at those pretty praying mantises a while Are back. Are they scary? You know, like, no, I think of them as beautiful. There's some like really cool oh. ones that are like colorful. There's like a mm -hmm. it might be Japanese. It's like sort of pale with cool colorations. I don't know. I was thinking about having a couple of praying mantises in in like I don't know, just some dirt and plants and little little terrarium scape. That would be cool. There's um, I'm trying to find the is it an ocelot? What are you an laughing ocelot? at? Yeah, that's prospect of you being a bug guy. I'll have an aquarium, and he'll have an aquarium, and you'll have to get some sort of, some sort of air, uh, 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 scape. An airscape? Yeah. I mean, if you guys corner those two markets, I don't know what I'm going to do. H have you seen an birds birdcage? No, Axolotl? No. I don't know how to pronounce this. Shit! I will get you a picture. Axolotl. Very soon. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, are you guys familiar with this? 
Yeah, it's Can that you, little, little little goofy looking amphibian thing, right? I, yeah, yeah. I think because I like fish tanks, Reddit was like, "Hey, you might like this too." <laughs> He's so cute. And I, and I go to. Can you show this picture, Zach? And I go to this subreddit all the time. It I'm looks like, like a Pokemon. It's it pretty cool, and I, I'm pretty sure it's amphibious. I, I don't know much about them, but if I were to, you know, get into something new, it, it'd be on the short list. I'm yeah. Waiting for the picture to come up. Oh, here we are. He's dope. He's so cute. He, looks, <laughs> ah. he does. Look at he him. Looks... He's got four legs and what, a big swimming it, tail. Does it turn is into he... anything, or is that it? I'm pretty sure that's what the adults like. When you like. evolve it up, does it become a, a, yeah. a larger one? With a, like a <laughs> this is one of those Pokemon that sucks for the first 20 levels, but it evolves into Gyarados, something powerful. With yeah. Big he has electrical powers, which is a big problem. It was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so is it, it? what does it do? Like, is it useful to have in the ecosystem, or it's just kind of neat? I'm not an expert taxes. on these things. <laughs> uh, it ju- I think it just looks cute, and I think... um. It's one of those animals where, it, like, because it looks at you and asks for food and stuff, people project more personality to it mm-hmm. than it really has. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but that could be fun. I have a fish. He must be hungry all the time because when, you know, he goes to the glass and he looks at you and you, he's like having a puppy almost. But Aww. I'm sure if you looked at it, you'd be like, yeah, Woody, he's not thinking what you think he's thinking. He's just, but you it's know. fun to do a little personification on him and be like, oh, look. He recognized us, and it's like, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe he he just or he, he knows might. Your Jackie visit. holds the food in front of the glass mm-hmm. and then puts it on top, and he knows that routine at this point. So when he sees the food, he like is it expresses an interest in it. That's cool. More, yeah, it's better than most fish. I mean, that's a child's play for a dog. He's a gold spotted rabbit fish. He's. Uh, is there like an intelligence stack ranking in the fish world? For sure, yeah, yeah. Some fi- a lot of the ugly ones are actually smarter. Like the puffer fish are really smart. It's like people, uh, all fish are smart. Manta rays are considered to be among the most intelligent fish. I didn't know that. No, I don't I think, think you they- can just throw them in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're good. gonna put more salt in the pool. Yeah, <laughs> I think that would eat up all your your fun fish. Apparently, they're super intelligent. Like, like they have really the okay. biggest, well, don't the biggest it, brains house. of. They have the biggest brains of any fish with especially developed areas for learning, problem solving, and communicating. Mm. Octopi are very smart. Uh, se- the cephalopod. The cephalopod. Did you see the uh, Mark Rober video about octopus, octopi? No, oh, but I've seen a lot of their problem solving and the way they could like open bottles and like twist caps and acquire things and also do the, the do way. Do you know Mark can... Rober at all? I have no, no. Oh, you're missing out. He's a big shot on the internet and he tends to make maybe one video a month. Maybe it's more than that, but they're really all high production things. And Mm. uh, one of the things he does, I bet you've seen his revenge against porch pirates. The Of course. It got like a billion views. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. The glitter bombs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's Mark Rober. Anyway, he made one for his octopus and it was an obstacle course. And if he could get to the end of it, he earned his freedom. <laughs> and it was really a pretty tricky obstacle course. Yeah. Uh, and then he set him free in the ocean. They don't live very long. True. No, they do not. Only yeah, a couple like of a years year and a half, short. I think. It's yeah, long. it's really sad because it, I mean. It's amazing they they're as smart as they are. Extremely intelligent. Do you watch yeah. Tear Zoo? I bet you do. Uh, uh, no, yeah. Is, it, is that the one with the black eyes, the tiny microphone? No. he. Okay, uh, that's a good one, too. He, like gamifies um animals oh, I've seen and it, their yes. evolution so he'll be like i ah, this one put all his evolution points into armor and now he's you know kind of can't move this one put all but his the shell points. meta goes out of fashion <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so uh i he did one on well no i should say as i've watched his videos i learned that one of the things that helps humans be smart is our long lifetime you know if we died at two years we'd probably be morons most two-year-olds are morons but because we live for a hundred years, not only do we get to figure a lot of things out, but we get to pass a lot on, mm-hmm. and that helps helped humans get smart. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Animals with that have those long um, juvenile phases, like like us and mm-hmm. like orcas and whales and marine mammals in general, are tend to be super intelligent. And you know the great apes, mm-hmm. like, like like all those are some of the more intelligent things. 
They spend um, more time in education, I guess, because they're dependent on their parents, and that makes sense. I saw that but, the human brain has gotten quite a bit bigger in like the last fifty years. 50. I think I think the advent of C sections has allowed our big brain children to survive and multiply, and and also just medical science in general, where like you know you could you could get one out of there. Maybe and pussies then, are getting bigger too. Wait, in the fifty, there's no way I'm doing my part cranial capacity in the last fifty years. I'm saying. Well, um, yeah, there is, Taylor. It's called evolution. Yeah. It's, it's pretty rapid for evolution, doesn't it? I don't think it's evolution. I just think it's um, us getting bigger heads. The big-headed babies it's, it's, are surviving more, it's, he's it's, saying. Women are, women are such whores now. Their vaginas are bigger. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> all it is. So what you're saying the head of the baby hey. will evolve to whatever size the pussy is. To get that's exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. Yeah. You get those mega mind kids. Yeah. Zach, can you show me? Oh, I'll find it. Zach, pull up that hokum graph. <laughs> that, that, I, Zach, that absolute nonsense I was reading. <laughs> what is Find, the thing called when you study the brain bumps? Oh, I know. Phrenology. phrenology. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I have That's... a phrenology book. I forgot where I put it. I bought it online for like $35. I need Larger, to Larger, taller, and narrow seen from the front of the significantly narrow and higher. No, they're bigger. Bigger. I read it. Can't be a lie. Oh, you saw it online? Yeah. Oh, yeah, here I imagined you pouring over tomes in the library. You know what else it could be? I, I wonder <laughs> like, if like where else would you get information, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like you know how black people have wider noses, and maybe I don't know Swedish people. I'm making this up. Have thinner faces. They do have wider nose. Like that. There's a very specific black nose. It's like wider. Never than noticed. Nostrils. <laughs> Right. Next uh, time, their skin's different. <laughs> so, if one part of the Earth was like multiplying, you know, having so many more babies than the other, like I think Africa might be the fastest growing right now. Mm-hmm. I could see if someone was like, "Oh, humans are getting wider noses," when really it's not evolution; it's just a demographic that's. Are you saying more. that those big black dicks are stretching vaginas out, and so human heads are bigger now? No, I wasn't actually Jesus going there. Christ. At all. I was saying maybe. Whoever has what does it say? <laughs> taller and narrower you heard heads. Here first, first. <laughs> Whoever has the taller and narrower heads is a demographic that's having more babies. Okay. Interesting. So, so and who's yet the, the Mexicans things? continue to flourish. The, me- the Mexicans small are, round heads. Uh, are a boxy folk. They have small round heads, though. Close to the ground. Perfect for a green thummery. That's true. Oh, <laughs> They're the hobbits they, of people. They make great gardeners and landscapers, yeah. right, Taylor? Yeah, that's perfect. Who you else know would dig a hole in the ground under the border but a hobbit? Kyle, let's mm. become turn of the like two century ago race scientists. <laughs> <laughs> let's have that be our new thing. Just ignore um, genetics and just go by like what things look like and what yeah. that what. Oh. Yeah, people talk about genetic differences in races, and we're like, you and your hokum and your studies, observe <laughs> the bone of the brow. <laughs> That's where the conclusion can you be. quickly become Leonardo DiCaprio and Django holding that skull. <laughs> <laughs> See here. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to back slowly out of this room. <laughs> That's a good fucking scene. I mean, I like Django. I, I wonder if that movie could have benefited from some editing it's no i it really it doesn't I love it. as much what like, are I you lo- talking I, about i loved it when i first saw it and christoph waltz carries that film and he, uh, he carries it, that film and he carries inglorious bastards brad pitt does very well in glorious bastards and i, and I did not enjoy really. it I, he's I, not that when good he's on movie. screen and he's talking he's very it's good. like I, he's joking he plays it so over the top, it's like he's doing a joke. I'm a descendant of the mountain man, Jim Bridger. That means I got a little engine in me. That's exactly yeah. what he said. Yeah. Uh, good for you. Mm-hmm. I, anyway, I wouldn't remember that line. But yeah, that's, it, Christoph Waltz is... That's, a, that's just a bad movie. That's just a bad movie. That's that's uh, that's yeah. a quarter of a good movie squished together with three quarters of a fucking bad movie. I don't give a fuck about Shoshana. I don't give a fuck about her and her black boyfriend in France and none of that. I came here to watch Brad Pitt kill Nazis. And I want to see like, and I want to see more, Roth, like, more. More Eli Roth is what I want. I want the fucking bear Jew on screen more. I want him to like be carving that bat up. You know that was supposed to be Adam Sandler as the bear Jew. Mm-hmm. Ooh, People that would used have used AI. Oh come on, he can do it. He's a good actor. Oh, I do a Nazi. Like that's that's what they, did. they did. They did that really? with AI. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and he's doing man. some of the like like silly Adam Sandler voices as he's coming down that like hallway with the with the bat knocking it on the tunnel. 
<laughs> yeah, I, that's not one of my favorites. Jackie Brown's his worst movie by far. I hate Jackie Brown. I've seen it twice, and I'll never watch it again. It's just a shitty movie. But Django, I if you were like, what did you want to watch Django? I look at is it how long is it? Two and a half hours Am at I least. Right that's about right. I like every scene of it. I like every bit of it. I wouldn't want to trim okay. any of that. I enjoy, um, you know, his interaction with the slate with the slavers when he goes to camp. Before he goes to Candyland, when he goes to that first plantation and and treats with that fellow who's got Jonah Hill as one of his like KKK members, and they have a whole bit about the masks and mm -hmm. the guy's wife made shitty masks, and then they have a well, all right, well this time no masks, and next time no, no, we're wearing the mask. That's the whole point, and like like all uh -huh. that shit's funny to me, all for it to end the way it does, and then like. Mm -hmm. I love Christoph Waltz and his interactions with Django. Um, I've seen Quentin Tarantino talk about directing Jamie Foxx and how at first Jamie Foxx was playing it like really cool. Like he was like sh more like Shaft or something. And he's like, look, you're not cool. You're a fucking slave. Okay. You can't read. <laughs> <laughs> you're not fucking cool. You're not slick. You're not with it. You're a fucking mm. slave. <laughs> now put your foot in my mouth. <laughs> he does. Only like freaking quarantine. Well, oh my God. By the way, Taylor. Tarantino is one of the few who could say that. Yeah. Taylor knew he was. He. I can't believe we haven't talked about this. I meant to bring this up last week. You mm. were always talking about how that creep on Nickelodeon would do the feet shit. Yeah. And now there's like whole documentaries. It turns out he was raping people, impregnating people. Was it what's her, what's her name? Um, Amanda Bynes. Was didn't he rape Amanda Bynes and like she had to abort his baby while he was running Something that child show she was on? Horrific. And then all that foot shit where they're like, send, dip your feet in ketchup and send me fucking pictures. Those feet people, I swear to God, like 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 that's we got to put a stop to it. We got to shut that down. Come on, feet guys. Like maybe, like, maybe we make some, maybe a couple work camps. Who's 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 better than the feet guys? Who would you prefer? Like uh, on the hierarchy of like, all right. So so furries the lowest of the low would be like an Epstein Island guy who goes pedophiles. There for feet. You put oh <laughs> that'd hilarious. Be, that'd be I only one. like child feet. <laughs> 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 in child feet. Oh no! The most diabolical man. Yeah, that, planet. I don't know Damn. who. I don't know who the feet people outrank. In my view, none. Oh, furries! They outrank furries. Yeah, I, the furries are. are I don't are have a problem with any of these people. I don't, furries are going to stink. I, They're wearing I do. Persons. I do. I don't like the furry thing. Um, really? Yeah, really. But but They've ruined. It, it's not that I want to stop it or do anything against it. I'm just. I just find it to be I odd do. and 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 off putting in a, in a way. Um, and I just really can't quite wrap my head around it. The diaper play stuff. Real Does upsetting. Does that involve actually pooping and peeing? It involves a cadre of things. One of the. It might be that you have this binary relationship where one of you is the baby and one is like the caretaker, and you got to change the. And there's lots of baby talk, right? Like, oh, baby made a boom boom. It's real stinky, mommy. And like, mommy's got to come clean that up. And it's like, ooh. And maybe she, they're also into like poop. And often, if they're into that, so they might be eating from the diapers and smelling them. Oh. That was that. That was that crazy story. If you remember, the two boys. I'm gonna. I think one of them was like ten or twelve, and the other was like fourteen or fifteen. They found their dad's laptop, and there were pictures on on there of him doing his diaper fetish stuff and eating poop out of his diaper. And they took pictures of that with their cell phones, shitty sons. Oh, <laughs> get it? And, <laughs> and then, Jeez, and then one of them confronted the dad with it later on, and you know he murdered him. He murdered him because yeah, that's what anybody. you do. So now we're in court with all the jurors looking at you eating poop, dude. Now I have seen you eat poop. The Streisand effect. The Streisand <laughs> effect. If you want to see that piece of shit eat poop. Like it's right there on the internet. Look for the you know the the poop bandit dad will who take killed his son. Your word for it. Yeah, that it's pretty awful. awful, man. So, so Reagan it's, it's really her, fucked up getting. Although P, I'm okay with. Like like I'm not I'm not like into P, but I'm not a, out of P either. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I you know keep your keep your piss to yourself. Don't do it at like a park. I, or something I'm not like gonna that. force my piss upon you. If you you have to request my piss, and it's precious piss. Okay. Don't act like I'm willy nilly like spraying around. I'm not I'm not sure that you're piss worthy. You better eat your asparagus, or I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all right. I'll, I'll <laughs> I'm oh, sure is, now he's got along for the right? ride until we had asparagus. <laughs> all, you, all you drink is black coffee oh. <laughs> and eat asparagus. What's that, 
I was trying to find it. What was Jim Norton's character when he's like the, the dirty pedophile? And he's like, oh, did you fall and oh, hurt you? Took Paul his- Hoggis. Paul Hoggis? Paul Hoggis. H-A-R-G-I-S. G-G-I-S, I think. Hargis. Okay. Yeah. I got to find some of those bits tonight. I wanted to show them just to multiple people. That's one of my... I used to do that they're, voice They're reprehensible. It's so I, funny. It's one of my favorite bits to just completely rip off because it's... Ba- you know, you... You freestyle as you go the horrible things you're saying. It's almost like the aristocrats joke, but just pedophilia. Just pedophilia. Mm-hmm. Jimmy's one of the dirtiest man. Di- di- That's how I know that Jimmy's not a pedophile because he's way too open about being a dirty, dirty man. Like, yeah. I only tuned in ever with Jim Norton because I liked his comedy or I liked his, um, um, his really what I like is how quick witted he is. Yeah, for but- sure. Like, like, like how quickly he can turn a phrase or or, or like uh fix he and ant just there's like a there's like so a comedic equation and his order of operations is fucking slick he's good with it but he would also talk about you know his transsexual prostitutes that he would pay to spit in his mouth yeah here's a there's a four hour compilation called opie and anthony the unsubtle and despicable uncle paul <laughs> that's <laughs> uncle paul that's what it is oh, oh, Jim paul here oh, <laughs> oh. Guest overslept. Yes, he did. Let's well, call it a show. He's on the. Yeah. He's in a different hemisphere. I don't blame him. Fair it's, enough. it's it's like six a.m. to him or something. Not quite. Yeah, I don't want to blast him like we did Hodor. But yeah. I will blast Hodor all the time. Fuck that guy. Son of a I was guy. about to call Hodor a slur, and then I realized he is one. And that that's never cool. That's one thing I've never done. Is called a, a a person by the slur that's for them. I only call other people like. The reason I got banned from uh, Twitch was for calling Scum a faggot. And it's like, Scum's one of my best buddies. Yeah, He's not gay. Mm-hmm. He's, he's super real... straight. He's he a... was. I always yeah. know, and he wouldn't be friends with him. Scum's a fucking poon destroyer over there. He's he's, mm-hmm. he's good looking. He's got he's got some cash. He's got plenty of free time. I don't know Shout what he's doing scum. with a girlfriend. Oh, he's playing AO, AOE2 with me. That's what he's doing. <laughs> the boom destroying us <laughs> has totally stopped since he it's picked up Age of Empires 2. <laughs> God, Suddenly he can't a get game. a girl. He's doing that. You know the meme where like the guy's got his arm around the girl too aggressively explaining something He's she like, wouldn't care about? Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> That's new, new vibe. That's Taylor getting people to play that awful game. Have you played Age of Empires 2? <laughs> We're having a wonderful time. It's a classic. The fact that people have been playing it for 15 years is very telling. 25 years. <laughs> I can't play games. My computer's from 16 years ago. When does Age of Mythology? Wait to hear this. Wait to hear this. You can play this on a. Fucking... When does Age of Mythology come out? I know they're doing uh, a master this, on that. This year, this calendar <laughs> just, year, Age of just Mythology ported Age of Empires two to a pregnancy test. Yeah, <laughs> it'll run on anything. It might run. Yeah, I'm definitely going to play Age of Mythology when it comes out. That'll be a bunch of fun. All right, let, let's All play right. some kind of a horde shooter or something. Like even if it's COD mm-hmm. zombies or something. Like, okay. like, but okay. I and, and I would want to. I want to play some Dark Tide or some Vermintide. Vermintide's adding that like multiplayer mode, which looks fun. You can They're play as a goddamn Rattling Gun. Vermintide, right? That's what. That's what makes me have faith in Dark Tide. I didn't like Dark Tide on release. I didn't like like it a month in. But we're closing in on like a. It'll be a year, you know, soon. Something They've like added that. a lot to that game. I want to go try that out some more because it's real satisfying to hack Who's your way developer? through all that evil. Fat Shark. They don't abandon games. No, I think part of the reason that some of the things that people don't like about Dark Tide, the monetization, the way the sh- shop was set up, they did that thing where you buy the currency and such parcels that it's difficult to buy how much you want. And then on top of that, they do the thing where, oh, you can only buy this armor will only be on the shop for a week and then never again. And it's like, well, fuck, like. So I, I can ne- and Helldivers to its credit is the exact opposite. Helldivers is like anything that we release is always available. If you want, if you need to come back here and get this later on, and you can buy currency in that game, but you can just play the game and find the currency. Mm. Like I have found twelve dollars worth of currency playing it. Damn. So I wouldn't, you know, I if I was a kid, I wouldn't have to be coming out of pocket for twelve dollars. Okay, you know, right, you're right. Because the yeah. deal, because the things are ten dollars each. I found enough to to get one of the other season passes, which is like about the right amount. It's a good curve they've set up. Hmm. Well, I've All enjoyed right. it thoroughly, gentlemen. I didn't miss our guests a a bit. Didn't miss them a bit. 
<laughs> Love spending this uh, this four hours with you. Both of always you. a fun time. Check uh, out our sponsors, PKA six ninety four. Get some double doinks. <laughs>